We are live. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. We are here at Zen Lounge, alhamdulillah, where the finest food, the, the finest drinks, tea, no, no, line is haram. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see his face? Can you get close to his face, please? Please, please. No, I'm joking here. <laughs> we are here. We've got Needles. What's up, everybody? Now, Needles is the editor of Sneeko. Uh, editor, filmer. Filmer. Partner, I do everything Partner, with them. Man. Traveling mashallah. with them always, I do a lot of things. Yeah. A lot of things, yeah. Okay, good. We're gonna find out a bit about uh, needles. <laughs> Thank you, Why are you laughing? Yeah, it's, it's I, saw, so funny, I saw your face. <laughs> 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 and we got, got the Wuna. The Wuna. It's not like a verse. Let's check the audio. Can you guys hear us? Let us know if you can hear us. If you can hear us, please donate. <laughs> 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 guys, whoever can hear the live, please donate the most. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Whoever hears the most donate. Brilliant. Yeah, but yeah, okay, guys. So, alhamdulillah, we are here before we start. We uh, want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most just. Or praise his glory and gratitude belong to him. So, guys, today, obviously, Sneeko and Hijab are tired. Uh, they're having a nap. They haven't uh, slept. Or they just don't want to come on your life. Is that the real case? <laughs> I don't know. It's a radar. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we're here, inshallah. As you guys know, we are also fundraising at the same time for our charity, Salam. Uh, we've got the Salah Plus project, which is obviously uh, teaching born Muslim and mu new Muslims how to pray Salah. Uh, we've got the guided prayer mat. I've left in the car. I'm going to get that, inshallah. Uh, so the guided prayer mat, brother and sister, is very simple. It's to teach people step-by-step -step guide how to pray Salah. Because when I came to Islam 11 years ago, it was very daunting to learn how to pray Salah. How do we pray Salah? And when I was speaking to Sneeko, he's just about got Surah Fatiha memorized. So um, we're going to gift him one as well. It's very simple. It's simple material. The, the Salah mat is not uh, your... It's not Aladdin's one that flies you around. It's not the one that's made out of silk. Ha! Phantom. Yeah? Did you like that? Ha! Th thank you. Zina. <laughs> Please donate, brothers and sisters, if you are um, Pakistani. <laughs> 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 Pakistan's in the bag. Okay, guys, so the link is the link there for the donation. <laughs> it should be there, inshallah, brothers and sisters. Also, if you can, bro, can you pin it? You, if you go to my channel, you can pin it as well, yeah? So uh, we have a fundraising for that, brothers and sisters. Yesterday, when we was doing the live with Sneeko, Mohammed Jabba, and our brother, Abdul Havia, and we raised £7,200, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, may Allah bless you guys. There was some big donors. Uh, and we have brother Abdul, uh, Abdullah Ali. Abdullah Ali, he always comes through, Hamdra, with the big oh, donations, sure. yeah? Oh, Yesterday, man. yeah, he came with £200, then £400, then he gave £800. But again, whatever you guys give, we really, really appreciate it. Uh, Sneeko and Hijab might join us. We'll see, inshallah. Hijab actually is going to go and come back in it. Because he's oh, doing that podcast thing. But he was supposed to do that mine, so that would mean I'd have to go as well. Man. That's that's uh, that's great news. No, I'm joking. <laughs> do you have to go? Why do you cancel it, bro? I don't know. You said you were going to ask him. No, no, no. Did. Cancel it. Just just say say it's yeah, not good. Sleep, bro. Okay. Uh, let's sleep then. Good. Perfect. So, uh, Abdul Wahab, how was the... We have boxing training, by the way, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So, uh, one of our coaches, <laughs> one of our coaches, he is uh, very beloved to us. Sure. Alhamdulillah. How, how do you find the coaching? Because you know sometimes it's, it's a lot. Do you do sp any sports and needles? I played football in high school, but after that, uh, weightlifting a little bit. Okay. When you say football, you mean soccer? What do you mean? Oh, uh, rugby? Rug <laughs> rug yeah, we call it rugby. Yeah, rugby then, I guess. Yeah? American football, yeah, in high How school. many people are watching, Gabby? One? Roughly. Five. Five seven. Okay. All right. So um, you haven't been training for a long time. You said this was your first, but it was quite impressive. Because no, so, so I actually used to uh, do Muay Thai for many years. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, but boxing, I haven't. I mean, I haven't worked out in a year. If I'm being honest with you guys. Yeah. yeah. I've but been, you did well uh, today. Huh? Like after not training for a year, to come and do that it was it's very impressive. Mashallah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. He's I'm an like, impressive individual. Of course, he's. Look at him. I don't know how he got married. That's one. Com 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 it's, oh, it's, it's my choice. What is this? Sisters, choice. Choice. please. Uh, apply, you can apply. You send your a marriage CV, it's done in the halal, it's nothing wrong with this. The, the bit, please donate. It's, it's very important you to donate. donate. No, donate for sadaqah. You know why? Because, brothers and sisters, when you donate, make intention. Oh, Allah yeah. grant me Hello, a righteous That's what you should do, bro. Before I met yeah. my wife, I used to donate and say, oh, Allah grant me a righteous wife. Alhamdulillah. You know, so it, it actually works. It's actually very important. So, uh, <laughs> something like that. Okay, so guys, um, we are here, inshallah. We are going to be looking at the donation slowly, see if anything comes through. Just so I let you Ali, guys what know. What are you saying about Nawaz Sharif? Um, I don't know who he is, but he sounds like a, sounds like a, is he with you? Is he a sheriff? Like an American. So for you guys who are watching at home, inshallah, guys, a hundred pounds can teach anywhere from 10 to 30 people how to pray salah, how to do wudu, and also we aim to launch our new project, which is which is the Quran project, which is to help them learn Surah Fatiha, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Nas, and Surah Falak, 
because it's very hard like a lot of new muslims when they come to islam oh, and by wow. the way we also have born muslims who do not know how to pray salah we had a three weeks ago me and dawood that was one of our salah instructors we went to we went to <laughs> we went to teach them how to pray salah and there was one ex-muslim he came back to islam and he goes i forgot how to pray salah why did you look at me when you said ex-muslim uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we taught them and his friend uh, byron who is a revert he's going to join us byron, in the studio. Byron. byron byron oh. byron yeah yeah <laughs> so shall he we taught him uh, taught him how to do wudu but the the ex muslims panel like he forgot how to pray so we taught him again alhamdulillah so it's so important guys because because the Prophet peace be upon him said that when the son of Adam dies, all his deeds come to an end except three things. Number one is Sadaqah Jariyah. This is a Sadaqah Jariyah project. Number two, teaching beneficial knowledge. Prophet says this is the second pillar of Islam. This is what Tawheed is about. That we single out Allah in our worship. You know, this is what makes us different to the Christians and the Jews for needles, like, you know, from our belief system. Like, what makes us different? Because Christians, are moni they say they're monotheistic. Yeah. The Jews, they say they're monotheistic. Even the Hindus say they're monotheistic. So what, does, what makes Islam so different is the fact that we don't just single out God in his divinity in the sense where we believe he's the one who created us, he's the one that sustains us. But the second part of it, uh, al here, is that basically we single him out in worship. So we don't have this concept of, let me go to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and ask him to ask God. Because yeah. there's this thing that, I don't know if it stems from Christianity, I don't know if you guys would want to add on this, is this thing of we are not good enough to be in the presence of God, or we're not good enough to go directly to God. So Islam came to you get rid of this. some sort of mediator. Mediator. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Guru, yeah, yeah. or, you know, someone there. <coughs> what is it um, the, the Hindu guy I was speaking to? He was talking about Vishnu, Vishnu? Yeah, so what they do is some of them, they have priests, isn't it? That you go yes. to the priest. I mean, Catholics, they've got confessionals as well that you go to the priest. It gives you uh, X amount of uh, Hail Marys, and then that's it. Like, whatever you've done, like, through him, you've been yeah. forgiven. Yeah. You were going to say something? No, no, no. Um, yeah so there's a, a lot of people like even i was speaking to yeah. a jewish individual as well and yeah. they were saying that they've had people that yeah. have come through a certain lineage that have added they've got the authority to add to their holy book wow. so this is what the quran says as well isn't it that you know woe to those that change the book with their hands this is supposed to be something that's revealed to the prophets and the prophets disseminated to the people but there have been certain people that have obviously um taken center stage and that's how corruptions then come within the religion because if anybody just comes forward with their own whims and desires then of course then things kind of come in yeah um <coughs> before i speak anything uh just to clarify i'm not a scholar i don't know much about religion this is all it's still a learning experience to me that's why mm. i love doing this like i'm still young i'm still learning mm. um all of this really just is a big learning experience especially like trips like these spending yeah. time around people like all of you with sneako mm. as well mm. um but, Needles, you look you look very good man Look at you, man. <laughs> we need to get you married first. Inshallah. That's a nice yeah, show. Yeah. That's a very nice show. Soon. We'll see. Yeah, inshallah. So, so you're 19 years old? Yeah. Okay. So how was your experience uh, traveling with Sneeko? You met him before he accepted Islam? No, I knew about him before, but in person, I didn't meet him before he accepted Islam. Okay, so you know him as a, as a Muslim? Well, I mean, I've, I've been watching him for a long time, you know? Yeah. So I know him as many things, you know? <laughs> many things. <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen any changes in Sneeko? Like before 100%, Islam? 100%. Like yeah, what? yeah. Um, I think this is one of those things in his life that he's he's really really taking serious, you know. Like he's really diving into it. Really? Like he believes in it okay. oh, with his whole heart. I, I saw that. I saw. I see that. Mm. Um, and it's helping him. It's helping him a lot. Um, mm. I mean, obviously, we talk a lot off stream. Like he's he's if he's struggling with something like that's that's his answer. Mm. Which I mean, it's great. It's great for him. That's it's really good. It's good. To always have something like that. Really? I mean, he spoke about it yesterday too. Like anybody without something like that would fall into depression, huh? Mm -hmm. if they have exactly. nothing you know if they have nothing to fall back to say if they don't have a family or something and religion yeah. is the only thing if they if they're atheists like if they believe life is worthless those yeah. are you know type of people who exactly. commit suicide unfortunately it's true okay so um your your travels with him and by the way those who are watching uh sneeko and hijab they're having a, a bit of a nap because they're really really tired especially if he hasn't been sleeping and plus because the stream is a bit dead so because because you're in it like it, it makes you it, fall yeah. asleep isn't it because this guy's just... yes inshallah uh, by the way you guys can hear Zishan and uh, needles uh clearly actually let's know we can bring the mic closer inshallah uh, and before so... before we progress one thing mashallah that's you know we, that we've wide. seen with this yeah that we've seen of course with these lives is you guys have probably seen this clips on ali's channel as well of people coming on to these lives accepting islam people that are ex-muslim accepting islam as well people that have been married to a muslim but they're catholics accepting islam people asking questions 
So you've seen on here people accepting Islam and we've been at Speaker's Corner when somebody accepts Islam and now the, the time comes to help them pray. I personally know somebody's like, oh, Alhamdulillah, it's, it's going good. Sort of Fatiha, yeah. struggling a bit yeah. with that. It's a bit difficult. Okay, you for the YouTube video, it's always good to have somebody there, isn't it? Like yes. we say with the Quran, that the Quran is sent, but it's all sent alongside the Prophet that they can help uh, you yes. understand the Quran. So here it would be fantastic if somebody is there to help them learn Salah as well. So you're, you're telling me about these uh, instructors. Yeah, so that's what's the, the thing, unique thing about our project is that basically it's, it's one of its kind because we're heavily focusing on Salah elements. You know, because we've got brothers doing Dawah, Ayah, yeah. Tatil, they're doing amazing. With us, we're heavily focusing on the second pillar of Islam because that is what nourishes the soul. Mm -hmm. Like there was a sister who accepted Islam two years ago with us. So um, we I tried to invite her to our Salah uh, program. We was doing like a, a day workshop. I couldn't get in contact with her. Um, and she was basically married. She's going to marry this Muslim guy, yeah? So they were going to come together. I, could, I didn't want to save the number. Right? She was going to marry somebody and you wanted to call her. Yes, because through the, the, the guy, yes. I don't know why. Yes. She's, she came up with the guy. She was getting to know for marriage. Wait for it to sink yeah, in, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give it yeah. a moment. So basically, um, she contacted her. We tried to contact her. We couldn't, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so then afterwards, what happened is Allah very interesting. Yes, okay. <laughs> so then we're doing the workshop, and then next thing I know, I get a call. This, oh, this is it was so profound here. Yeah? So we finished the workshop, and it was about 10 p.m., and I get a call. And I've been trying to contact her for like about a week before the uh, uh, the workshop. And then she calls me on the day, and I'm like, Salam alaikum. And then it's it's uh, the husband to be, yeah? And he's like, yeah, listen, she's in a really bad place. She's crying, etc. And I was like, mm. okay. I was like, what happened? And he was like, basically, she just feels like empty. And then I said, you know what, bro, where do you live? He said, South End. I said, we'll wait for you. So Sister Lauren Booth was there. So we waited for them. She came and she was crying. I was like, what's the problem? So she's like, I don't, I don't eat pork anymore. I don't drink alcohol. I don't go clubbing, but I feel empty. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. I said, so do you pray? She's like, no. So this is one thing people understand. The salah and the dhikr of Allah is what nourishes the soul. So drinking, not drinking alcohol, not eating pork, and not going to these environments, they help the body, physical body. Yes. You know what I'm trying to say? But salah is what nourishes the soul. So that's the reason why with us, when we have these guided prayer mats, we printed 10,000 of them last year, we nearly run out. So to, uh, this year in Turkey, we're printing 20,000. And that's mm. cost us 126,000 pounds. Yeah? So uh, it's getting printed 20,000 of them, and we send them around the world. Like anyone can order it for free. You can go to salahplus.com and order a guided uh, prayer mat, and we send it out. In the UK, we pay for the costing. Internationally, because it's five, six pounds. Yes, yes. We just pay for the postal fee, and we send it out to you. Now, you can get the guided prayer map, but you might be still a bit lost. So what we have is we have Salah instructors. So we have brother's team and sister's team who, if you're abroad, wherever you are, we will teach you step by step. So the sister's team will teach That's you. That's very step. important. The brother's yeah. team will teach the brothers. If you're in London, we come to you in person and teach you. But now what we're trying to do is we're trying to open Salah hubs. So we've got one in Regent's Park Masjid. We've got one in East London Masjid for the sisters. But we want to have these Salah hubs all around, not just UK, not Ireland, Wales, Scotland, England, but around Europe. So then there's weekly classes of Salah around your area that we have our instructors that we pay. And their job is what? Every week you will know. You're going to open one in Estonia. I don't know where that is. Okay. Where is it? That's in Europe still. <laughs> yeah, we, we might do, yeah? <laughs> okay. So that's what, what about we, Latvia? La, yeah, we, we never know. We might do. We might do. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Inshallah. We'll see, Inshallah. Maybe you can come. We'll what about Krigia? No, I don't know where that is. That it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you guys are watching Bob and Sisters, a hundred pounds can teach ten to thirty people. And you also how to pray you're also uh, giving prayer mats to um, the dawah tables as well now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're, we're we're supplying that. For example, Shakot Mount. So you're a supplier now as well. Yes, yes, you're yes. a dealer and a supplier. Yes, yes, but don't get high with it on supply. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so Shakot Mount Farouk from America, we're sending him at two hundred and fifty to his dawah table. Mahad Abdul Bahad, uh, dawah table, we're sending it out to him. Any dawah table, like we gave some, I gave 100 uh, prayer mats to, you know, read, uh, Hyde Park, promise in the front, yeah? Oh, nice. So any dawah table, we are just supplying, even masajid. So Religion if someone's a dawah, uh, they have a dawah table yeah. and they want some, so how can they? They go to our website, salahplus.com, book it from there. So just write one quantity, but just write there, we are a dawah table. We will ship it out to you. And we want to have it all around the masajid. You know why? Because we pay two pounds for every prayer mat we send. So if we send a thousand prayer mats, it costs us two thousand pounds. So just to reduce that cost, if we send this out to certain massages all around the UK, instead of ordering it, you can go to your local machine and pick it up. Or your local dower table. And because it's you, I have to ask this question. Please do. Does the website work? 
Yes, it does. But guess what? A lot of enemies of Islam. Try, a lot of enemies of Islam try to uh, attack the website. Are you serious? Well, I'm not joking. There was a couple of times the website went down. Yes, they're literally uh, on purpose uh, attacking it. But Hamza, that just shows us the uh, the success. Uh, Hamza, what we're doing, and and you know that they come to the streams and try to you know sabotage it. But Hamza, just shows me the power. Like so many people come to Islam. There's such a demand, bro. Even the the sister, the, the Catholic one, who came to Islam. Yeah. The sister team haven't still got in contact with it because there's a, there's so many people waiting, bro. Mm. So that's the reason why we want to expand the team, inshallah. So for you guys, how many people watching Aki? Roughly. Uh, 780. Okay, bro. Can you okay? Can you do me a favor? You know, there's a there's a thing you can type on the your banner. If you can write there, bro, um, 100 pounds can teach 10 to 30 people how to pray salah, inshallah. So you guys know. So just so you guys know, brothers and sisters, 100 pounds can teach 10 to 30 people how to pray salah, how to do wudu, and also we teach them the Quran, inshallah. But yeah, other than that, uh, so um, needles, needles, and okay. Abdul Wahab. Yes. So you guys have been traveling with Sneeko. What have you known him for? How did you meet him? Um, One Kumar. question at a time, Ali. <laughs> Thank you. He's my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, um, uh, Sheikh Omar introduced me to him. I think Sneeko came to San Diego. And I, I just, <laughs> you know, yeah, Sneeko came to San Diego. I think that was the time where he took his shahada. So just wanted to show him the brotherhood of Islam. Mm -hmm. You know, because obviously the American Muslims were a little bit different than the UK Muslims. Uh, unfortunately, we're a lot softer than you guys, you know? Um, yeah, 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 there's a lot of liberalism going there, bro. Like, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, sugar, like, not even sugar coating, bro. It's just fully coated, yani. Sugar, chocolate, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate, but, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, this is, what, this is the monster we have to deal with. Because the American culture is a very powerful culture, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it could consume you if you don't know your own culture or if you don't know your own religion it can consume you so that's why you know it's definitely recommended for the muslims in america to know your religion and you know if you know your religion then inshallah you can protect yourself from the evil you know mm -hmm. in in different lands throughout the world uh but alhamdulillah you know i i met sneeko i would say almost a year now you know alhamdulillah we, we've been to a lot of different countries together he's a great brother alhamdulillah i've been seeing him progress you know throughout you know throughout the months and I'm very proud of him. Well, I am very, very mm -hmm. proud of him. And, you know, we should always encourage uh, our brothers and sisters that are newly accepting Islam because it's not an easy journey. You know, obviously, they, they're they the only Muslim. Like, Sneeko, he has no Muslim friends in mm -hmm. Miami. You yeah. know what I mean? His family is not Muslim. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. he's doing all this by himself. Imagine that, bro. Like, yeah. imagine you have all the money, you know, at your hands. You have all the women at your hands. Put yourself in this position. What would you do? A lot of us, we would fold. A lot of us would fold. Yeah. And look at him. He's striving to try to spend time with the right people. Yeah. He's also very young as well. So we have to have mercy toward, towards our brothers and also just look at, you know, the potential within the brothers as well. Alhamdulillah, look what he's doing during the Ramadan streams. You know, he's he's trying to highlight the gems of the Ummah. So may Allah bless him tremendously. I'm very proud of him. And this is honestly just the beginning. And inshallah, I encourage all the... You know, any other influencer that does want to accept Islam, don't be nervous. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we're all here for you. We're all going to welcome you. And if you have any questions, we're all here for you. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Needles. How did you experience? So, um, did, you, did you manage? You didn't get You didn't get into Mecca. No, no, I didn't like go. Me, uh, Medina? I, I was in Medina. They... Yeah, I was oh, in Medina with them for a couple of days. Yeah. Okay, how was that? How was your experience? Like, with it, was, it was definitely interesting. It was completely... Um, completely different from you know the us for example i mean everyone knows that completely different just how they do everything from the food they eat to how they act to how the streets even look to just the culture in general you know mm. everything's completely different um it was i liked it i liked it it was really good to see and learn new things one thing that was interesting though is um i spoke about this with sneak and warner too like when the hotel we stayed in people wouldn't get in the elevator with me really yeah like Why? i don't know like I, I you know i had the thobe and everything yeah um they just they wouldn't like there was like there's six elevators yeah. i like you know we call one or i call one and one next to me opens first i go in and yeah. then everyone else just like you know they wait for the next one and it's not even like it's a family or something you know there's a bunch of people waiting but they wouldn't and it happened multiple times really it was interesting i don't know and it's weird too because the hotel staff um i mean obviously you know they spoke english so it was you know i was able to communicate with them they're all like you know respectful and everything so it was all good but i noticed that the people that stayed there it was you know that's weird. I had weird um, interactions like that, I guess. I mean, I wasn't, you know, it, it was kind of funny to me. It was like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, For me, I could see, like, if there's a bunch of sisters, I noticed that as well. 
because obviously Muslim women they have a lot more shyness. Mm -hmm. So if you're the and you're a big guy too, dude, you're like six okay, six. Well Six five, you know. <laughs> like what I mean? gonna beat them so you see, you see big white guy in the elevator, you know. What I mean, well, um, that's what I'm saying. There's dudes too, you know. There's like multiple different yeah, parties no, of people. That's, that's, Two guys, a family, sisters, like you said. Obviously, you know, yeah, that's the women. Right. I understand, but yeah. it's strange. Okay, okay that's what being experienced. Today. Maybe you were, you probably put like a, a different atar on, like on a perfume. Maybe that was. <laughs> he put on the bandit one, you know. That's <laughs> probably doing that one, bro. <laughs> no idea what that even is. <laughs> Atar's perfume, isn't it? Uh -huh. But that's a different flavor. Of <laughs> yeah, but no, it was nice. It was it was really nice. It was really interesting. It was a good learning experience. That's why that's what I was mentioning earlier. Um, yeah. Like traveling just in general with Sneeko, especially to all these places with you guys. It's it's a really great learning experience. Learn new cultures, different religions, what's and everything. Place, uh, we spoke about it earlier. Uh, Japan. We went to Japan, Tokyo for a couple of days. It was it, it was my favorite, but it was tough because I didn't get to experience it much as soon as we landed literally straight off the plane we got to the hotel brushed our teeth showered and we did a 16 hour IRL live stream which was probably like the toughest what, what like live stream uh, IRL which means in Park? real life in real life I've said IRL because we've got organizations in Tawa I'm sorry about that, yeah. that's, that's like when we have the camera walking around like everywhere you know we'll go to a restaurant and then they'll go I don't know indoor skydiving and oh then gosh. How, do you, how, how do you have the battery it's, back <laughs> it's, we had to sit down we sat down at McDonald's for like two hours it was it looked so stupid I had like every outlet was mine every outlet around the whole McDonald's really? This one over here had the microphones charged. This one had the portable uh, batteries. This one, like every outlet. I was like, like people were eating. And I'm like trying to like plug it in between their feet, like it's saying like, start. You know, you know that's, that's amazing. Like, the, 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 you, you must believe the cause. Like, like yeah. the fact that you, like, do you get what I'm trying to say? I love that. You know when someone's just like. Very resourceful as well. Yeah, bro. It's like, it's, like, it's like he's on the board, but do you get what I'm trying yeah. to say? What do you, Dedicated. have you noticed anything about Islam? Like, what was the one thing that you say you like, really find interesting about Islam? Um, I, I like the community thing. aspect of it. I, that's mm. something I really do like. Like, I, I, I noticed that wherever in the world, if there's two Muslims, they're going to stand together. Yeah. Which is, which yeah. is, I mean, that's how the whole world should be. There shouldn't, mm. I, I don't think there should be any division or hate, but mm. that's one really good thing I like about the unity that you guys have with each other. Brotherhood. Yes. Yes. So brotherhood. yourself, would you class yourself as a Christian, agnostic, or an atheist? Uh, Greek Orthodox. Christian no. Orthodox. Okay. So Greek Eastern Orthodoxy European. is actually, in, in terms of their values, it's actually somewhat closer to Islam. Have you kind of looked into it, or is it like a cultural? Thing? Like I like I mentioned at the start, I don't. I'm not widely knowledge on um, right. on any religion really. You know, I'm still young. Like I said, I'm still just learning about life. You know, I'm still a kid realistically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I just came out of high school. I didn't. I didn't even finish high school. You're a massive kid, bro. Massive okay. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm laughs> <the> kid. I'm a teenager. My, my, my. But what was I saying? Um, it's it's yeah. yeah it's all just a learning experience. But yeah, I noticed that there is a lot of similar similarity to Islam. A lot, a lot. Because I also went to, um, and I've seen when it comes to, especially Greek Orthodox, mm -hmm. right? in terms of their dress, they're very kind of, they've got beards, they've got robes, they get up at like one, two o'clock to, to have like a two o'clock mass. Yeah. Um, so they're more dedicated than some of the Christians that you probably would have heard of in the West. So, yeah. so yourself, uh, Needles, when religion, when you think of you, uh, guessing you believe in God. Yes. So when it comes to now, which religion, what what criteria do you have, or what evidence do you kind of require to take a to pitch your tent or a stance, or where are you at the moment? Okay, so for me personally, we spoke about this last night too. What was it? You said that intuition is like the best proof of religion or something like that? What, what was it that? I wasn't there last night. By the way, it's, it's gone dark, guys, oh. but don't worry. We'll just but just but intuition is definitely a um, one one of the roots. Like there's different forms of evidence, isn't it? You've got empirical evidence. Yeah. You've got philosophical, rational, logical intuition. You've got testimonial. Yeah, yeah. So for me, for example, it's, it's intuition. It's those moments that you think are that... I wouldn't say miracles, but things that are, it's like, this is crazy. This is too good to be true. You know, I mean, for me to be sitting here at 19, you know, this is to me proof of God, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I took a really, I didn't, I didn't finish mm -hmm. high school. You know, it's, it's, it was like a big risk, especially like to my family too. Like, um, you know what? That's, that's so mature of you because there'll be so many people 
that they say, you know what, I'm just waiting for a sign from God. Yeah. Like, where are you now? I'm a 19 year old, I'm with a celebrity, we travel the world and yeah. still wait for that sign, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that sign is coming. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just had a table full of food and with wonderful people, but that sign. <laughs> it's true. Sure. No, 100%. Because I mean, even things like moments just like these are like things I used to pray for, I mean, still do pray for, you know? Like these mm -hmm. are, this is what I think makes life life, you know? Like human experience, conversations, interactions like these, mm -hmm. traveling the world, learning new things, experiencing new cultures i think that's like the beauty of life you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um well that's good man i just want to give Finn. we just had some donations of three pounds we got a donation of 20 pounds from ashraf omar ahmed uh brothers may allah bless you inshallah uh, we are just 264 pounds away from our target 264 pounds away from our target guys are you inshallah. serious just from no the the, the 33 pound mark so just 264 pounds away okay doing, like each month yeah so guys, if inshallah, if you're watching that, we're just 264 pounds away. Uh, 000, yeah, Hamza, we've got nearly 1,000 people watching. Just want to update you guys. Uh, Sneeko is having a nap. Hijab is also having a nap. Uh, they might join us. Inshallah. I might also have a nap. He, he's going to have a long nap. Uh, I think gonna uh, you're gonna... <laughs> he's going to have a nap. He's closing up as well. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we're just 264 pounds away from our target, inshallah. And just to bear, bear in mind, guys, inshallah, we're trying to do some fundraising for our Salah Pass project which is helping teach new Muslim and born Muslims how to pay Salah, how to do wudu. Uh, we teach them Quran as well. Uh, our aim is, inshallah, to get them to establish the Salah properly by themselves. We have the guided prayer mat, uh, which teaches them step-by-step step how to pray. It's absolutely free. The prayer mats are free. Our instructors are free. And we're trying to open Salah hubs all around the UK and Europe, inshallah. So bear that in mind. The donation link is there. £100 can teach 10 to 30 people how to pay Salah. £200 can teach 20 to 60 people. £300 can teach 30 to 90 people. And the list goes on, inshallah, wherever you guys want to give. Uh, if there's some heavy hitters there, subhanAllah, who can give. A thousand pounds can teach 100 to 300 people how to do wudu, how to pray first time, and also to learn the Quran, inshallah. So bear that in mind. Um, we have just got 234 pounds to go. So yeah. Um, so Greek Orthodox, do they believe? What's the difference between Greek, Greek Orthodox and, like, let's say, the Catholics or the Protestants? Um, so or anything, anything with the word Orthodox on it yeah. means that they are proper on it. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, I've seen them more serious. Yeah, so when you go, I, I went to Palestine, isn't it? And um, there's there's a church there, the Church of Sepulchre. Yeah, so the keys of that church is actually in the hands of Muslims because apparently they used, back in the days, they used to be these, the Christians would be fighting amongst each other, so they entrusted the keys to Muslims. And ever since then, the keys have been passed on to Muslims, and the Muslims come and they open the church. So it's, again, uh, interrelation of, of cultures practically speaking there mm. but even when you see christian um like religious christians walking you'll think that, that they're a muslim yeah yeah they, they've got robes they've got the beard they've got the the hat on as well so you'd think that this is a any regular muslim going mm. but then when you see like maybe the cross or something yeah and you're like okay um, i think it's just a big difference because you'll never see one of those in the u.s i mean i my life never has yeah. mm -hmm. aside from you know a priest in a church that i've been to but mm. You don't, you know, you don't see those guys walking around like maybe you would hear Muslims, you know, yeah. like over here, you can spot a Muslim on the street pretty easily. Yeah. So it's, it's completely different because in the U.S. that doesn't exist realistically. Like I, mm -hmm. uh, you spoke about it earlier saying how if you, you know, being in the U.S., you could be taught your religion the wrong way. I, I think that's completely true. I mean, they're hanging to like pride flags and yeah. churches and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, Water you know, how does, like, how does that make sense? How does that make sense? It's the American version that's, of the religion. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's I, I think like it's. And, it's complete nonsense and needles it comes down to this point and i was speaking to somebody about this as well that when the religious scripture the scripture that comes from god if it's yeah. corruptible and if it can be changed then people will change it based upon their whims and their desires even the insecurities mm -hmm. so you'll see the dominant powers trying to push lgb yeah. lgtv whatever for the for the, for the screen they're, they're pushing that and people will fold but they need to justify that from the scripture. But if the scripture is airtight, not according to, according to, according to, like according to the gospel, according to... Mark. According to a donation. We just had some donations. 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 10 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 10 pounds. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. I like that. I like it. You woke me up. You woke me up. I don't need caffeine. I need Abdul Wahab here. Yes. I'm on big dog. Um, <laughs> yes, carry on. So, okay, interesting. Yes. So, uh, because of the preservation of the Quran, the preservation of the sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the accuracy that you'll find in Islam needles is just, it's absolute next level. 
Right. I can tell you, for example, a saying of the Prophet in the Arabic language. I can tell you the translation. I can tell you everybody in the chain leading all the way to the Prophet, peace be upon him. What do you mean by chain? The chain of narration. Mm, what do you mean by narration? Okay, I'll give you an example, yeah? Mm. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al mar'u man ahab. A person will be with whom he loves on the Day of Judgment. Yeah, so if you're with, you know, good people, pious people, you'll be raised with them on the Day of Judgment. If you're like, the wicked people and the bad people you'd be raised why, with why them on the day of judgment. Why are you doing this that you're talking about me? Yeah, because, you know, I don't want to bait you out in the, in the stream. You guys have been doing that back and forth a while. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> just so guys don't know, our, just so you guys don't know, me and him are very close friends and we have this sense of humor. I'm going to punch his face after, don't worry. Yeah, this is just well, off great great accept it. He's noticed. He's going to tell you a fight by now. Yeah. Is that how come? He's gonna, yeah. he's gonna, Luke is gonna, everyone's Niru, asking. Niru, Niru's gonna accept Islam, but just by our, uh, he's like, you know what, in America, this would turn into a gun, but I will, <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna accept Islam, this might be, this might be the truth. Everybody's so, asking where Sneeko is, uh, he's sleeping, he's been, I mean, we've been working hard all this trip, yeah. he's taking a little nap, maybe he'll be here later, we'll see. He but... might come, Matt, we're here till midnight, uh, Matt, Matt in the masjid, let's go. So, um, Al Mar'u Ma'aman Ahab, a person will be with whom he loves, we get that from Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, yeah. Imam Ahmed got that from Muhammad ibn Abu Adi, who got that from Humayd at tawil who got that from Anas ibn Malik, who got that from the Prophet. So we know every single person in the chain. We know the name, family, tribe. We know if they're reliable or not. We know where they were. We know their memory. We know their reputation. Mm -hmm. Because anyone can say anything, and especially if it's 1,400 years ago. Mm -hmm. How do you verify it? We have an entire science called the, the science of hadith. But, but how do we know that it's not Chinese whispers? Because he would uh, ask yeah. the question is, okay, but all this time, you know, how, how do you know it's not lost throughout the years? What's your, what's your evidence? Khan, you are going to say something. Yeah, can I, just to ask a general question, like obviously for me being younger, I have a completely different life experience than all you. I don't mean to be rude, but uh, disrespectful in any way, but being older than me, um, like we grew up in very different times. Like I'm growing up now, like, you know, the Apple VR headset that they're yeah, having now, yeah, like yeah. that, that's going to be a normal thing in like five, 10 yeah, years, yeah, you know, everyone's yeah. going to be walking around the street with that. Literally, yeah. That's going to be like the life that I'm going to grow up in. I'm sure yeah. like none of that existed before True. for you guys. So mm -hmm. what, like, how can I, why would I not believe that everything in history is a lie at my age? Mm -hmm. Like, how do I know that everything before like the year 2000 yeah. around when I was born, that mm -hmm. it's not just all like, you know, yeah. scripted fake. Cause I don't know that I don't, I don't have, I'm sorry. I haven't seen, I haven't seen it. You know, how do you know in the matrix? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, how do I know it's not all literally all a lie? Let's speak to the champ. Yeah, so oh, no. so what would you yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 jump in, jump no, in. No, so yeah, you need to jump in. I don't want you to do that. Yeah, but also how would you Whoa, come on, bro? What? Don't what? that's my guy right there. Well, that's the champ. The champ is my guy right there. I just, I just want to give you a last uh, breath, uh, inshallah. My yeah. last breath. Oh, yeah. you hear this, yeah. <laughs> so much passiveness. Sorry, you're the piece of crap. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Dishan, how yeah. do you feel that? I wonder, I wonder how you would answer. I wonder how you would answer. Yeah, so uh, when it comes to history, there's there's different... It depends what a person regards to be evidence. Yeah, if we're dealing with empirical evidence, then empirical evidence, we're looking at paleontology, we're looking at manuscripts, we're looking at carbon dating. Yeah, stuff that we can go and verify. For example, the oldest manuscript we have of the Quran is uh, here in the University of Birmingham. Yeah, and that's dated to the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And that's been carbon dated by the University of Oxford. Mm -hmm. So, what, be it empirical evidence or be it testimonial evidence, like I said, that you can pick up books of narrators of hadith, like Tadkiratul Hufad, and you can check up the narrators that I mentioned. Yeah, and then you can check up their biographies. And then you can go to other books that verify exactly the same thing. So when enough people verify the same thing, then the likelihood of it being a collective lie diminishes. Mm. The more people from different... Yeah, Does it ever get to zero? You said it diminishes. Yeah, so it will only get to zero if you hear it yourself. Yeah. But in Islam, it does get to zero. There is a term that's called mutawatir. Yeah, so mutawatir means there's enough chains... Like some say it's beyond 10, some say it's less, but whatever whatever the amount is, whatever the opinion is, mutawatir is zero. And yeah. that so many people have said it, it is now impossible for it to be a collective conspiracy. Yeah, it might, it might be a mass conspiracy. For example, and before I just start, I just want to say, Muhammad, 
I'll buy I'll bake her just donate 254 US dollars. Mashallah. We've got a donation of one pound, which is amazing. 254 US dollars. An anonymous kind sold 127 US dollars. One pound, it says anonymous. But the angels know him. One pound is very important, subhanAllah. Zakir Ali, 50 pounds, inshallah. Uh, but um, what were you saying? Yeah, so we were talking about okay, yeah, yeah. mass conspiracy. So, for example, let's give you an example. Yeah, okay. So, imagine we're here, yeah, and really, do you have to imagine that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so imagine there are just 50... imagine, bro. Just try it. Out <laughs> right, right. There's 50 of us, right. and you do something. For example, you say something, you say, you know what, I just had kiwi, and it's the most amazing fruit I've ever had. Now, 50 of us have heard that. Now, it'll be a mass conspiracy for all of us to collectively make that lie up. You get it, mm -hmm. and then we are transmitting that chain to, to our kids and saying, "These you know are what? fifty people that come from different areas. Different areas. They're not born like they're not born. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's not like we're like we we've come as a group and be like, listen, Conspire, we're, we're going to make this up. Yeah. We've come here, we've witnessed needle say kiwi is the best fruit I've ever had. Then we go home and say to our wives or our children, and say, you know what? We came across someone called needles, and he he tried the kiwi, and he said it was the best thing he ever had. Now there might be a bit of difference of somebody the way they're conducting. They might say, you know what? He said it was an amazing fruit he ever had, or something, whatever, yeah. But the concept is there, word for it. So imagine now that transmission carries on and on and on and on to so generations to come. Now, if you are hearing it from multiple sources of thousands of people saying, I've heard from my fathers, 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 father, and they heard someone called Nero say this. Now you might be thinking, oh, I made up story. Then you go somewhere else and they're like, oh, yeah, my father also heard the same thing, same thing going back to them. And now you've got thousands of people and in multiple areas, who's in and, they're, and they're all telling about, you. Yeah. Then it has to be a mass conspiracy because why on earth would they have to make such a lie up? Do you get what I'm trying to say? So that's why testimony works because when it comes down to history, for example, how do you know your mother's your mother? Like, how would you know? Like, it's the same goes to all of us. I look just like her. I've lived with her my whole life. No evidence. Scientifically developed. It doesn't mean nothing. Just because you look like her or you've not. You should be able to take like the blood and the DNA or something. Okay. Yeah. So it's usually DNA test, but, but you yeah, haven't done that. But you haven't that, done that. Have so you believe she's your mother without doing that? I mean, I. I look pretty similar to her. No, 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 I know, no, but look, yeah, it's yeah, valid yeah, points yeah. what you're saying. I'm just coming from a devil's advocate. Yeah, no, no, and that's what we see is that you rely on testimony. Mm -hmm. He's good to... with being a devil's advocate. Yeah, 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 I'm very good. Yeah. I wouldn't remember with you, Have you been to China? China, no. Okay, how do you know China exists? I don't. It's on the map. Exactly. I don't know the world exists. Like I don't. Exactly. And that's another thing I was gonna mention. In history, I understand what you're saying, but in a world now where something like the neural link exists, a chip that they're gonna put in your brain yeah. to make you like a cyborg. With things like that, couldn't they put that in every everybody make them all believe the same thing? Whatever the news wants to. Even if they do, it does not negate that could exist. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not differentiating that. I'm just saying that it's. Yeah. I think it's like what I'm trying to say here is that it's different. Yeah. I think in my age because I'm a lot more skept skeptic about everything yeah, I think because. You're going down the road of extreme skepticism. Yeah, now, it's because this... I'm younger and I don't. You know, exactly. it's so, there's so no, much but technology. But his point it is somewhat yeah. valid. That let's just say there was a neural link in everybody's head and we're we're all being controlled. There are certain patterns that we can see of people that are being controlled. Mm -hmm. They don't have free will. They don't have the ability to switch or to change or to challenge power. The fact that we have that, we can rule out to some degree that we're not being controlled, we're not being coerced. Because think about it, if you're programming something, then when you're programming it, you're not going to allow that program to go beyond its boundaries. The fact that you can, it's like the Truman Show. They made it, a, you're aware of the Truman Show, yeah? Uh, the name, yeah. Okay, so Jim Carrey film where he's literally in a program, like in a TV show, mm -hmm. and um, he doesn't know that, and people have just seen him grow up. But as he tries to escape or leave the island, they make some sort of reason for him to stay on the island. They don't ever want him to leave. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that we can leave, the fact that we can get on aeroplanes, the fact that you know we can explore with different cultures and, and read different books and stuff like that, and completely change our ideas like you've grown up greek orthodox yeah uh, or, or greek orthodox yeah? well yeah never super religious you know but with that kind of frame yeah framing and now suddenly you've, you've come to a framing of islam which is somewhat very different and it's challenging your ideas and, and, and is you know instilling certain things within you i don't think it's that much different i'll give you an example how it is so uh, greek orthodox do they believe in the trinity yeah so they believe there's a father, there's a son, and there's a Holy Spirit. So there, there are three, but they're one. In Islam, we believe that there's only one. There's no son. There's no, it, there's no linking with the Holy Spirit in the sense that there, there's a, no. There's only one God. Mm -hmm. There's loads of prophets, 
but then that's it. They will say, okay, the holy book we have, it's according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They gave their own view. We say, no, this comes directly from God. And no, this is so um, preserved. No one can add, no one is memorized from cover to cover. Every other household, correct me if I'm wrong, every other household, there's at least one person, either they or somebody they know has memorized the Quran. It's in common. the world? In the world. Every other family knows at least one individual that's memorized the Quran from cover to cover. Wait, it's so standard. Every other family knows one person? Yeah, either they have it or they know it. Wait, so what if a hundred families just all know the one same person? No, no, no. In the, in the sense that... Different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different. Because if it's the same person, then that's... Firstly, I'm impressed that they all uh, know the same person. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> this guy is incredibly famous, so I'd like to meet him. But um, yeah, they know a half is... Um, other than the one that, say, another family okay, would know. Right. That it's just so common. Kids as young as six have memorized the whole book. The sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are memorized, not only memorized and preserved, but the chains are known, and there's entire books on those chains. However, when it comes to the Bible, the earliest complete manuscript we have is 300 years after Jesus. The earliest manuscript we have is at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And when it comes to prayer, it's not one day, you know, out of the week in church. No, we're praying five times a day. Mm -hmm. Oh, this person can take you to God. No, every we can pray. You've probably seen we can pray in the park. We can pray even over here on the shop floor as long as we're on the side. So even when it comes to commitment, the commitment that Islam offers, there's there, there's no one else that gives that practical commitment than anything else, even in terms of political effectiveness mm. yeah you see islam like the prophet peace be upon him he was a general he was a father you know he was um, you know he was a relative he was a friend he was a prophet allahu akbar there were there, and there's so much known about him but with jesus when did they start documenting stuff from the age of i think 30 before that his life is unknown the prophet peace be upon him we know even when he was born he was born circumcised when he was born, there were certain there, there certain things that were known. Yeah, that these certain uh, because think about it. If if somebody is, I'm is, curious. How do you guys know that he was born circumcised? Because that it's narrated from him. It's, it's a yeah. transmission that we're talking about. So it's, it's yeah. very interesting. Like we know, for example, how he ate. Why do we eat with the right hand? So there's so much detail to even how he went to the toilet. How Correct. he went to the toilet to what he liked to eat. When he did not like a specific food. So every was, single thing was documented. Everything yeah. was documented. That's why there's five. How many gray hairs on his beard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna say yeah, but why do you think everything about Prophet Sallallahu was documented and all the other prophets weren't documented as much as him? Just use your brain for a second. Why would his prophethood be documented for the whole world to see and the rest is not as documented? I don't know. I mean, I'm not so. As Muslims, we believe that the Prophet Sallallahu is the only prophet that was sent to all of the world. By God, by God, his message was not like for a specific nation, mm -hmm. like you know, children of Israel or this, that it was, it was for the whole world, okay. And that's why we have so much information on him so that we may gain guidance from you know the insight that Prophet Allah gives us. I'm curious, also, I don't want to go off track, but um, did you want to answer? He asked, he wanted both of you to answer that question. I asked, no, he, he actually gave such a good answer. Right, I was just curious. Also, yeah, also, yeah. guys, if you want to ask anything to needle, Needles, let us know, please. If there's any questions you would want to specifically ask him, and in the meantime, guys, we are on 33,283 pounds, we are just 717 pounds away from our target. Yeah, 717 pounds away. Just want to remind you guys why we're here fundraising as well. In the meantime, we're doing this. Um, the brothers might come, sneak over. I think he's waking up. I don't know, that's what I heard. Or hijab and uh, the other brothers, they might come and join us in a minute. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're raising for our Salah Plus project, teaching new and born Muslims how to pray Salah. A hundred pounds can teach 10 to 30 people how to pray Salah, inshallah. Imagine, brothers and sisters, you're the reason why somebody knows how to do wudu. Yeah, imagine like needles came to Islam. Yeah, imagine he came to Islam. He doesn't know nothing about wudu. Do you know how to do wudu? There's nothing like it. Yeah, wudu, okay, this is what wudu is, yeah? Wudu is basically obviously, the ablution that we do, yeah? So like, you know, washing your hands, etc. Yeah, it's just preparing for salah. He doesn't know how to pray. Yeah, the first I thing I would... Cleansing. Yeah, ritual cleansing. The first thing I'll do is give you a guided prayer pack, yeah, that would help you, and then get a salah instructor to teach you. So imagine someone like Needles, he has no idea what wudu is. He doesn't, he wouldn't know how to pray salah. He doesn't even know surah fatiha. And this is the reason why we're launching this project, or we've launched this project, and last year we taught up to you're 10... Launching it or you're launching it? We, we've, we've, we've launched, and now we're launching again. We're on a different planet. 
So, <laughs> yes, we need to relaunch it. <laughs> so, uh, Brahman says, inshallah, 100 pounds can teach 10 to 30 people how to pray salah. Even Sneeko, he's just about uh, got a sort of authority under his belt. And it took time. It's not easy. So, um, uh, and he even donated today, by the way. He donated, I think, $300. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he did. He did. Yeah, he did. No, he said it yesterday. He was going to pledge. Yeah, yeah he, okay. he gave. So, may Allah bless him, inshallah. And he, I'm sure the, a lot of reverse the, uh, donate towards this because they understand the struggle. Yeah, they yeah, understand yeah. the struggle. I would even say Fidais as well. People yeah. do da'wah. They, yeah. they understand, bro. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, bro, but when, when you give da'wah to somebody and they accept Islam and then they're, they're coming to you, it's, it's now finding a resource and you want to continue giving da'wah, but you don't want to leave that person in the lurch as well. So mm -hmm. the fact that there is something like this, how, how would this fit in with your da'wah? No, this actually helps me a lot because t for me, Unfortunately, I'm just a one-man army, you know, so I, 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 it's, it is difficult, but I've always, I've been a lone wolf my whole life, you know, so I kind of yeah. do everything. I, I don't like to rely on anyone, you know, I like to do everything myself. It's good to be nice. And that, that way the job gets done. Because let's say, let's say if I ask, hey, brother, can you go with me? Yeah. Last second, Shaitan whispers in his ears. Yeah, yeah. And then next thing you know, you know, he's, he's like, oh, I'm not going to go. Just because of him, I'm not going to go? No. I'm, if mm. I have stronger willpower than him. I'm gonna go. So yeah. I, I've just learned to just, you know, rely on myself, and I have Allah on my side. I have the angels with me as well, protecting me. So I, I don't necessarily need anyone besides Allah. Uh, but you know, when it comes to people accepting Islam and then doing the aftercare, this is something I can't do by myself, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how am I gonna help all? How am I gonna keep in contact with all these thousands yeah. of people? That's what some people say to us. Yeah. Why do you, Why do you have to charge? Because they go, Why do you have to charge to teach someone how to pray salah? Yeah, and I'm like, firstly, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a trustee and I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid a penny. Uh, but the brothers who are doing this amazing work, I said, look, you can teach one person how to pray salah. You can, one person, right? Of course. You can teach one person. Yeah. Inshallah. I can teach one person, yeah? And this is the reason why uh, we need this project, yeah? We can teach one people. But what if I say to you, there are 100 people waiting to pray salah, bro? You're going to say, bro, That's I have to... very draining. Bro, I have to leave my night. You're going to say, I have to stop working. And I have to do this. I have to dedicate myself to this. And that's our point. We need dedicated people who have to. They don't eat grass. Yeah, the prayer mats don't grow on the trees. Yeah, we have to get it printed. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Did you want to say something, like Nishan? I was going to say, yeah, Ali, really? <laughs> so oh. if any of you guys have any questions, ask for needles and the one and uh, Zishan, inshallah. Tell her, it's, it's not easy. Yeah, I can remember, you know, like long time ago. when, when you, How long have you, have you been doing this? A dawah. Yeah, a table. Um... The table I've only been doing a year and a half. You know, um, I've only been doing the table a year and a half. But as far as dawah, I started off just giving dawah to my friends, mm -hmm. and uh, alhamdulillah, you know, it was actually I, I, the the type of person I am. When I learn something, I immediately like to share it with others. But mm -hmm. that's actually how I memorize. That's the how you learn. That's myself. what they say. Like if you teach, it's how you learn. Exactly. So you know, and the people that I taught were very rebellious. You know, the first uh, group of people that I actually shared Islam with. Was a frat house. I don't know if you guys know yeah, what a frat tell house. Me, tell is. me that story. Yeah. So, so there's... you guys, want to hear, you want to hear a gin story? Get ready for this. Okay. <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Muslims love marriage, uh, gin, and magic. Yeah. This one doesn't have marriage. It, it has uh, some gin and maybe magic. So yeah, I, I first started giving dawah like at a frat house. Yeah. Um. So I would come into the house. You know, we were all chill. And what's a, what's a frat house? So sorry. Muslim, a, a they, they, frat they, house is like uh, uh like you know. Bunch of college kids partying, girls, alcohol. Ah, okay. You know, it's like a party lifestyle for young people, right? Okay. So I, I wasn't religious at that time either. You know, so I was, uh, you know, investigating Islam, learning more about Islam. And when I would learn things, I what the thing is when I learned about Islam, I tried to start from the beginning. So when I learned about Shaitan and I learned how Shaitan has an effect on people, I realized I can't outwardly just tell you I'm teaching you Islam, mm -hmm. or else the Shaitan within you is gonna wake up mm -hmm. and know that hey, he's receiving dawah. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, let me just shut this down. Yeah. So I give subliminal dawah, you know, like okay. so that the, the shaitan in you doesn't wake up and realize he's getting dawah, you know. I have a question, but wait, so what, what does that mean? Like having you shaitan in someone. Yeah, so oh, we okay. believe that there's like all of us have a was that Karin? Was yeah, yeah. Karin. We all have a Karin within us, which is one uh, shaitan that will whisper it to oh, you. What, do, is that? what does that mean? Yeah, it's, I'll explain it to you. Yeah. yeah, so you know, there's one shaitan that's with you that whispers negative things, and then we have a multitude of angels with us that are whispering good things to us, right? So at the time when Allah created Adam and, um, you know, and Iblis, uh, you know, you know, decided to not bow down to adam and rejected what allah told him to do 
Then Iblis asked Allah, Oh Allah, give me certain things. Because obviously you, you're, I'm going to be the one to misguide the children of Adam. So one of the things he requested was that, you know, one of the things that Allah gave him that for every human that's born, there's going to be a shaitan that's born as well. And then Adam heard this dua and he said, Oh Allah, I heard what you asked, uh, you know, uh, I heard what you gave, uh, you know, Iblis. Because he wasn't always Iblis. You know, he was known, it was a very, he was a very righteous, a very righteous he jinn. everywhere. Yeah. Very righteous, very knowledgeable jinn, but after the creation of mankind, he became extremely jealous arrogant. and and arrogant. You, know, and fallen, you guys believe fallen angel? He was a fallen angel. We don't believe he was an angel. He was at the round angel. That's why when Allah says, no, they all did accept Iblis. Iblis is not an angel. He was so much at the ranks of. So Christians believe he's a fallen angel. But yeah, and also the is it called Karim? Karim. So the Prophet peace be upon him also has one. But the Prophet said oh, his one was wait, subdued. Wait, what that? What, like, so what it is, is like, you know, you know, sometimes you get evil thoughts. You know, that's what we say to people, yeah? Divorce your thought. That's not you. You get some weird thoughts that come to your head, yeah? And you're thinking to yourself, well, that, that's not me. And you even feel uncomfortable at the feeling. That is the shaitan whispering you, to you to do things that you don't want to do. So everyone has one in them? Everyone has one in them. The Prophet, peace be him also, but his one was made to subdue and not affect him. Yeah, so anytime we do that, that's what we say, for example, in salah. If we get evil force, we say, I would have been lying in the shaitan. You know, you keep looking at that, and you're the Kareen is telling you, pick it up, there's a dash in his face, and you don't do it. <laughs> <'Cause>, yeah, yeah. <laughs> holding, see? yes, and even there's a verse in the Quran where Allah says, He's created mankind with inclinations of good and bad. Do you guys, like in Islam, uh, do you guys believe that you know what happens after death, like what actually happens yes. to the human? Yes. Detail. So it's, it's in detail, like for example. You want to tell me about when the soul is taken? Yeah. So like before, example, before you say that, have you guys heard of like the stories where people like, for example, die in the hospital and then they yeah. wake back up and they say like they went to hell or something? Like okay, they were that, burning, they came we back. believe that they did not die because when you die, you're not coming back. Okay. The specific instances Allah mentioned in the Quran of specific individuals that this happened to, yeah? When Jesus uh, had the, uh, the powers of doing that as well. But in those instances, we believe they did not die because when you die, you're gone. There's no, I went and I saw. Did you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, but if uh, like their heart stopped, the that's not they, they didn't die. Yeah, it's because it's a medical condition. Yes. Where it can stop, yeah. but then we ignite again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they exactly. have experienced one of them. Yeah, so we, we don't we don't believe that. But we have narrations which uh Abdul will tell you about what happens to you to like for example a believer and a disbeliever. Yeah, so so getting into it, you know, Ibrahim Prophet Abraham, right? He asked one time that how does the angel of death appear to an individual? So um, at that time, you know, the angel of death said that, hey, are you sure you want to see how the angel of death ap appears to the individual? So first, uh, he he showed Ibrahim, Papa Ibrahim, that, you know, how the angel appears to a righteous person, right? Let's say if you're a righteous person, and you, let's say you were, you, you had a, a life full of suffering, full of misery, but you witnessed the angel of death come to you the way that it comes to a righteous person. Your whole life that you went through misery, you went through all this hardship, just seeing that sight of that angel, such a beautiful angel that comes in such a beautiful fragrance, it's going to be in glowing white, and um, it's going to come to you, and it's going to take your it's going to take your soul, but it's not going to take it, you know, it's, it's going to take your soul in a very peaceful manner, you know, um, and when when that human being sees the sight of that angel, it's as if nothing bad happened to them, but. The opposite is also true. When the angel of death comes to an evil person, you know, it is said that that angel of death will come as a pitch black giant. His feet will be on the ground. His head will be in the sky, right? And that fire will be coming out of his mouth, his, his eyes. And such a such a disturbing, uh, you know, sight to see that let's say if someone lived the most amazing life, but they witnessed the angel of death in this form, it's the worst thing you can imagine. And then the soul is taken away from them. You know, how do you, how do you guys uh, portray angels? Because you said it was like white, tall, or no, you said it was uh, white with like a good fragrance or something. That's the angel of death when it comes to the form, uh, when it comes to a form to the righteous individuals. So we believe that, look, we believe the angels are created of light. Jinns, the shayateen, they're created of smoke as fire. We are made out of clay. So there's different forms. There's ones that have wings, like mm -hmm. prophet Peter from so angel gave on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Humongous wings. There's been times he's shoved himself in a human form. Yeah, then there's this is Asalak, is how he actually looks. Um, so to us, there's different, different things. Just to want to quickly Matthew Zawadi just donated five US dollars, Ayman 50 pounds, Abdul Malik 25 pounds. Guys, we are nearly there, inshallah. Oh, guys. Carry on, guys, we're nearly there. Let's go. Oh, you, yeah. you know, what's really interesting about that. You know, for me, I found that really interesting because there's this guy named Anton LaVey, right? Yeah. 
who started the Church of Satan in California. Ali, you probably know him. Yeah. I heard oh. I heard he's your best mate. I think <laughs> <laughs> I heard, his name is Richard Levy. <laughs> yeah, so, Richard this, Levy. <laughs> so his name is Anton Levy. He created the Church of Satan, right? Yeah. And first, you know, so for these Satanists, right, obviously they worship the devil. And you know, with these Satanists, you know, they are very excited at the time of death, right? Because they get to you know, oh my gosh, can you imagine so excited and then it just death comes. Exactly. And that's, oh, no. and, and that's exactly what happened to him, right? So yeah. Anton LaVey, <laughs> Anton LaVey, Anton LaVey is on his deathbed with his followers and they're all with him and he's all excited for death and then the angel of death comes to him. And the way he screamed and the no way, way he shouted as, you know, as his soul was being snatched out of his body, no all his followers left the church of scene really? after that, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, they left the church. Maybe they actually know their video of it. I don't know. I guess you could find it. Oh, that is crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, Have you guys yeah. ever so, seen those videos of like people like looking up, spinning around, and then they just die? Yeah. Have you seen that? I've seen that video. I saw a video of some I guy saw a literally couple. hitting something. That's so, like, well, the Quran says, right? The Quran says that, you know, when the soul is coming out from the throat of the person, yeah. right? And they That's look on, what it looks like. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. they look up, they get scared, they start like twirling around. They just. Yeah, they always look dead. up. Because yeah. like, the Prophet teaches you from the set that they see their soul being taken out. That's what the Prophet told us. He said that when the soul is taken out, they, they are watching the soul. Uh, taken out, and that's what it's for the for a disbeliever. When we say disbeliever, by the way, you need to understand the four categories. You are a disbeliever, but not the disbeliever of <laughs> like an enemy of Islam. You get it? You're not hostile towards us. You're just somebody who doesn't know the message of Islam. So when people, when Allah talks about the disbelievers, people think, "Oh my God, he's talking about me. He's talking about needles." No, it's not. It's, it's not. It's talking about. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. There's those who are not hostile towards. That's why in Surah Montana, verse uh, eight, it said, "Allah does not forbid you from being just and kind." So those who did not fight you based on your faith and kick you out from your own houses. So it tells us to be just towards you guys, be kind, and just do your humanly things to do. But those who are humanly things to do. Yes. Like, what does uh, that mean, Ali? Like you know, saying, would you like water, please? <laughs> <laughs> so the thing here is that when the soul is being taken out of a disbeliever who's an enemy of Islam, we believe that his soul is ripped up. Like the Prophet Peace of Him said, is imagine a uh, so, someone with thorns and being taken out a wool. A kind of wool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on, wool, yeah. Cotton. yeah, yeah. Rip, it rips it apart as a pattern. And the prophet Yusuf said, the believer's soul will come out like a drop of water. Okay. Yeah. Don't trust me. <laughs> no, no, I'm okay. Thank you, bro. Thank you. No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. No, you and, don't have an okay. option. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. my soul will get like ripped apart. No. Okay. So this is this is where. So so so, so, so okay, okay. Let me know if you change your mind. Yeah, I, I think I think our thought was not going well. Uh, uh, this one, this that, that is. So my soul is going to be ripped apart. <laughs> uh, no needles. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hopefully. Uh, yes. Okay. So what we see is this. that's we good, bro. Keep more, more of those ones. Yeah, Don't just take it passively, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah all right, could be ripped like, apart. Like, right, cool. Yeah. Well, isn't that a good method to bring people to God? Fear. No, it is. But I feel that's that's. We believe Islam in is both. both. Like the there's first. a balance between fear and hope. Yes. right in the middle like you need too much fear is not a good thing and yeah. too much hope is not a good thing because hope will make you negligent fear will cripple you so in the middle yes. but actually I, I have a question about that let's say someone if worships question, Allah that's a brother I have a question <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the angel is oh my god dude I almost died <laughs> Like, I, I, had power, to, I had the grape on my tongue, I just sucked it. <laughs> the brother is eating the grape if he analyzes. In, in the meantime, guys, we're just 570 pounds away from our target. Don't forget, guys, 500 pounds can teach 50 to 150 people how to pray salah. It's a salah plus project, guys. The, uh, the brother is the shahada. Like, we are teaching people how to pray salah. Guys, donate on the link, inshallah. Let's reach that target in the next 10 minutes. 570 pounds to go. So, first, so I was asking <laughs> before you almost died. Before you almost died, you went to that realm. And then you skipped me. I almost died trying to ask this question. Well, he worked so hard, and then he's trying to move past it. Yeah. So, so like you know, there's a difference between those who worship Allah out of fear and those who worship Allah out of love. Yeah. Which one do you think is better? Both are good, oh. but this this isn't necessarily something that applies there. For example, if you're worshipping Allah out of fear, there's still a balance that's required. Because you're doing it out of fear, now you need to have that balance between fear and hope for that prayer to be accepted. Do you see? Because if it's fair... But who has a better connection with Allah? 
The one who worships Allah out of fear or the one who worships Allah out of love? Uh, both, both. Which because, one are you? Because they, uh, I worship Allah because I love Allah. And I'm very grateful to Allah. He already but, says only fear God, the, the one true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I do. I fear Allah, but I mean, I, 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 I don't faith, do things wrong. The faith is different. Though. Though. Like, I stay away from sin. Okay, you know? but Allah says the fact only the disbelievers lose the hope and his mercy. So the other extreme is very important because you don't want to fall to a category where you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm doomed, I'm finished, Allah's going to I'm just saying. So it has to be a balance. You need both of them. It's not one or the other. Mm-hmm. One is the other extreme. If it's just purely love, you can go into things where you start innovating the religion like some of the Sufis fell into. The extreme love of Allah took them to levels of, yeah, I'm in this mode, Zen mode, we're in Zen mode, yeah, I'm in this mode, etc. So there has to be a fine balance, I think. One and, or the other and the thing with fear is this this is an English translation. Fear in Arabic, there's different gradations of fear and there's different types of fear. There's one fear that somebody is coming with, with a knife and you're running away from that person. Mm-hmm. There's another type of fear that a, a child has with the mother. The mother tells the child off, the child cries, but then run towards the mother. Doesn't run away from the mother. There's a difference. Running away from the mother and then another is running to the mother. Mm-hmm. So this fear that's been spoken of here, a type of fear is running, that you fear Allah, that you run towards him. So it's like running to your savior? Yeah, it's like running to your savior. Yeah. You know sometimes your father's trash. So you don't run away. You know he does so it isn't the fear that's in English. Because in English, the language is somewhat limited. In Arabic, it's just so rich. One one word can have so many different meanings. So here when he says fearing God, fearing, that would be somewhat of a contradiction if that word was to be taken literally. I fear God, but that surely that would drive you away from God. Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. So within there, the fact that he's got only fear God, and then he's a Muslim. That means that that meaning is not taken. That's driving you away from God. Okay. Rather, it's driving you to God. Yes, and let's not go away from the, the question he asked. Yeah. Okay. Anyone wants to ask Needles a question? Please uh, type it there. Uh, so um, you said, does that mean your soul would be ripped apart. apart? Okay. So we Islam is Islam has this beautiful concept that not not any any religion has yeah, which is the following: yeah. we believe that somebody who, for example, hasn't heard the message of Islam, somebody who has who has a psychological yeah. issue. Somebody who has we reached the age of puberty um, would not be um, punished. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're here, but we're chilling. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. What time are you coming back? Uh, we'll move back to Helen. We're here. We're here, but we're here to. Oh, oh, we're right. here. Yeah. He just says he just sleep for sleep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so we don't believe. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, pleasure uh, that oh, you're leaving. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. Uh, <laughs> He's not coming back by the way. Are you making coming? Back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, I'll donate, but it won't be money. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. And uh, hopefully we meet again. So guys, in the meantime, we are just five hundred and fourteen pounds away from our target, alhamdulillah. So five if there's any big hitters there, alhamdulillah. Uh five hundred pounds can teach fifty to hundred and fifty people how to do wudu, how to pray salah, even memorize the Quran, inshallah. Uh yes, oh, there's that. So guys, if you're watching this, inshallah, uh any donation you give, ten pounds will teach one to three people, hundred pounds will teach ten to thirty people, inshallah. So guys, whatever you give, really, really appreciate it, inshallah. Uh, how many people watching, uh, Javi? Hello. 1,133 people watching. May Allah bless you guys, inshallah. Dishan's going. This is the most amazing news we've had today. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dishan, okay, whoa. Dishan, Dishan it's a pleasure. Uh, we're going to see Dishan on our next live appeal. Ah! We're going to see him on our next live appeal, inshallah. Who wants to see him? <laughs> if anybody wants to see Dishan on the next appeal, please donate 50p. <laughs> okay, coming to your question. So basically, we believe, uh, Needles, that a person who hasn't heard the message of Islam uh-huh. or a person who heard the message of Islam in a distorted way Islam is terrorism, 9-11, they want to kill us, they want to do this these people will be tested on the day of judgment what if it's disoriented? not intentionally like for example, say um, you know, if a reaver is trying to teach me but they don't know correctly and then I start following it the wrong I would start following it the wrong way too yes, exactly. so what we say is this God Almighty will never be unjust to the servant so Allah Negates injustice to himself. Nishan, can you? Uh, yeah, Nishan, yeah. I said, if anybody don't, it's 50p. I'm gonna come to the next video. Ah, okay, take care. We'll pass it. May Allah bless you. So, the thing is, this you said about um, if somebody if you are following somebody else's misguided, mm-hmm. so, yeah. So, what we say is, <laughs> in, a, in a nutshell, Allah will never be unjust to his servant. So, when anyone that ends up in hellfire in, in our religion, they ended up there because they deserved it. They will yeah. never ever say, God, you wronged us. They know they are there because of what their hands have done. So they know they earned it. But 
Paradise is not something you earn. Because there's nothing that you can do to earn paradise. Paradise is eternal bliss. We live in this earth for about 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. I'm talking about eternity. Can you can you divide eternity by 80 years? It's, you get, it's, it's a nothing. Exactly. So that's why that there is nothing that can be earned. We only access that by the mercy of God. There's nothing you can do. I don't say I go to paradise because I pray five times a day. No, that's a given that needs to be done. We only enter paradise because of the mercy of God. So it's not like, oh, I've, I've done this work and I've done fasting. Yes, they're well and good. Mm -hmm. God doesn't negate them. You've come with that. You've believed in it. It's the fact that you believe in God and don't done those acts. There's the main thing. So you'll be tested on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, for example, a person who dies on disbelief and didn't hear the message of Islam, God Almighty will bring all of those people together and he will present himself. Not that you won't, you won't see him, but he will bring hellfire, which is in reality paradise. Uh -huh. And he will say to you, jump. I'm your Lord and I'm telling you to jump. Now, that will be only because it's only fair because if a group of people lived on this earth and went through calamities and were tested, it is only fair that they're also tested in this way because for them, we believe in God without seeing him. We had faith. Of course, there's evidences, etc. But it's only fair for those people. Then Allah will tell them, I am your Lord. This here is reality paradise. But it looks like hellfire. If you trust me, jump in there. That shows your belief in him. That shows if you genuinely believe he's your creator, you will obey him. And if you don't, then you end up in hellfire. Wait, so that's how you would end up in heaven? By jumping in the hole that looks so like hellfire? For the people... For the people who did not hear the message. And just to remind you, this is um, there's been some donations. Just oh, have we got some donations? Okay, we've got some donations under that. We'll update that as well. So, brothers and sisters, we had some donations. We're going to carry on with needles. A hundred pound donation, 10 Canadian dollars. S. Iqbal, 50 pounds, 10 pounds. Matthew Zavadil, 5 US dollars. Eamon, 50 pounds. Adib Malik, Hodan, 64 US dollars. Unknown, 20 US dollars. Abdul Malik, 10 US dollars. Uh, the donations are coming in, guys. May Allah bless you guys. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, we are trying to reach the uh, uh, hit the forty thousand pound target today. Um, we are just four hundred and fourteen pounds away from our fifty four thousand pound target. So yeah, we we're just talking with uh, needles as well. So the, the reason why that test is there is because the people that believe in this life, they believe in God without seeing Him. They will test it. They put their trust in Him. Now it's only fair that the ones that did not hear the message of Islam on Yom Qiyamah they are tested. You know the test of the people who didn't hear the message? It's that Allah will say to them, jump in the fire. But the fire Allah will, will be, present the hellfire to them. Yes, yeah. but it will be Jannah. Why? Because that shows two things. Number one, if you do that, that shows that you believe in God. Mm -hmm. And it shows that you trust Him. And you're doing that leap of because you're, you're going to have hellfire in front of you. It's not a joke. Do you get it? Yeah. And that's, the moment, that's, that's really powerful. powerful. I, never, I never heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but that's just, you know why? Because nobody, uh, Allah doesn't want to be unjust to anybody. So he knows, okay, you didn't hear about Islam and he knows you better than you know yourself. If he knows somebody, if you know deep down, Islam is a truth, but you're like, ah, oh. do you know what I'm saying? He knows deep down, you cannot fool God. Mm -hmm. But if he was genuinely someone that didn't hear it, like, oh, Allah, I did not know. Oh, I, I thought it was terrorism and this time it scared me. I was looking for you. If you genuinely turn to God, God will guide you. I did that 11 years ago. I did that 13 years ago. You Wait, so you reverted to Islam? Yeah. Or were you I before? I was, I was, uh, I was believed in God. I was like, I wasn't saying. Uh, I don't even say agnostic. I believe I was theist. I had no religion. I didn't believe in any religion. I just called it man-made to control the masses. I said, when I don't something, my mom just called it. Oh. Yeah, carry, carry. Um, were you ever agnostic? Or did you ever did you ever get the sense of belief that, um, what do you mentioned, that religion is like man-made just to control the masses? You know, I remember my friend, he brought that to me once. Uh, for me, my with God was very interesting. I remember I had a flash when I was nine years old. Right, I was at my friend's house, and I didn't want to leave. Right? And praying to God because he had this new video game that I wanted to chill and play, right? And I would pray to God right now so hard so we don't leave. And I swear to God, it ended up raining so hard that I didn't leave. We stayed another two hours to play the game. That was my first experience with a lot, and I was like, wow. What was it? That's what I missed my mom for. Did you get see it again? Yeah, yeah I, was, I think I was like nine years old. I came to my friend's house, yeah. and he had this new video game that I always wanted to play, right? Yeah. And my parents were like, hey, we got to go, right? And I didn't want to leave. Yeah. So immediately I was like, yo, you know, let me, let me, I'm going to ask Allah, oh Allah, make it rain so hard. <laughs> I can't leave, you know what I mean? And it ended up raining so hard. I had to just play my game. And that was my experience ever of me calling upon Allah, and it happened, you yeah, know? The thing is interesting. You know when somebody wants to believe, they believe things. And when somebody 
he could see the most miraculous things. He just doesn't believe. So it's a matter of heart, you know. So like those who are good, that's what Allah says. We do not guide the uh, the sinners because why they are people who do continuously evil, evil, evil. Okay, you got it. Okay, we need to increase. Yes. So yeah. I was going to ask another question. Yeah. What were we talking about just before? So, we're talking about the hellfire. You know, okay. So, talking. yeah, but that doesn't work. So, <laughs> what the? No. That's interesting. Well, um, oh, yeah, that, I was going to ask you about uh, you said that before you, uh, religion was just made to control. Yeah. Materialism, money, just a, a typical like this is success. This is what I want to do. So to me, it was just like I don't know because I was in a relationship. Stream is lagging. Stream is lagging. Is it? Right, let's see. Brother, oh, oh, brother, oh, brother woke up. What's that? <laughs> What's that, brother? <laughs> Let me see, guys. Is it still lagging? Let us know. Yeah, so can you ask Renee? Is there a reason for that? But it's fine all this time. Let me see, guys. Give us a second. Let's try to sort it out. What are some desserts? I like this this podcast idea of the, of the camera here on the table. Yeah, hello. Like, yeah. Yeah. Good night. I feel like I'm the innovator of that. <laughs> you missed it, bro. We were... We were cooking the yeah, I know my back. He was picking the needles. He was giving him dawah. And he's talking about yeah. it. He's like, hey, this doesn't look like all this work. You're like telling me my soul's going to get ripped up and everything. Yeah, that, it's like... It's, it's, it's soul, isn't it? Does that mean my soul's going to be ripped up? Like, oh, no. You guys... Ali, I tried everything with him. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good dawah. <laughs> this is not good dawah. You are not winning my heart. Thank you. <laughs> What's your job? He had, a, he had a podcast. He's gone, he's gonna come back. He's, he's gone to Dishan's house. He has a podcast with his author. I have no idea. Yeah, I think you guys woke up together. Guys, you're working now. Let us know. Plenty on the plenty. Okay, so uh, naps are amazing. Don't you think naps are amazing? <laughs> Bro, let me tell you something. We need to talk to Sneeko. Someone and just call me lazy in the chat. Yeah. Everybody woke up no, late no, 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 He no, took no. a nap instead of streaming. Lazy. The guy's been sleeping two hours streaming. I told Sneeko, Sneeko, we need you alive. Because if you don't sleep, you're going to... You know there was a study done in Germany. They, so there was a lady who got a couple of, you know... Um, those German dogs. What are they called? German Shepherds. <laughs> um, yeah, German Shepherds. Yeah, dogs. that's what they're called. So you got the puppies, yeah? Uh, and... I was going to make a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jews. <laughs> so the, the 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 thing is, he got the puppies, and she got the puppies, and she starved some of them, gave them water, but some of them she sleep deprived. The ones that she sleep deprived died way faster than the ones she deprived of food. Food is sleep is fundamental, but if you don't sleep, it's very very. So you're trying to tell Sneeko he's gonna die. Bro, you need to sleep. Yeah, damn right. Tell me, my soul's gonna get ripped up. He's gonna <laughs> die. <laughs> this I was not going. If anybody wants to please come to me. Yeah, so bro, make sure you sleep, man. It's very important because you want the stream to go, bro. We need you here. But yeah, so uh, what were you saying with your with your point? Uh, I was just asking about the controlling masses. How you? Yeah, exactly. So to me, it was just like religion, just to control the masses. I don't mm -hmm. really believe in it. I was very intrigued about what happens when I die. I'm just like, yeah, I don't know what to do. He's just checking it, guys. Let us know if it's if you can hear it. It's a, it's out of our control. Sneeko came and the Wi-Fi went. <laughs> plenty on the plenty. We have to do rookie on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're just 353 pounds away from our target. If anybody can hear it, hear it. The, the internet's still not working today. Sponsored by Gen Lounge. <laughs> so I genuinely think you're cursed with lag. Everything always Yeah, right? For no I show up, but it's our S and no reason. Let me see. It's been the whole time. Why well, should I? Yeah, no, no. Like, oh. I don't really left, but like, yeah, we started. Okay, they're saying it's good now. All right, it's good now, guys. Let's go. Let's go, inshallah. So yeah, yes. Yeah, so I actually believe this. Let's control the massive. I had, I was really intrigued about dying. What happens to me when I die? I'm just like, I really want to know what happens to me like, when I die. Yeah. So and from there, like, I used to just 
like lives of clubbing, partying, etc. You're, you're just getting boring. It's like same routine every weekend, clubbing. What's next? You get it? And I was in a relationship, haram relationship, for five years. Uh, that was kind of coming to an What's end. What's a haram relationship? Haram relationship is not basically like not married, dating, girlfriend, boyfriend. So if I have a girlfriend, it's a haram it's relationship. Haram, yeah. Well, to you, it's you, you, you don't believe, so you don't live by the law of Sharia. So it's it's it's, it's for us. I mean, even according to Christianity, it is haram. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yes. According if I want to marry her, I can't date her first. Then marry her. Okay. Depends, no, but you can't her. have intimacy. With yeah. Her. There's, there's, yeah. There's Who said Christian? I do? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Mashallah. Mashallah. Very right. Welcome to Islam. <laughs> so, so yeah it's it's in a nutshell like obviously in christianity as well like i knew some christians as well they would not do it in this life they'll they'll date in this he was fasting he was boxing he was training and then you understand the value of water but if the water is everywhere, it loses value, you know? So, yeah. The stream but, gave out again. Everyone said it's completely out. Yeah. Can't do nothing. It's gone. The stream is going to drop. I should get out of it. What happened? I'm a bad luck. You changed the internet? Oh, he's just switching the internet. What happened? Are we back? You know, it's really interesting. Back, uh, if we're back, please donate 453 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, yeah. You know, I, I found it really interesting talking about, you know, non-intimacy before marriage and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, you know, usually, obviously, being around Muslims and stuff like that, it's it's normal for a religious Muslim to, you know, not be intimate with a woman before yeah. marriage, right? But I remember the first time I met, like, a, 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 you know, I met this Christian guy. Yeah. Uh, and he was, like, this really big, buff, black Christian. And he told me that, hey, I don't... I, like I don't have intimacy before marriage, wow. and I was just shocked mm. because looking at him, he looks like one of those yeah, guys that hey, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah. yeah, like and then and then I was like I was very Wait, shocked by that. What do you mean one of those guys? Like one of those guys, like he looks like a it's player, you game. know, like oh, okay. no, he, it does, you can't <laughs> look at someone and say the guy, but like mashallah, you know, uh, you know, like physique, yeah, he had the physique of like basically you know what typical girl uh, typical girl would want you know much he's very tall as well mm -hmm. and he told me hey I, i'm a i'm a faithful christian and, and i'm you know i'm not and you don't find that in los angeles yeah. you know i was very shocked when i saw that so when he said he was a virgin i was like very proud of him you know he's lying i know he's lying but... no 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 we assume the best thing. yeah but well, we're supposed to cover up the sins <laughs> okay. yeah. well, we don't confess our sins right yes. yeah so only to allah not no, <laughs> no priest none of that thing yes guys we are just 353 pounds away from our target uh, just to remind you guys, we're here, inshallah, with our brother Abdul Hab, the Wona, uh, Needles, and Sneeko as well. Uh, so, guys, inshallah, if you guys are watching this, as you guys know, we're raising funds for our Salah Plus project. Uh, it's to teach born Muslim and new Muslims how to pray Salah. Um, inshallah. So, guys, bear that in mind, inshallah. Like, for example, Sneeko, he came to Islam, and I'm sure the struggle of learning how to pray Salah, which he mentioned, was it was quite difficult. And just now, he's you know got sort of fighting under his belt. So, imagine. 10 to 30 people like him who we teach how to do wudu, how to pray salah, uh, and also at the same time teach them the surah fatiha. So wherever you guys donate, really appreciate it. Um, we are just 353 pounds away from our target. Uh, the donation links are there if you want to give inshallah. Yeah, we're just 353 pounds away. Can I ask you, this is what I do now when I'm at home and I, I don't have somebody to lead prayer. I just play a YouTube video of somebody like... Okay, good. You know what you need? You need that guy to pray, man. You put it in front of me, bro, and you just... Everything says you already know. So, because instead, because YouTube video, because sometimes it can speak fast and you lost the track. With this one, it's in front of you. You literally can read it. So I'll I'll get you I'll get you one. Just just take it, bro, and just put it in front of you. Anytime you're praying, everything you need to know, and you already know how the movements, etc. Just do that in shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a couple if you want to give it to anyone else as well. I have a question. How do you, how do you guys view suicide? Okay, so in Islam, Very suicide, suicide, it's it's a major one suicide. of the worst sins. Yeah, and the punishment is that the person, however they kill the sad cell. They will be resurrected and they will do the same action until the day of judgment. I have to say, like, you remember that guy, subhanAllah, who uh, lit himself on fire for Palestine? Yes. I, I think that he was getting, all due respect, I think he was getting a little too much praise from the Muslim community because, like, this is a major yeah. sin. Yeah, we yeah. shouldn't encourage anybody to do that for, for attention or for a cause because he's just going to he's gonna go to hell. Yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah, with him, there's, of course, it shouldn't be praiseworthy. Um, at the same time, it's like he didn't hit, know the message of Islam, so he, we don't know if he knew anything about Islam. So his affair is with God. We know for certain that Allah will never be unjust to him. So if he didn't hear the message of Islam, then hopefully on the day of judgment he will be tested 
and hopefully he would. Um, it must have hurt it if he was so public about Palestine. Yes, yeah, the thing is, sometimes they're emotionally connected to a specific issue, but they don't know nothing about Islam. For me, I was like, wow, somebody who doesn't, who's not a Muslim, to go to that length to do that, it, it, it just amazed me. I was like, wow, like you've got Muslims, they don't even buy Coca Cola because they're too concerned about the taste buds. And you've got somebody who's not a believer who goes there and sets himself on fire and dies. It's just amazing me that the fact that he will go to those lengths, but it just shows you that there's humanity still there, like in that sense. And again, we're not, we believe it would have been better, more constructive that he was alive and did that different kind of activism than something so extreme. But yeah, it's also we don't decide for who goes to heaven and hell. Yeah, we don't that's decide. Like, that's, like with us, it doesn't work like, oh, you know, he was a Muslim or he's going to heaven or this person disbeliever. Yeah. We say he died as a disbeliever. This person died as a Muslim. Okay. Well, we can't come and say, oh, and that was going to paradise. You know no, I'm not the one to say that he's going to go to heaven or hell, but yeah, yeah. I'm saying like everybody who's kind of glorifying and yeah, romanticizing yeah. this person, I think it's bad because other people might follow suit. Exactly. It's not permissible. Mm -hmm. yeah, go and, yeah. Don't light yourself on fire, basically. Exactly. Don't do, that. Yeah. Don't do that. What other questions you have about Islam? So you, you've been, you know, it's crazy. He's, he's Christian. He's been around yeah. Muslims. Well, uh, so you, you always point to me and say you're Christian. You're Christian. Like you, you classify me as like the Christian churches that have any, like <laughs> pride flags. Like what I believe in is completely different than what you see in the U.S. Yeah. Like all the nonsense. I don't like a believer associate with any of that stuff. Thank you. Like I was just speaking with them. Um, they, they mentioned that like a, a Greek Orthodox. If you saw one outside, you think it's a yeah, Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very, very traditional religious people. Long beards, yeah, like giant cloaks too. Yeah, they're, they're very, very. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the Christians. But what were you saying about me being a Christian? <laughs> I, I wasn't thinking about like gay Christians. When I was saying that, I was just wondering like what your, uh, what your observations have been being around Muslims like so consistently for the past couple of days. Yeah, we spoke about it earlier. Uh, one thing that I like about it a lot, I mentioned was like the brotherhood in it. How if there's two Muslims anywhere in the world, yeah. they'll come together and they'll be together, you know? Like yeah. they'll unite, they'll unite. Yeah, they'll unite, you know? make, make, make yeah, yeah. And it's interesting too, because I mean, I'm a Serbian too, and it's the same with Serbians. Like any, yeah. any because obviously it's a small country, there's not a lot of us. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever we run each other anywhere in the world, it's like, it, it's weird, we can easily tell. Like I was wearing this exact hoodie. There's like it's not even Serbian. It's a Russian writing. But I was um I was in your building one time, and some Serbian guy that actually came up to me, you know, and I grabbed each other's contacts, and you know, where we talk, you know. So there's I, I like that there's that sense of brotherhood. But well, was that a Serbian connection or a Christian connection? Well, both. Well, I mean, I'd say so, like off a face value, Serbian. But I mean, you know, all Serbians are. You know, like we we saw each other. You know, we we know we know we both believe in the same thing. Mm. So I'd, I'd say both. I know a lot of people come to Islam say that they say that for example the brotherhood they really mean that they like people like in the Western world would like when it comes to eating they'll be like oh listen yeah this is my bill uh, you know I owe twenty three dollars or something yeah yeah like, like in 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 the Muslims they fight each other no I'm paying <laughs> no I'm paying no I'm paying Did you get it mm -hmm. like it's it's this genuine love and wherever you are the hospitality. You know, um, they, they have, you know, it's, it's, it's very important. Like even the Prophet Peace said, he said that, for example, your neighbor has so much rights over you. Like the Prophet Peace said, the angel Gabriel came to me and spoke about the neighbor's rights so much so he goes, I feared that he would tell me that the neighbors have to inherit from us. Mm -hmm. So the inheritance, it's like now you got your neighbor on there as well. The rights of the neighbors is very, very great. So we talk about zina, but zina with your neighbor is far worse. You know that there's different categories. For an old person to do zina, it's not the same for a young person to do zina. Why? Because, bro, he has now sex drives that's all down. What's, your, what's his abuse? You know, he's an old man, his sex drive has gone down. Wait, so you guys even take, like, sex drive into account for sins? There's, there's, because why? Because for the one who's in a situation, not that it is right, nobody comes to, oh, I'm young. Mm -hmm. No, it's still a sin. You still get punished. There's, 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 but what is the excuse? You don't get sin for it's, it's far having worse. a sex drive. I yeah, yeah, no, 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 like it's for an elderly person, if you're a young person, like Sneeko, and you've got an elderly person, a 60, 70 year old, yeah, both arguments sake, these individuals go and commit zina. It's far worse for this person. Uh, do you this know person. what zina is? Uh, like sex what, outside fornication? Outside. Yeah, I have sex outside. Yeah. Because this old guy, Bob, what do you have? You don't have no sexual, what are you doing? It for? You're just doing it for the sake of it. You get it? Oh, so it's way worse for him than, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 like, but, but zina is zina, of course, what? 
yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. That's why the Prophet peace be upon him, allowed a there was an elderly man that came to him and he said, "Can I kiss my wife in Ramadan?" Well, fasting. And he, he said to him, "Yeah, you can." And another man came. He said, "Can I kiss my wife?" He said, "No, you can't." So he said to him, "Why do you say yes to one and not the other?" He said, "He can control himself. He's, old, he's, he's elderly. He can control himself." But the young man, I knew that the kiss is going to lead somewhere else. So I said no to him. So you see how he diagnoses. It's not one shoe that fits all. It's the sacrifice. Exactly. It's 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 each. He knows the young man's kiss to his wife is going to lead somewhere else. He knows that elderly guys kiss is not going to. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. So he diagnoses each in, each individual. And the same happened with one of the companions. I think it was Abdullah Abbas or Abdullah Masood. Somebody came to him and said, "Listen, would I be forgiven if I commit uh, if I commit murder, kill somebody?" He said, "You know, you won't be forgiven." Yeah. Um, even though you would be, but he said that to him. Then another man came. Same question. He said, if I come in murder, I'll forgive him. He goes, yeah, you would be. So they said, well, how are you giving? He said, one, to an, one, he said, you won't. The other one said, he said, the first one that came to me, he was about to go kill someone. So I said to him, you won't forgive him. To put him off. And the second one had committed a murder. So I said to him, you would. So he, can, he doesn't lose the hope in Allah's mercy. So it's diagnosing each individual, each case. You can't just be like, yeah, one shoe fits all. We don't do that. That's why when it comes to the marriage in Islam, uh, we don't have like a set age. Mm -hmm. You get it? It's not like, oh, it's 16 or it's 14 or it's 15 or it's 8 or it's this. No, it's each individual depends of they know themselves better. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because you have in, 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 in the States, for example, certain places it's like 14 years old. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, sister, you can do it. You can take this if you want. Do you want this? Uh, Actually, no, we'll keep that. We'll keep it. Yeah, keep it. You want to keep it there or here? Or should I put... Keep it there because you have money. Yeah. Wait, so so murder can and can be forgiven? No, murder can be forgiven. Can it's, it can okay. always be the only thing but, but that the scholar happen. gave him an answer based off based of his, because, his because past. He was about to commit murder. So he was about to go and is this like a shared thing or individual? Individual. Yeah, individual. Yeah, so so no, the, the only thing that is not forgiven in Islam is shirk. Yeah, and that is if you die upon it. So, so what is it? Shirk is if you're a polytheist, is if you worship idols that are not yeah, Allah. That's partners. like the biggest sin? Yeah. Yes, associate partners to God. Which is like what? Like having paintings in your house and all that? No, no, no. no for, example, example, for, example, for, example, to say, for example, to say that Jesus is God. Jesus is the son of God. Major sin, yeah. Um, or for example, I worship this idol. Yeah? Or, or you you just worship money to such a level that it is like your God. Like Allah says in the Quran, have you seen the one who takes his desire as its own God? Because to you, mm -hmm. it's what your pleasures are your deity. Mm -hmm. What I want, when I, that's... That's what I care about. I don't live by. Do you get it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, these things. So, shit. Uh, so everything sub stems from la ilaha illallah. Just yeah, worship exactly. the one. one worship the one. Worshiping, worshiping one God. That's what it is. And and if you look at our problems in the in, in on on Earth, everything connects back to that. Yeah. Mention whatever you want to me. I'll connect it straight back to that. I I got to bring up something that I heard when you you were describing uh, Serbian Orthodox, and I have to admit, like, this is part of the reason why I resonated with Islam, and I think why why Malcolm X did. Because it, it gets rid of any nationalist aspect. It gets rid of any racial aspect of faith. When I ask a lot of Christians, um, what are you? The, like you, you will be like, I'm Serbian Orthodox. Well, that's just because I'm specifically from there, you know. But, but he doesn't say I'm a Pakistani Muslim. He just I'm Muslim. And when I hear like the Irish guys I had a trainer, it's like, oh, I'm Irish Catholic. What does that mean? Or you see like black guys from the South, like I'm a Baptist, like hallelujah. Thing. Like they, they attribute race and geography on, on their faith. And you don't you don't hear the same thing with Islam ever. It's what well, what language is the Quran written in? Arabic. Okay, well then, yeah. So there's different, you know, in Eastern Europe, there's Polish, there's Romanian, there's Serbian, there's a ton of different languages. You know, a Romanian Orthodox and a Serbian Orthodox, we could believe in the same thing. My my point is, you hear the. Um, the cultural aspect of Christianity, like so, you don't like it being like labeled as well, a, like why? Like, if you ask anyone from Boston, we're we're an Irish Catholic family. What does that mean? Jesus wasn't Irish. He wasn't an Irish guy in a bar getting in a fight with Conor McGregor. But they they will they will change the religion and the faith based off off their upbringing, their culture, and that's the the quickest way to to manipulate religion. You don't you don't see that with Islam. Isn't there like different types of Islamic beliefs? There are, there are sects. Like just just to the Christians, the, the, the difference between our sects that we have, and you can explain, Aki, okay, what's the difference between the sects that we have uh, compared to the ones of the Christians and the Jews? Well, I mean, what the fundamentals? We all believe in the same fundamentals. We That's believe in one God. That's the key. We believe that we believe in the same Quran. Yeah. We believe in you know we believe in all, all the core tendencies are typically all the same. Then the, then there's other stuff that comes afterwards. But when it comes to Christians, the core tendency is not the same, especially. Who is God? You know, there's Christians that say Jesus is God. 
then, well, yeah, but to his to, to what he said in Eastern Europe, I can tell you we all believe in the same thing, which is what I was mentioning. Like you just said, how you all how you all guys uh, believe in the same core values, such as one God and all that. We also all believe in the same thing, which is because it's. I know, but that's not uniform within Christianity. Maybe through Serbian Christianity, Serbians are a very minority compared to the rest of the world. So I'm saying throughout all yeah. the Muslims, we all agree on who God is. But yeah. not, throughout all the Christians, not all the Christians agree who God is. I, I know. That's what I'm saying. I can't, like, I don't, I can't speak for the Christians that believe it's right for the gay flags to be hung up, you know? But it's not about the gay flags. I'm saying on who God is. That's a big thing, bro. Who no, is but, God? Yeah, but my point is, is, it's obviously not all the same. It's a big world, you know? If on one side of the world... But, but why are all the Muslims all united on knowing this? Thing? There's definitely a lot more to that. It's, you know, it's... And it's the same thing. It's a big world. We live in the same world. Like yeah, but where where's Islam like? Where, where in the world would you say is like Islam central? Um, I think it's, it's in. The, I think Indonesia. Right but, uh, are you talking? No, are you talking about like, like a, a majority of majority, Muslims? Where yeah, are they from? Yeah. They're Asians. Asians. Okay, so what about Christianity? I don't know. You would have to answer from your side. Yeah, but it, like you don't even know all over the world, right? There's, there could be some in Russia. There could be some in Japan. There could be yeah, I know. But same with Muslims. Same with Muslims. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that you could pinpoint for Islam. Where it is in the world, but if I asked you to guess, to pinpoint, you would say I the mean, Arab I'm world. Serbian, you know, it's, I know, but you would, you would you would you would assume that it would be the Arabs, right? That's where the majority of the Muslims would be Arab. Well, that's right? the world, Middle East, Asia. But guess that's not true. Only twenty percent of Muslims are from the Arab nations. Yeah, Arab, Arabs are like what ten fifteen percent of the of the Muslims. So the thing is, that what we're saying is that when it comes to our core beliefs, all the sects that we have, they all believe one. Uh, they believe the Quran is preserved it's from God. They believe the Quran is a kind of messenger. Uh, when you go into Christianity, it's the difference of is Jesus the Son of God? Is he just a prophet? Is he God? Is he the triune God? And then there's the issue of the Bible. Uh, the Greek Orthodox version of the Bible, how many books they have, is not the same as the Protestants or the Catholics. I saw so a disagreement at Speaker's Corner yeah. between like two Christians who were trying to like uh, yeah. corner me. And then while they were explaining, I asked them a question like, is Jesus the Son of God? One said yes. And then yeah. they were explaining it, and like there was a little bit of confusion yeah. because they wanted to win. He's the like, debate. no, no, no. And the it's other Christian is like, no, 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 no. They started correcting each other in the middle <laughs> yeah, of the debate yeah. about something so simple. Yeah, like, yeah. is Jesus the Son of God or is he God? Is he yeah. part of the Trinity? Or... Exactly. So what we say is that it is impossible for something that's so, it should have been clear. Like we say in the Bible, if Jesus is God, it should have been very clear. Because Jesus would come and say, look, I am God, worship me. Sir. Because in Islam, we say God is one. And if you read the Quran everywhere and everywhere, anywhere, it says Allah is one. There is nothing like him. Worship him alone. Worship. It's just so clear the message. Like even Will Smith, uh, his reaction video I was supposed to do yesterday. Will Smith is like, you know, the message is very clear. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, God is one. There's nothing like him. Worship him alone. It's just simple. So we say that for our Christian, that's why we we deem you guys to be close to us. We can marry from you. We can eat your food. And even you pay the jizya and live under us, and we protect you. The jizya is what? It's a protection tax that says that only the fighting men pay for it, and you are under our protection. If anybody tries to fight you. The Muslims will come to defend you because oh, yeah. you're living under us. Okay. And that's why if you look at the Prophet, peace be upon him, even Omar al Khattab, when he took over Jerusalem, the Christians hated mm -hmm. the Jews and they kicked them okay. and they kicked them out. Do you know who brought the Jews, Jewish families back in? Omar al Khattab, even Saladin al Ayyubi. You know why? Because the Christians hated the Jews because they believed the Jews killed their God, which was Jesus. But the Muslims were like, no, because one of the Prophet's wives is Jewish, Jewish ethnicity. Yeah? So that's the reason why the Crusaders, for example, they had this, you know, this anti Semitism. And this whole thing of you know um, killing Jews. This is this comes from Christianity, not from Islam. We don't have this thing of hatred towards the, the Jews. They can live amongst us. They pay uh, they pay the jizya, yeah, like the Christians and the Jews. They pay the jizya and they are protected. Their churches, by the way, the churches, their property, their livelihood. If a Muslim goes to a Christian area and tips over an alcohol, he ha he has to pay for that mm -hmm. because that's his right. Yeah, you didn't have to go and do that. It's haram. Well, it's alcohol, but that's his right. Do you get it? So, and even the Prophet peace be upon him said, a dhimmi, a dhimmi is somebody who pays the jizya and lives under Islam. Anybody that harms a dhimmi, kills a dhimmi, will not smell the fragrance of paradise. Because to us, our word is key. So much so, some of the companions, for example, they were going to war and they lost the battle. That means they came to the Christians and you know what they said? They said, you know this jizya you're paying us? Take it back because you only pay this for us to protect you, but we haven't fulfilled that. They gave, they returned the jizya back to them. And you know what they said? They said, they said, may God allow you to rule over us again because of your honesty. Do you get it? But when in certain 
times when certain individuals, the Roman Empire, whatever, when they were a little village, rape, pillage, kill, massacre, men, women, children. What's, what's happening in Israel is they, 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 they're taken from their Bible. That's what they call uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm. May Allah destroy him into pieces, inshallah. I mean, inshallah. He, he, he quotes Amalekites. He, and who's Amalekites? These are people that was ordered by the Old Testament to go kill men, women, children, and babies. We don't have this concept in Islam. To go and harm innocent. It's fighting men. Not to fight many fight fighting men. But yeah, that's what makes it different. This doctrine, doctrinal issue with Islam, Allah is one, the Quran is fine messenger. Thank you. The Prophet peace be upon him is a final messenger. I remember, there right. was one moment in Speaker's Corner. Um, yeah. We went there and the Christians, they, they took it and they, they tried to spin it like, um, oh, they, 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 um, there was one moment where, and I, I haven't seen the video of it, and we're saying that Jesus and God are, are equivalent. The, the, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit are, are equivalent. They're all the same. Yeah. I'm not sure what you believe in, but they said like they're, they're all equal. They're equivalent. Before you go on, can I ask you a question just about your personal beliefs on that? Do you, you think, do you think that God is simple? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Well, no, it's, we can't understand. We can't comprehend god completely we're never going to fully you, we're never going to god is for all people for smart people and for dumb people for simple but people he, he himself in his essence like can we say i know who god is exactly no i know some simple stuff i know he's one i know he can he's not uh, he does not have a beginning he doesn't have an end he's the all know he's all part this simple things that i know about but to know how he i don't know like some people and say, it, it's not for us to fully for us. yeah but, like, i don't know for me i i realize like in order for you to be understand christianity fully you have to do like an intense amount of reading. you can't just be like do you remember that moment from the um, from Sugar's corner so they were saying that it's all equivalent jesus god the holy spirit is equivalent um and they they can exist without each other then they said god is a father jesus is the son if they're equivalent the father must exist before the son the, the father has to make the son which means that one existed for if they're all ex exist yeah. If they all existed forever, yeah. how could it be the father? Okay, so you're saying like the father and the son, which are human concepts, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, yeah. a dad can't be a son at the same time, correct, yeah. right? That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. But you also say we can't conceptualize God. We can't, we can't fully understand God, right? So wouldn't no, it make sense we, to not understand that? No, no, Sneeko, what? I mean, Sneeko. Uh, Sneeko. Sneeko. Well, God wouldn't. One thing we know is this, what God cannot do, cannot be. We know that he cannot begin to exist. We, he cannot be the. You get it. How so, could how could we as humans put limits on God though? You you put limits on God. You put limits on God. For example, I think God could do literally anything. Like, I mean, it already. Okay, I'm just gonna say this, and I don't want it to come across because we're gonna give him that one. I really don't like it to come across as if I'm trying to have one over you. Yeah, mm. it's just so we can understand. Yeah? I want to make that clear because I don't want it to. Because in the Tao, it's very important that when we're talking, we're talking for the sake of Allah. It's not so I look smarter than you. Oh, I just made it amazing. I know. Word. I'm just trying yeah, to yeah, yeah. I just I just want to I just want to make that clear because I really don't want it to come across like that. Would you accept the following though? Needles, yeah. Um, can God lie? I think God could do anything. Lie? Anything that could possibly exist, God could, could. do. Possibly exist. Okay. So if he lies, it goes against his nature. Because we say God is the the truth. The truth comes from God. Yeah. That, that's his, that's yeah. it. That's that's yeah. It speaks okay. the truth. Okay. So we say that he cannot lie, not because it's limiting him, but that goes against his attribute. For example, if I can I say can God make a rock so big he cannot lift? They'll be like, well, if he does, then he's not God. And if he doesn't, he's not God. Because if he cannot lift the rock, then that doesn't make him God. Then if he makes a rock he cannot lift, then he's also not God. So these are just con this is concepts that doesn't really exist. That's a human concept. Good. That I don't think we should and could even apply to Good. something above us like God. For example, can God die? Or like cease to exist? I can't answer that. Okay, good. What we say is this. We say God cannot cease to exist. God cannot lie. This doesn't mean I'm limiting God. It means that I'm glorifying him by saying, for him to lie, it goes against his essence. Mm -hmm. Because if he's if he lied, when he sent the Bible, the Quran, then was that a lie? If we say he can die, that goes against his nature. Because if God dies, then who, what does the earth and everything rely on? He's the source of everything. He's a necessary being. So that's the reason why when I speak to Christians, they will say to me, no, God cannot lie. God cannot cease to exist. And I'm like, well, okay, are you, are you limiting God now? No, you're glorifying him by saying he cannot lie. He cannot cease to exist. But then I'm like, why do you say he can be a man? Why does it stop us? No, he cannot lie. He cannot cease to exist, but he can be a man. But we are saying we're being consistent. God cannot cease to exist. God cannot lie. Neither can God be a man. But how, how can a man 
tell God what he can and can't do. Not, not, we're not telling what he can do or not. You're saying he can't do this. No, no, no. God cannot. Thing, it does not befit his majesty in the sense where he would not do it. Not he can, it goes against his nature. Like, for example, can you have a, um, an intelligent, ignorant person or a, a, a married bachelor? It's, it, it's just opposite. You get it? Like a, a being that has no beginning or end, but also began to exist. What do you mean? It, well, it, it contradicts. For a human concept, think of it as nature. Like nature is, is to grow. Nature is life. Trees grow, grass grows. Yeah. But what about a tsunami? A tsunami destroys all of that. But a tsunami is nature as well. Yeah. So doesn't that go against? You know, that's ruled by God. But that, that's, I'm just saying, in a concept that it could do anything. It could even go against what you would think. No, 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 no. Because we say he's also the most wise. When he does something, you are not understanding what he's doing. So you're questioning his so, wisdom. With it's, that, like, it's like a, my child running into the fire. And I have a split second and I kick him. Because I'm like, I don't want him to burn. And he looks and says, that is evil. That just saved your life. With that logic, though, <laughs> wouldn't you say that God can lie to you to benefit yourself? Does, does, I was no. going to ask you, does, does Islam say anything about like white lies? Islam, in Islam, we believe in white lies. But what, for example, the Prophet told us in situations of marriage, in birth, and in war. For example, white lies, what does that mean? Let's say Sneeko and Abdul Wahab fell out. May Allah avoid that and make them always stronger. I would come to Abdul Wahab and go, you know what, bro? No, last time I was speaking to Sneeko, and this is an absolute white lie. Sneeko was saying, No, how much you miss man. He was like, Bro, man, you know that guy, man. I wish we had fell out. And then I go to Sneeko and go, Bro, you know what I have? But this guy was talking about it all day, but he's so hurt that you guys are not talking. It's an absolute lie, but it's to make their friendship come again. Yeah? Now, when it comes to marriage, same thing. You lie, you, you eat your wife's food. It's a dead thing, Janazah thing. You get me? It's a funeral thing. Okay? There's no taste, there's no, nothing. And you taste it, and you're like, this is the most amazing food I had in my life. Why? It makes it happy. And then, when it comes to in tactics of war, this in war. Other than that, we do not say God can lie, because it goes against his nature. He cannot, he cannot cease to exist. That's, this is the thing that we accept. Even if he's with an atheist, he'll say, if I'm going to believe in a God, I'll have to believe that he's eternal. I'm not going to believe that he can die. If I'm going to believe in a God, he has to be truthful. These are the basic necessities that God in his attribute require. Otherwise, then if God can lie, and he can cease to exist. What kind of a God is this? And I give the example. Maybe it's not good. But imagine me going to Mike Tyson. And I go, Mike Tyson, if you are really as strong as people say you are, I'm going to punch you in the face. And I don't want you to hit me back. Show me how strong you are. Is that humiliation? Or is he going to show me strength? If he allows me to do that, he's going to show me he's a weak person. I'm going to punch you in the face. And I'm going to say, it's, it's, do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm going to punch you. Don't hit me back. Let me see how strong you are. No. Just because we um, say that there's certain things God doesn't do in his attribute, this is where we disagree. Because there's things that you would have to agree. If God dies, the whole world will come to an end. If God lies, it goes against the attribute. How is he going to be God? So it's not that God can't lie, but it's God wouldn't lie. Not lie. It doesn't befit his majesty. He wouldn't. It doesn't befit his majesty. And when it comes to his death, it's not something he but, cannot do. It would, it's not a thing. It's not, you know when we talk about certain things? It's just we're uttering words. It doesn't exist. For God to not exist is an impossibility. It goes against his attribute. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's, it's like saying there's a human being without a heart. The heart is what makes him live. Do you get what I'm trying to say? His consciousness. That is what makes a human being. Without that, that is not a human being. That's a robot. So his essence is that. That's that's where um, we say God, when we say God can do whatever he likes. Of course. And Allah says in the Quran, for him all things are possible. But things. What things? You get it? What do you mean by a thing? Mm -hmm. Lying. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But you said earlier that God can't lie, God can't cease to exist, right? Yeah. But now he's saying that it's not that he can't, but he wouldn't. I believe that he wouldn't too. Yeah. But for example, if it's, if it's, you know, God forbid, if I, if I was in a life threatening situ situation or I was about to get in one, and then yeah. I don't know, let's just say that uh, I'm deceived in some way that I, I thought I forgot my phone at home. So I run back home instead of going to where I could have almost died, say in a you know, car crash or something. Yeah. Um, Whole time charger was in my car. Okay. So I was, you know, deceived in a way to save my life. Or the, it could be even a better example of somebody else lying you, you to me. You had an assumption. Was it? You had an assumption and you acted upon the assumption that saved your life. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come. Sorry, sorry, come. Come, bro. No, come on. Oh, that's your favorite. That's for you. It's not much. You, you might be not coming. No, I didn't know this was going on. Come, come on, bro. Okay. Okay. The undefeated heavyweight. <laughs> this is this is our brother. May Allah bless him, inshallah, who trains us.
teaches me to get that, you know, uh, left, right hook. So, anyone wants to spar me, but please uh, contact. <laughs> Yeah. These brothers, let me tell you something, yeah. I want to tell I want to tell you guys something about these brothers, okay? And and I'm not saying it because they're here and I'm just being genuine, okay? These brothers are family friends, yeah. But let me tell you something, yeah. I have never seen you know when you talk about uh, brotherhood in Islam. I have never seen more of a brotherhood bond than these brothers. I've been into their gatherings, the gatherings, the love they show each other, yeah? Because we have a lot of Muslims who are hostile towards each other. You know, we've talked about certain Muslims who are hostile. All they see is the fault in you, you know. The Haram police. Yes, these brothers, well, like, let me tell you something. I've never seen, I've never seen true brotherhood. Oh, David, can you come join us, please? I can come, please. Yeah. I was just going to say one, one, one trait that I remember, like, about you guys, you, Janae, the brothers, yeah, is that... The love that they have to one another, because we in the public sphere, we get a lot of heat from the super Salafis and this guy and that guy. And sometimes it puts you off. Yeah, you think to yourself, because Allah says in the Quran, the believers are soft towards one another and harsh towards the enemies of Islam. So sadly, with some of the brothers, we see the opposite. They are soft towards the disbelievers and harsh towards the believers. Yeah. With you guys, when I would come to your circles, when I come to your house, when it comes to boxing, the love that I see, not only towards myself, but I would just observe you guys with each other. Like, even like, for example, like, like, Kissing each other on the head or whatever. Well, I, it, it, I'll be honest with you. There was a point where I was dealing with the super Salafis, yeah. Okay, and and I'll be honest with you. It was kind of affecting my iman a bit. Like I was like, like, what's wrong with these people? Why are they so hostile towards another Muslim? When I came, well, it's as if Allah brought me to you guys just to get rid of that shubhat. Like when I met you guys, actually, the, the brotherhood you showed, the love, the genuine love. It wasn't fake. It was genuine care, genuine love. Yeah, this brother, like you knew about him, etc. So to me, I just want to say. It's Ramadan, wallahi, you reignited that brotherly love in me when I was at that stage in my life. And may Allah preserve you guys. They do a lot of like boxing, fitness, alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm going to try to come. It's an hour and a half journey away. <laughs> but he's, he's perfected my jab and my uh, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, yes. <laughs> but yeah, may Allah bless and preserve them, inshallah. The brothers, Hudayfa, Junaid, Zen Lounge. Uh, yes. And yeah, if there's anything you want to add, Akim. No, mate, Allah bless you. I need to uh, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank my parents, man, because ultimately. Uh, we have beautiful, beautiful parents, and by the grace of Allah, well, as you grow up, you can see that we were we've come from a household where we wasn't really um, brought up in accordance to people's race. It wasn't a racist household. We didn't understand the politics of yeah. races and all the rest of that stuff. Alhamdulillah, even like uh, many of our family members who who, who are married, we've married into different different cultures and different you know what I mean nations and stuff. But so that's a massive shout out to our parents, man, because Alhamdulillah they raised us in a good manner, yeah. and. Um, I always believe, right, that obviously Allah SWT says in the Quran that you only meet people who Allah has written for you to meet. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Nothing, even this, even what you're eating, everything, nothing would happen without the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And um, relating it to fitness, I'll say that you know one one of the biggest things, right, that I see athletes by the grace of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala have had the ability of being at this game at like seeing it at world level. And you'll see, like, most coaches, let alone fighters, will never ever see world level mm. in this sport, right? And alhamdulillah, I, I've learned from some of the best, best people. Are you with me? Um, and an identity crisis is one of the biggest things, right, athletes suffer from. It's not, it's not so much as they can have all the skill and the talent in the world. If their identity isn't correct, right, and they, have a, they suffer identity crisis, believe it or not, right, it comes out come fight night in the ring. Wow. A lot of that stuff shows in the ring come fight night is when they're suffering with their identity, mm -hmm. right? And um, I've seen that a lot. I've seen that a lot. And this is why then you get like sports psych psychologists on board and all these different psychologists on board, right? And Dean is identity. Dean, right? And what you guys do and Allah Mubarak, what you have been doing, right, is is bigger than what you guys I'm saying saying, trust me, like like realize because I, I don't I don't follow a lot of I don't have a lot of time for social media mm -hmm. because you've seen me in the gym it's like 110 miles an hour it's it's non-stop 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 and it's like you gotta go home with your work you gotta give time to family and then it's like you're doing everyone's training program right everyone's training program and sorting out sparring on, on route here now sorting out sparring and all the rest of that stuff so it's like you don't get time to kind of keep up with what's happening outside mm -hmm. but this is one of the biggest things alhamdulillah is that is that a lot of people out there they're suffering from identity crisis so then what they do is they tend to like make up their own identity um that's really not an identity and then you've got these guys who are giving you like 
a hundred and thousand uh, different genders to say that well maybe you fit in one of those brackets mm. are you with me <laughs> so it's like um dean right and and belief in in god uh one true God and, and having that belief and that foundation, right? I believe Wallahi, well, when you have that with you, yeah, it's an unstoppable feeling. Mm -hmm. I just understand, right, that that well, Alhamdulillah, next week, right, we're we're in uh, a big fight next fight next Saturday. We'll, we'll, we'll be live on the zone. One of the guys that I train he's he's an Irish fighter, Kurt Walker, right? And um, we we've done everything, Alhamdulillah, to prepare. Yeah, we've done everything. There's not one thing that I would change in the last six to eight weeks that we've had of training camp. There's not one thing I would change, mm. Alhamdulillah. As far as I'm concerned, as far as the, the maths are concerned, everything is perfect. The rest is up to Allah. Yeah. And 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 that's and I feel knowing knowing right is knowing that knowing that uh we've done everything and the rest is in the hands of Allah and what's written, mm. that's the cherry on top to be like, you know yeah. what, yeah. You've now what's, to, yeah, we've done we've done everything. What's what what's gonna be is gonna be. So it's like that's that. So I think I think when I hear these things, I understand how, the importance of them because, like I said, a lot of athletes, set on fighters and stuff, they do suffer from an identity crisis. And Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, to those and uh, to who He's allowed those people who have found their identity. Mm. Um, Hamza Shiraz, a beautiful brother, right? Mm. Beautiful, beautiful brother. The way he spoke about these guys and and just seeing these guys, I've never ever met the brothers before in my life, right? But just seeing them and knowing that Alhamdulillah. What he's become, inshallah, you will see him. You'll become unstoppable. Inshallah, inshallah. with with the fruits you have given him now, inshallah, he's gone. Inshallah, he's gone all the way to the top. Do you know what I mean? Inshallah. But um, it was an honor meeting you lot, man. And uh, you never know when's the first or the last time you're gonna meet someone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And Allah forbid, like the next time we meet each other, it could be someone's burial. Do you know what I mean? It could be yeah. someone's janazah. You never know, innit? Um, be it you guys are coming back down here to 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 attend my funeral or if I'm making a trip, you know what I mean? You never yeah. know. Uh, we never know when death is written for us. So I thought I just wanted to make the effort to come down. See, look, these are these are some of the best gloves like in the gloves. business, yeah. and I wasn't paid to say that, by the way. Come on, yeah, you know what I mean. But um, these are some of the best gloves in the business, man. Oh, Sneakers uh, gonna give dawah with those gloves yeah, to his yeah. opponents. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna take the shahada, yeah. and we might go to their burial. <laughs> you know what, right? We've done we've done a little training session today, um, within the time that we had during fasting, which during I thought was impossible. Yeah. I, I really and, didn't think I was capable of doing that. And and I believe that you see you see a lot of people's qualities come out right when you put them underneath training. When 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 you when in, you put them in the steam room, when you put them in a sauna, <laughs> yeah, when you put them in the sauna. And what I'm saying is you're gonna see people's true colors come out, right? Um, and you'll see if people are gonna quit, they're gonna tap out, they're gonna this and the You guys got such beautiful qualities, man. There's Listen, I was ready for two more rounds. You wasn't. Adding. Nah, you're not ready for me. We <laughs> <laughs> were in the sauna. You kept on talking. I'm yeah, like, I, I, was, right I was ready. They bro. started half an hour before. Nah, everyone. you know what I was doing? I was doing that thing last round. Yeah, 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 Man, I don't bad. try it. Don't try it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You know why I'm trying to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie. That was a shock to the system. You know when like training and I go into. The, I've never ever done that in my life. Do you get it? Like train and I go to the steam. For me, like when I was fighting, right. It's the closest thing that I remember to a professional fight. The closest thing to a fight, and I'm talking about a gritty, gritty fight, right? Yeah. I remember one of my fights uh, I had uh, back in Maidstone. This is years back, yeah? And they just heard my name, right? And they booed me all the way to the ring. No way. <laughs> yeah, bro. It was, it was some racist area, right? Oh, my God. Um, where, where was it? And like it's, it's about an hour and a half from here, right? Um, two hours away from here, I think. And it's like, they just heard my name. And all I heard, right, was this, like, voice say, what kind of they put me all the way to the ring, right? And I can believe say, Jeff. I can believe Jeff. I can do. I can do. I was saying to one of one of my coaches, right? I had Wayne Alexander there, Charlie B, and I'm saying to them, "Why they bring me?" And he's like, "Oh no, no, don't worry about it, man. You just do your job." <laughs> Wallahi, I knocked this guy out in nine seconds. Wow. Yeah, I knocked this guy out nine in nine seconds. seconds. I swear, Wallahi, yeah, in nine punch. seconds, it was an overhand right. It was my favorite shot, right? Yeah. yeah. I just walked right in front of him. I thought, you know what? That's an ultimate violation, man. They just booed me all the way out. Yeah. And um now they know your name. Now they know my name. But there's been other fights where I was in a lot, a lot, a lot of grit, right? And the rounds went on. And the only thing that I remember it feeling like yeah, is is that boxing in like doing shadow boxing in a sauna, right? Yeah. And I thought, you know what? When any fighters that I put put through that whole thing, right? Especially when they're doing like semi-pro fights, fights, um, they're like that. It reminded us of that feeling. 
right, of, wow. of, of being in a sauna, coming out immediately, mm -hmm. and then having to hit the pads or do some sparring mm -hmm. straight away, right? It's so, alhamdulillah, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big uh, game changer. Do you know what I mean? No, it was. When I came in, because usually I, I didn't... What you have done is going to give them my tactics. Like, nah, like, nah. Don't forget the royalties to you. I've never seen trainers put someone through that. So oh, I know. Know. No, you. I never know. I came into this tr training, and I'm like, it's hot in here, bro, because I've never I trained different places. I'm like, why is it hot in here? I'm thinking it's, it's cold outside. I'm like, why is it hot? He goes, yeah, you wanted it hard, didn't you? He, he I was like, yeah. Me up, giving me some lip. He goes, listen, your job said they want easy. I don't want no easy work. Yeah, give me some hard work. I said, no problem. Be careful. Be careful. Nah, be careful. I, 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 I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. He stepped, he stepped up. I shot. enjoyed it. Much but he was on a two-minute time. The next time, yeah, yeah. there's at least 12 rounds in a three-minute time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inshallah, I'll do it because I'm trying to cut. I'm trying to cut. So make me suffer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was when he first started boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was there, man. It was this. They turned into a. I do on and off. I do it for fitness. I'll be honest with you. Like uh, since I was like 16, 17, I do bodybuilding, and I didn't want to be like bulky and slow. It's just it's fitness. I don't do it for like any. Everyone professional. should get out for a fight. In my opinion. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. single person should get out for a fight. It's yeah. it's uh, <laughs> the qualities that you will get right yeah. from that and how it will mold you as a person. Right, 100%. is is unbelievable. The, 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 the mental, anything else? No, no. The, the psychological strength it gives me. It's, it's people can physical. It's mental. The confidence it gives what you. Why do that? Yeah, unbelievable, man. Push it to your limits, bro. It helps me up here. I'm also, you. it lets you know if you have that. That, in you or not you have that dog yeah, in yeah, you yeah, yeah. You know? and not, yeah, only, not yeah. only that like i know many people who are going for depression you know why they don't do nothing they sat at home they were shaitan what's 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 up whisper yeah, did you get it yeah. yeah you're like this look at you you're bro i haven't got time for that i don't want to have time for shaitan brother i'm going doing this ice bath here that i don't have time do you get it that's why if you look at the sahaba the sahaba didn't go through what we go through depression this that because we're too busy but everything's easy sit at home eat doritos they're lazy you don't do nothing fitness bro like i'm being honest with you I don't even like him. Last time I don't remember when the shaitan come to me like what's what's up? You yes. hear me? <laughs> I'm too busy. Yeah. I haven't got time, man. I got this, I got that. You know, but no, don't forget no you need to you need to sleep. I haven't got time to be depressed, brother. You, you I ain't know, got there's, time. There's, there's this one story, right? That I was <laughs> listening to. I think it's the Battle of Uhud, right? Yeah. When um just before you yeah. start with the Battle of Uhud, brothers and sisters, we're just fundraising as well. We've got Brother Hodefa giving a beautiful reminder. Uh, we are fundraising. And by the way, Brother Hodefa, one thing you notice, there's so many reverts around him, yeah. His family and him, there's so many people have come to Islam. With the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the work that they've been doing, wallahi, you see it, the root, grassroots work they're doing. And we have a Salah Plus project we're fundraising for now, yeah? It's we teach new, born Muslim and new, new Muslims how to pray Salah. We have a guided prayer mat, which they put in front of them. He has a transliteration, everything they need to learn. And we have Salah instructors. So we're fundraising, brothers and sisters, for that. So £100 can teach 10 to 30 people can I, can I how, to, we'll do, how to pray Salah, inshallah. Yeah. The link is there. Can I say something on that note, yeah? I've got one brother recently, right? Yeah. Um, you might not, you might not, no, no, on the, on the, on the subject of the salam act, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, yeah. you might not want me to mention his name, yeah, um, but there's this one brother that I coach, right, when he came into the gym, he was very, very, very depressed, their father, who they were very, very, very close to, right, yeah. passed away about two years ago, I met Allah Gwan in Jannah, yeah, and he comes from a Turkish Cypriot family, right, and, um, they're not, <clears throat> that you explained to me, they're not from, like, the most practicing family, yeah. anyway, in and around the gym, he started coming to the gym, alhamdulillah, he came to the deen, right? And um, by the grace of Allah, he's been training, he's been doing his salah and all those things. He didn't know how to pray salah, he never knew how to pray salah, right? And um, he started naturally, organically praying salah. So he'll come to the circles, we'll talk about the importance of salah. So one, one, one week, I'm coming into the office, right? And I could hear some, uh, like, takbirs and salah playing in the background. So I yeah. saw that he's doing it off YouTube, Yeah, it's fine. right? That's and so he had, he, had, he had it on YouTube, right? So he was playing Salah next to the YouTube uh, phone. Right? As well. yeah. yeah. And then it's like, Alhamdulillah, a week later, I'm hearing it, but it's like a different voice. I've gone in there and he's like upgraded to a Salah mat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's an electronic So one. Yeah, yeah. So he's upgraded to a Salah mat. And he was like, this is one of Ali's Salahs. I said, bro, you upgraded from your phone to like a Salah mat. Yeah, the one like... that's electronic that talks to you. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, 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 that's No, no, no. That's not ours. That's another brother. He sells it. Our ones are very simple. Thin mat, yeah. The one that you're talking about, some brothers who said it, they're electronic. Well, probably you need to upgrade them. Nah, because no, I don't we know we we <laughs> nah, we're, we're, we're a charity, Spanola, yeah. I'm, I'm, we're a charity, and our one's so simple. And that one I recommend as well. If anyone can afford it, go and get it. I, I don't know the brother personally, but yes, it's the electronic one that talks to you. Mm. Our one's a thin mat that's got transliteration on it. It's just you can fold it if you want to learn how to play salah immediately. You can read off it's got transliteration, it teaches you how to play salah. But the one you're talking about is really, really good as well. It talks yeah. back to you, alhamdulillah. Sorry, man. Well, I, mashed it, I mashed it up in no, it. No, I mashed no. it up, bro. No, no, because you know why? No, 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 no. <laughs> he asked to get mashed up, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. In and out yeah. the ring, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It shows you, even he does that. And that's what we want to do. We also have Salah instructors. 
So yeah, that's what it is, bro. What's he going to say about Battle Uhud? You didn't bring no mats? It's in the car. It's in the car. It's in the car. It's in the booth. You get it. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you. Our ones are very simple. We give it out for free. Yeah. We've got Salah instructors for free. We have Salah Hub for free. Salah it's all for free. You know why? Because you guys donate and we just teach. And me, myself, I'm a volunteer. I'm a trustee. I don't get a single penny bro. Says, Wallahi, why? I believe in this project. It's a, and I know how it was for me 11 years ago when I came to Islam. How hard it was to learn Surah Fatiha. Like he's been a Muslim about a year and he's just memorized Surah Fatiha. I know how hard it is. My bag is just here. Yeah, here. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why that's what we're doing, guys, inshallah. So, if any of you guys are watching, the donation link is there. You can give whatever you want, inshallah, brothers and sisters. We are on our way to 35,000 pounds. We're just 794 pounds away. You hit the, the metric yesterday, right? Huh? You hit the goal yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yesterday we raised uh, 7,200 pounds. Yeah, it was good. It's a South Nigeria project. You know, imagine teaching someone about here how to do wudu. And all of their life, the Prophet Peace be upon him said that if you call anyone to good, you get the same reward without nothing being taken away from them. We believe the person that taught you how to pray, how to do wudu, taught you Surah Fatiha, as long as you're reciting that and doing praying, bro, he's just, he's just, he's, 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 <laughs> 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 channel is this live on? So people can know if they want to donate. It's on my channel, yeah. Ali Dawa's channel, it's on SC Dawa. I mean, if you say Ali Dawa, because that's the main channel, others are like, sub thing, yeah. It's on my channel, inshallah. Guys, if you're there, we are just 794 pounds away from the 35,000 pounds mark, uh, inshallah, yeah. Yes, that's what we're talking about. What was the reminder going to be about Basra Uhud? So there's, there's, there's the <clears throat> Battle of Uhud, right? And um, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they're, they're in a tough, 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 tough battle. Yeah. So the first part fit is they're in a proper gritty, gritty, gritty battle. Yeah. And um, when the battle had like a calm to it, yeah. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that he was so exhausted, he was so finished, like there was nothing, nothing left in them at all. There's nothing left in them. Yeah. And... Um, he says, I'm sitting there with all my all my armor on sat there when Jibreel comes down. And just as the Prophet is about to take off his armor, right? Yeah. Jibreel alayhi salam comes down and Jibreel says to him that why have your men put down their arms? Allah is commanding that you have to go again, right? And that they they the the Quraysh, they, they're Which about to mean? make they're about to make a second attack on you. Wow. So you need to get up and advance. The Prophet says that we were so finished. And I was scared to even tell the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that let's go round two, right? Let's go for, for a second round. That I was so scared that some of them would become murtad, some of them would leave, leave the deen. That it was, it was that intense. And when I was listening to that talk, right, all I could think about, right, was that circuit. And like when there's 12, when there's 12 rounds of that circuit, yeah, yeah. after right, round six and seven, everyone's asking each other, like, how many rounds are left? How many rounds yeah, are left? Yeah. Uh, nobody wants to ask, like, how many rounds <laughs> are left? Right? And, then, and then there's that feeling of when someone turns around and says to you, no, we're only halfway, we've got another six left. Yeah. There you'll see the guys, right, at yeah. that point, is who are like, well, like, I ain't doing that. Like, I'm, I'm doing this <laughs> and then there's other guys who are like, yo, they're encouraging each other, giving every, each other a big uplift to be like, let's go, do you know what I mean? Let's go, let's, let's go for round two. And, um, and honestly, yeah, I, I judge a lot of people by that. Yeah. I judge a lot of people by that. So even for me, when people are like, uh, I've come across a lot of YouTubers, I've come across a lot of, um, I never wanted to entertain it. My brother Junaid, right, was the first person to tell me, entertain it with the whole Nickel Man thing with, with Brother Bouncer, a normal body, beautiful brother, right? And I, I never really wanted to get involved with that stuff, right? Yeah. But I judge people by that. Even when I see you lot training today, yeah? yeah. Alhamdulillah, I could see there's something about him, like yeah. he's on it. Yeah. And then I thought, all right, he's definitely on it. He must have done a little bit. <laughs> He's gonna tap out, and I saw you know what? <laughs> He's more at it. So the only one that I found that didn't want none of it was Ali. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Ali's washable. Ali, Ali's good washable. These gloves are great. I, I need that. They're beautiful yeah, gloves, yeah. man. They're beautiful. beautiful the ten gloves. ounces for sparring. Ten ounces. Well, now we use ten ounces for for bag work and pad work, right? Yeah. Uh, for sparring, you'll always use like either fourteen or sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. Yeah. Some of the MMA guys they use like lighter. When I was sparring at MMA guys, we used to like this. But I wouldn't advise spar, but, but I'll tell you, you what, generally, pretty yeah, and you don't need brain damage before getting into a fight. But forget that, man. He, 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 he jabbed his bloody MMA gloves on, and he's hitting us on the stomach. Uh, <laughs> he's like, yeah, one, two. Yeah. Like, I was like, like, eight, like, eight, like, eight, eight ounces of sparring like, gloves. Like, gloves. But, yeah, yeah, man, bro, I was feeling my roots. I feel that, bro. My kidney. <laughs> I broke my back. I broke my back. Spinal. Praise be to Allah. But I'll show you a trick with the gloves, right? I'll show you a trick, inshallah, with the gloves. That... um. You won't oh, find a lot of people teaching that. I'm, I'm grateful that I had some 
amazing coaches and teachers that taught this, right? Guys, nice, don't um, forget to donate, please, yeah? Let me, <laughs> let me inshallah, we'll plug you up real quick, right? Inshallah, we've got, we've got some tactics. Revs, 50 pounds, may Allah bless you. I shouldn't really show people this, actually, but I'm no, hoping you got to and... Let's go. Gohar Shah, 100 pounds. Yes. These are ours. These are ours. So I'll just show you guys. This is where your donations go, guys. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> there you go. This is yours, brother. No, You're mad. Bro. Come on. You need this, uh, Nico. Guys, this is our guided prayer match. Simple. Yeah? There you go. Thank you very much. it. Salah plus. Or come back. You guys can order it for free. Ship out around the world. Big man. Thing. Well, well, <laughs> 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 you've you been cracking me up, bro. Oh my God, you've been cracking me up. It's my belt, bro. It's my belt. It's my belt. Let's go, guys. Where the donation now? Yeah. Gabby, how many people? In here? Yeah, good. All right. Ali, this is called, this year, yeah. is called skimming a glove. You've got a little bit of food on that. Right. He needs in flavor in those gloves, trust. Yeah. Can you that up there? No, no. Yeah. This is called skimming a glove, yeah. The 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 wisdom in this yeah. is is putting the closer. putting the weight all the way up towards the glove, yeah. And there's a special way that you tie the laces when you do it. Okay. Yeah. Turn over. Yeah. It's like you're making food, though. This is an art within itself, yeah, is what I'm saying. saying. This is... Look, there's some art to that. Like okay, you added some itself. salt there, some flavors, some chicken wings. No, no. <laughs> I want to train again now. Come on. <laughs> See if it's ready. <laughs> yeah, so you feel what that feels like, yeah? The average person, right, ties a glove like this, yeah? That's called skimming a glove. Yeah, that, you're going you're gonna to pack a much harder shot with it, exactly. with it uh, tied like that. Give the donations, guys. Some Donate, inshallah. When people do the average, yeah, and it, I'll, I'll still try. I turn it. Don't forget, don't forget guys. Difference. Don't forget to donate yeah. 100 pounds to the 10th Come on, see if I'm ready. Come on, come on. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, this, one. this is impregnable. This is the one that's gonna pack the <laughs> pack the punch. That's yeah. what you want. You want it to feel tight up here. What's the difference? They, you're gonna get more weight distribution packed up towards the front. Yeah, on this one, especially when you got your hand wraps in, in comparison to this one. Yeah. Now, uh, come fight night, inshallah, when you get up for a fight, you're gonna wanna you get wanna it tied up like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna come and you wanna see him fight night. Yeah. Okay. Well, is, is he getting out for a fight? No. No, inshallah, this year. Inshallah, this year. Yeah, man. Definitely. You want to get up for a fight, inshallah. Man. Let's go, guys. If you guys are watching this, inshallah, as you can see, we've got a bit of boxing, training. You know, we're talking to needles, we're talking That's to sneakers. Yeah, of course, my sneaker. Bro, I'm here for you to, like, budget, bruv. Budget. Think about space. Space. Okay, when you mean space, like, for example, we're talking about. Outside yeah. the planet. Uh, uh, so what we see is, you know, when we uh, yeah, yeah. the first yeah. Surah Fatiha, yeah. which is the, yeah. the mother of the book, yeah. but we say, Alhamdulillah, yeah. Rabbil Alameen, all praise belong to Thank God, always. the creator of all the heavens. Of course I will. Yeah. So, 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 so the Lord of all. The Lord of all the world. Yeah. Yeah. So have you seen that video that shows our planet compared to... Yeah. Don't you feel that's crazy, bro? Yeah. Have you seen the video that shows our planet Earth compared to, like, different planets? And then I saw one that holds the sun, but it wasn't the sun. It was another planet, and then there's, like... Then there's the sun, it's like to me that was like, and I was like, oh my gosh. So, you know, like, it just shows you that how great Allah is, how great he is. And that's why for us, shirk is such a big sin because what you're doing is you're you. getting the glory and the praise that belongs to Allah and you're giving it to someone that doesn't deserve it. That's why to us, shirk is such a big sin. But when it comes to space here, yeah, like, it's we just believe that there might be so much other creation that we don't know of. Mm -hmm. You get that like, some of the part of the oceans haven't been discovered. Just imagine all the species there are hundreds of thousands. So it's like open minded so that there might yeah. be other life. There might be, yeah. There might be because Allah it doesn't say that there life. is or isn't, it just says there might be. There might be. He's the Allah. We believe he's always been created. There's some things that believe that Allah has always officially been created. Different beings. We have the jinns, the humans, you know, we've got the animals, you've got like so many other species. So it's a possibility. 
Is there anything like similar to jinns that you guys believe in? Like so humans, jinns, nothing else? There's humans and jinns of that we know of. Yeah. Have you had any jinn experiences? Yeah, he's got jinn. He's got jinn. He got it. I got it. I'm going to do my funeral. not my funeral. Yeah. Yeah, what's, oh, tell us your gin story about your friends that start uh, bugging out. Oh man, I mean, yeah, it has yeah. to be, it has to be, you know, it has to be. Come, come. Okay, okay. Come, bro, we can't see you. Come, <laughs> right. you're so, you're hench. Okay, okay. Yeah, here's a gin story. So, guys, the Muslims love gins, they love black magic, and they love marriage, yeah? Okay, this one doesn't have marriage, it has black magic and gin inside it, yeah? In the meantime, before we go to that, I'm going to do a little cliffhanger in the life. Yeah, guys, you need to donate, inshallah. <laughs> if somebody donates 5,000, we'll go to the store. I'm joking. <laughs> guys, whatever you donate, inshallah, look, we're just, um, let me see what we on. Alhamdulillah, we're just 704 pounds away from our target, inshallah, guys. 100 pounds can teach 10 to 30 people how to pray salah, guys, step by step, inshallah. Uh, whatever you guys give, brothers and sisters, it's going towards the salah plus project for those who've just tuned in. Uh, we're just fundraising at the same time. We're speaking to the brothers, we're speaking to um, Needles. We're here with Brother Hudayfa, Sneeko, Abdul Wahab. We're here, and myself, guys. Uh, just to bear in mind, salahplus.com. If you're a new Muslim or a born Muslim who doesn't know how to pray salah, you can go to our website, salahplus.com. You can order a guided prayer mat and even book an instructor to teach you how to pray salah. Um, so, yes, £100 can teach 10 to 30 people how to pray salah, guys. It's a sadaqah jariyah. It is Ramadan. Uh, inshallah, make the most out of your donations. We're going to hear this jinn story, inshallah, by Brother Abdul Wahab, inshallah. You have another question? No, I was just asking about, about the jinn. Yeah, he said, he said you have yeah, a jinn story. But do you know like what we believe about jinns, though? Uh, I believe you've spoken about it before. That they can either be good or bad. <laughs> That they walk around just like humans. Yeah, and there's Muslim, Christian, and Jew jinns as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, there's yeah, there's different variety of jinns, right? There's uh, you know, there's shape shifting jinns. There's yeah, jinns. Yeah. Yeah. There's jinns that are in the ocean. There's jinns that fly in the skies. You know, so there's different variety of jinns. Then, typically, um, people who get, you know, from my understanding, is the people that who do get possessed by the jinns is sometimes the jinn will fall in love with the individual. You know, so sometimes. You know, when women are instructed to cover themselves, it's not just to protect them from the evil gaze of a human being, but also the evil gaze of a jinn as well. What's, what's evil gaze? Evil gaze, like, for instance, a man looking at a woman lustfully, right? Oh. Yeah. Right. You know, like, yeah, like, let, let's say if a man looks at a woman lustfully, or let's say he wants to prey upon her, like what they do in uh, Pajit town, you know? So... <laughs> <laughs> you know so um you, you know different instances like that so you know for us we have a complete different understanding of the spiritual world than compared to christianity but for us we have a very deep understanding of the spiritual world um and typically when you look into what we believe about the spiritual world, like do you have any questions about the jinns from are so you, far are you able to tell if you have like a jinn inside? like how do you know somebody because you said jinn can go inside of people right how can you tell somebody has like a jinn inside of them that's very interesting. Have you had any experiences with that? To be honest, it depends. Sometimes you will see, like just this, come out. the story. The story you're going to mention is like some instinct, but also they are. If you recite in the Quran, and they have, like you can see, they just like, a certain reaction. I know, I know one, by the way. Yeah, I've actually got many gin stories. But oh, come on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. Exactly. Yeah, you know, exactly. it has to be like. But a, I, know, I know one brother, right? Yeah, what he was saying is that after Maghrib, yeah. if he was rolling around the streets, right? He'd see like a, he'd see like funny faces on people, right? It'd be, he'd say like the people's faces was almost like this um, grin. Mm. He'd like go around and see like see like like as if there was like a grin on people's faces, and uh, like he was smiling? yeah, but but it's like like uh, like, the, yeah. like a clown type of grin, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, like the Joker. Yeah, yeah. and he goes that like, he, he he had that for, for some time. Um, uh, oh, so he would see that in people. He would see that, and it would make it would it would panic him. Huh? Yeah, 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 clearly. I tried, I tried. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah it, it um it would panic him a lot, and that was going on for some time till he started getting the, till he started again getting the rukia and, and, him and stuff. Yeah, but then I see that film recently. You see that film, Smile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was really that, weird. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, look at this. Where Bro, you they... smile at me yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give a little gin smile. No. But it's like, where did they get these concepts from, right? A lot of these things that you see in 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 these films and stuff, I believe that's from from the from like the dean where they get the concepts of of what jinn are and what do jinn do. There was that one film I forgot what it was called where where the jinn is in the in the pictures in the house. So all of these pictures in the house oh, that yeah, well, like from what whatever, it was sinister. It's called yeah. sinister, right? And there's jinn in the actual uh, photos in the photos. 
right? Like pictured, or they just like live within like the. So they live in the they they like they like, the, the film the film was like they live in the pictures. But I know like Islamically it's 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 a, there's one there's one um, opinion that you shouldn't have uh, pictures. pictures in the house oh, because yeah. it attracts of living things. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. Brother. Where's mine, brother? <laughs> Where's mine? <laughs> there's not how many zeros are in there. But um. <laughs> Any more jeans? So give me some jeans. Well, no, I'm not gonna lie, man. That that smile thing, like it just yeah, it hits you in it. it it's yeah. like it's what, a trip. What, what man. Was did you watch? Did you watch the film? Or no, have you seen the film? No, smile. No, 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 so so it's so it's like you, like, yeah, you need to so watch it, that. It, it's it's I, I, I can only remember certain parts, right? But the part that he's talking about is like yeah. when that demon possesses you, you yeah. get this smile. You get this uncontrollable yeah well, grin. it was crazy it man. was such a and then at the same time you're doing that you're just you're yeah you're they're, killing, they're you killing you as well yeah you know you're, you're, yeah. you're unaliving yourself so it's possessing you, it, but, you, you got this but the thing is you're but the thing is it will do it in front of someone else right let's say if i like you know let's say if i in order to pass the gin on oh, to another person yeah. i have to do that in front of you and now you're gonna get that and then it just keeps passing it on. So it has to happen yeah. in front of another person. So it was a really uh, creepy, very creepy thing. Yeah, it was a mad thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, not in the motion. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what motion you've been going to, mate. That's why, exactly, exactly. Yeah, 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 like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's a real, that's a trip, man. So I, like, I, I you know, see, it, watching these horror movies, yeah, I genuinely believe these people behind the scenes, yeah, they put second in there. Like, you know, you know, some of you would look under the wing and they said, "Well, I have to have second." You know, but did you see that recent thing, one that they were saying about is, is, is the, the specific set in it to break up the marriages? Did you see there's one apparently? But and then when well, like there's this film, well, I don't know what it's called. Um, but it's the first ever horror film that I didn't watch. And that's because I, I sincerely saw so much no stuff way. on this from Ulama saying, yeah, yeah, do not watch this film. Been... So don't tell people, just tell me what it is. Later. Yeah, me. let me, I'll try to find it. Because that's the video of that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Why are you going to watch it? If you watch it, I'll watch it with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch it with you. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah but, but that's that's so crazy that they, they put Sigur within these things. Because... You know, obviously, you know, magicians have come out and uh, you know course, mentioned what they do. Well, like some, they, some of them are Zionists behind these. Uh, yeah, the, the, these yeah. They do, they do, they, they do all kind of black magic and stuff, bro. Your thing is speaking like, yeah, yeah. Uh, just gib gibberish. It's not, bro. Trust. Really That's a beautiful tea, you know. Only at Zen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, by Zen Lounge. <laughs> but you know what's so beautiful? Like the Dean of Allah protects us from all these things. All these exactly. things. You know, sometimes, obviously, we may not have the knowledge of these certain things, yeah. but we don't have to, yeah. because the deen of Allah protects us, it mm -hmm. encompasses all these things. Subhanallah, what you said there is so beautiful, so deep. You know why? Because I know I, I know this one brother, right? And he's quite he's quite a known guy. He can look after himself. He's a good fighter. Can um, you stop talking about me, please, Udayfa? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <loves him>, <laughs> and, um, he can look after himself. He's quite, he's quite, he's quite about it himself, right? Anyway, he ended up getting this. Uh, he was, he ended up having going through these issues, right? And then uh, I was there when I saw the rukia take place on this brother, and like the 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 jinn came out and the jinn started spazzing him out, and he goes, "I never ever felt more vulnerable in my life." Thinking like I'm a guy that can protect myself. I have no issues, like whatever it is, for fun, everything. But, I, but the only thing that could save me from that situation was the the words of Allah, was the Quran. He goes, it's the, the only thing that could. Protect. And obviously, he wasn't on the deen. He didn't. He goes like, yeah. it would no matter what, what, whatever, whatever weapon I had, whatever means of or health I had that I could protect myself. He goes, I was up against something that the only thing that could defeat it was the one was who the, created it. Was the one who created it. Have you seen that the video of, of that Russian magician woman? She's been oh, and she says, yeah, 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 yeah. And she goes, that, yeah. It's a Russian magician. Yeah. She's a woman. I've yeah. seen that. So she's sitting there. She goes, yeah, I do magic. She's giving interviews. Like, who do you do on this people? They come. Blah, blah, blah. She goes, the only people that I can't uh, target is Muslim. Because they have this iron. She goes, they have this protective dome around them. Yeah. And, it, and she specific, specific, explicitly says, it's their five lady prayer. Mm. She and she's a magician, but she's an ally. She goes, Listen, I do this, I do this for that person, break marriages, da, da, da. But she goes for the Muslim, she goes, every time I try, she goes, 
Yeah, yeah she, she said something she like this. Their God protects them. Yeah, because yeah. 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 she said, yeah. Because we yeah. tried to, and because it's protected. So I don't have a reaction with it. Yeah, it's it's a banner. Bro, do you know there was a, a famous reciter, a Mishari, it's called Quran recitation of Surah Bakhara. And there was this thing on YouTube. Of the, yeah, the and they were doing sihr in the back. In the background. Yeah. She wanted to get back to the house. some yeah. black magic thing going on. Mm. Yeah. I, I've done a video on it. I recorded the whole thing. Yeah. That was a magic thing. That was crazy, bro. <laughs> 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 that's 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's specifically inviting them. That's like calling them so in. What does that work with you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's yeah. inviting you. Like they're just standing next to you, like moving it. But you seem like the type of guy that would go back and try that, so I don't really want to encourage <laughs> you to do that movie. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's like a white people yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we have 640 pounds away from our target, guys. He's going to wrestle Can a contest. Yeah, yeah, 640 <laughs> pounds, guys. Please, 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 help please, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, why do you ask that? You no, see something like that? No, I was just curious. Like, what would be like the Islamic interpretation of how that works? There's a transaction. You know what they do with them? So, you, when you work with the chick, the unseen, and you see her, what they will do is they'll tell you to sacrifice. You need to do um, the more bad things you do, the more they'll do stuff for you. So, for example, they'll tell you get the Quran, rip it, and you hear stuff yeah, yeah. like get period blood and put in the Quran. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Because the period, but like yeah. obviously, as you know, yeah. we, we've yeah, been yeah, instructed yeah, yeah. that there's certain that. times yeah, that we're not allowed to have yeah. intimacy Ali, when a woman is on her period, like right? It. It's, we're, we're not allowed to worst, be intimate with a woman. The worse that you do, bro, the better you like it's to them, it's like degrading and insulting, bowing down to a shaitan, etc. The more power they want, they do disgusting stuff like feces. Yeah. You guys also buy it's like all the rich in the world that are all evil. Uh, or rich, yes, yeah, like, no, not all the rich, no, but I hundred percent believe that there's, uh, yeah, there's a cult that that exists that is, uh, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, well, the thing is that they stem from the Babylonian families because yeah. obviously we believe yeah. that Harut and Marut brought magic yeah. to Babylon, right? Yeah. And if you notice, there's thirteen families that accumulate over ninety percent of the wealth of the world, yeah, and yeah. all those families, where do they exactly. stem from? Babylon, exactly. Yeah. Subhanallah, yeah. Subhanallah, you know what I mean? So I got one brother. Um, Who's around me, uh, Ali bin Faris, and he was saying he's from Iraq, and he said that even to this day, right, people don't go Babylon. They don't go. They don't go Babylon like they, really? they, Yeah, people in Iraq they know to keep away from there, and that there's still like crazy stuff that yeah, uh, they, they should do. Like the Prophet yeah. when the companions going through a specific nation, Allah destroyed, and they they, they fed their camels. Yeah. So get rid of it. Yeah. It's been cursed. Yeah. And when you're talking about Sihab came there, yeah, you should be very very careful. Careful. Yeah. Yeah. Just had a very nice donation of hundred pounds. May Allah bless you, inshallah. And make a means of Sadhga Jari for you. That had to be pounds. my that had to be my post I put up, you know. Trust me, 100%. Come on, 100%, 100 percent one hundred. One hundred, yeah. See, he's here. This guy carries a yo. We're just five hundred and forty pounds away from our target, guys. May Allah bless you. If there is a heavy hitter there, how many people watching, bro? How many people watching Hudayfa? Twenty-three. One thousand three hundred people watching, inshallah. Guys, <laughs> uh, if there's a heavy hitter there that can give uh five hundred and forty pounds. That will help teach anywhere from 50 to 150 people Inshallah. how to pray salah, how to do wudu, even surah Fatiha, surah Ikhlas, surah Nas, and surah Falak. Guys, uh, we want to teach them, inshallah. And that uh, includes needles? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> inshallah, one day, one day, inshallah. You never know, you never know, inshallah. Yes, needles, but we have good questions, you know? Yeah, I'm just curious. I, I'm like, there we uh, go. I love I love learning about especially things like this that like because how you know how else would I learn about this if I wasn't here it'd be yeah. very very hard to ask these questions that I'm asking you guys and learn this information straight from you know people like like how you guys are teaching me right now like otherwise like why well, search up like YouTube videos Google searches you know it'd be very very mixed I was gonna ask you about that too because uh, again like there's a lot of false information outside does uh does Islam at all believe in flat earth so I, I think I've seen some stuff online but then some stuff reviewing it I don't yeah this it's like mixed or it's like, uh, yeah Usually no, no. There are some people who might say anything, but we don't. The consensus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's what I'm saying. You see, that's a perfect example. There's a lot of fake information. Online. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to learn this stuff if I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, man. Grass, but, but, but this is this is what we do, man. Just anytime, look, we've got brothers of Afar, the warner is warning. I think it's flat. <laughs> yeah. So? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I spice it up for the. For the I, I personally believe that the way that they show the Earth to us, I don't believe that the the way the actual Earth looks yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, you know. Maybe, maybe. Because even fun. even I think I think um, uh, the guy Tyson, what's what's the Tyson Fury? No, no, <laughs> the African American guy um, Neil Tyson. The, yeah, something like that. He even talked about like how the world is pear shaped. It's not even 
shaped as a that's sphere. Shaped, that's a nice one. Yeah. So it's like what you know for, they're they're going against okay. that normal model that yeah, they created. The bait, yeah. yeah. So it's like, and this is the guy who's trying to teach us, and he's saying it's not, it's not, you know, it's not a sphere. It's it's it's, 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 it's it's got a different shape. Yeah. So. Yeah. You never know. You know, for us, we trust the information that Allah gives us and His prophets gives, gives us, but we can't always trust these other individuals. No. Yeah. You know? no. So that's one thing I find in the fitness industry as well is that when a lot of people, when, when you're following like diet programs or training programs or all of this, this, that, and the other, it's people specifically pushing their agenda yes. or what their opinion yes. is Even on evolution. something, right? And it's like there's more people out there with allergies than there is that are normal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you've gone and built like this whole watermelon diet. Because yeah. <laughs> it's the only fruit that you're not intolerant to, and yeah, you find yeah, like yeah. all of these crazy. Yeah. It's like so a lot of people out there, they're, they're just pushing their what their agenda is. Mm. Um, you'll be careful of the knowledge, the knowledge that you seek out there, man. You need yeah. to carry on talking about because donations are coming in. Fifty-four US dollars, ten US dollars, and the lot. Whenever they ever talk, the 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 donations are coming. Well, for voice, Alhamdulillah. I was talking about the story you guys remember saying how like every play how, how I, I have to wonder if everything is fake you know you don't know what is real a lot of people make up their own stories say True, their lives. but when you go down the road extreme skepticism then i'll come and say to you is like for example how do you know you're here I don't. Is that how do you know? Like, I, I could know. I could black out right now, take up a VR headset, and exactly. Exists, so, but when different. you go into that extreme skepticism, you can't even apply it in your own life because that means that for you to even have stability or certainty, like when you come out here, don't even look less than right, go straight into the road. When you wake up, for example, when you wake up in your hotel or your house, you know very well it's your house. You know, when you go down, what you're going to find in the fridge, you're not going to go downstairs and open the fridge and see a, a bunny and be like, oh, that's fine. No, you find that abnormal. So, there is order in your life because if you're down the go down the roof of extreme skepticism, everything you, you lose your mind. Am I here? No, I'm not here. What's going on? Not... You get it? It's, it's yeah, you, no, you don't. So you don't. So you don't apply that in your real life. In real life, you're like, okay, you know, there's order. I know I can't go through that wall. I'll hit my nose. So you know, you get it. So do you, do you yeah. think it's it's good to be open minded though? Maybe to that 100%. extent. Hundred percent. Open minded, but That's... not to the extreme, because then you actually lose your mind. You lose your mind because nothing. It's like, am I here? Is this real? You know, everything is a question, and then yeah. you can't live like that. Yeah. And if we all did that, there'll be chaos. Yeah, if you question everything, everything becomes a question. You, exactly, it's life exactly. even real. Exactly. You know, exactly. Real? Yeah. Yeah. But it's just it's it's that's what I'm saying. Like for me at least, like I, a lot of like my uh, people, my age that I speak to, like we we could all relate on that because now, like I mentioned before, like the Neuralink, the Apple headset VR thing, it's like those things are gonna like you know change the future, especially now AI. Like yeah. life's gonna be flipped in a hundred years. Yeah. Yeah, it might be completely different. Might mm. be, yeah, and that's the test. And it. it, it like soon enough, I think it gets to a point where people wouldn't be able to differentiate a video game and VR headset from reality. There's yeah. probably going to be a thing that goes in your brain that like sedates you, and then yeah. you're living a complete. It, it, it'll I be saw, like a, a millionaire simulator. Why wouldn't somebody play that? You know? I saw I saw one like some graphics, some new graphics, and bro, what they showed it to me. I thought it was real life, and they said, "Oh, it's a game." That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, it yeah. Looks real. That, no, imagine in yeah. 200 years. Yeah, now. but the thing is, with this kind of stuff, it doesn't really take away from like how does that prove to me that God doesn't exist. I yeah, think if anything, it? it proves that it does. Exactly, you get it. So it's like to me, I'm like, okay, it's just gonna make me, you know, believe more yeah. that the higher power exists. You get it? Because exactly. if, I, if I can't believe in anything here, the one thing I would believe in is God. Exactly. Exactly. About. Yeah, exactly. And then you already believe that. You know? Yeah. You already believe that, guys. Yeah, we're just 484 pounds away from our target, guys. If there's anyone there? If we get four people to give 100 pounds, we will reach that target in the next 15 minutes, guys. We're yeah, looking please, for four I'm people to give 100 pounds. Donate, so Come on. Get moving. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> what time is space close? Big bro will say anytime you want. What does his heart say? <laughs> My heart's saying let's close now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if it's up to the big bro, he's gonna keep you here. <laughs> yeah? no, 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 not that late. I think he's driving coming back. I think he's, he's gonna do something with Where did he so shoot? Job he had to do a quick interview. Yeah. And then he's gonna he's gonna come back. I think he's going to be shot house. Okay, he's gonna come back. I think Aki Amen's coming. Okay, we're here. Or, uh, yeah, I think, they're doing okay. a video. I think they're doing a video. Huh? Oh, have they come? Oh, oh is he driving? Yeah, brothers are here. Oh, are they here? I met one of their brothers before. Oh, well. okay. Yeah. Final, I was just, I was just <laughs> talking about so guys. Yeah, we've got the brothers here. Uh, the lab. Uh, you know, I'll get you guys. We're just 484 pounds away from our target, guys. If you're watching this, please, please donate whatever you can. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah
Anyone's going to think that that was planned, didn't it? You're right, nice to meet you. Great pleasure. Yeah, guys, Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah, any, any, any question? Needle. I think I'm thinking outside the box. How come he keep calling him Needle? Because he's got a real name and he said he doesn't want. Uh, 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 no, stop, stop, stop. stop. Uh, <laughs> he prefers needles. I have needles. Needle. 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 Another thing I uh, I was curious about. This is another thing I just heard online. Where I don't know whether it's true or not. That's why I'm asking you. Um, I, I heard about the. Uh, uh, it's been good. Good. It's been good. We trained today. Christianity and Islam. Yeah. yeah. Where what did you do? What did you in do? Christianity, they say that God loves you like children, but in Islam, it's like uh, you are in God's children. Yeah, we don't believe from this concept of having God's children. Uh, and even in the Bible, it's the sons of God. We live in the time and age of sons. Yeah. It's that people who are righteous. Just take our weapons. Deal with it. That's about it. That's what I'm talking about. No, no, no. You don't get close enough to punch me, bro. You're getting licked down. He does not beget and already begot him. So that's what we say. Allah does not choose her. And uh, again, a second part. No, I saw this. I'm just asking this just because yeah, I, like, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I didn't know this respectful way, but I, I read in that same space that it was viewed as a slave to God instead of children in Islam. Yes, so we are. I prefer to be a slave to Allah than to be a slave to the creation. You get it? Because if you think about it, we we are born and we are in He said that man is born free, but in shackles everywhere. So what do you enslaved. This to the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enslaved, enslaved to so many other stuff. So we would rather be enslaved to Allah, and that's how we find our true freedom. Because you're, you're bound to be enslaved to something. You get it? Yeah. So what was it? Yeah. I, I think. I think me. Me. What's that? What's that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get get him ginger. ginger, 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 ginger lemon. Ginger mint and yeah. Lemon. So yeah. yeah in, so we rather instead of being enslaved to uh, the opposite gender, to the money, to the world, I would rather be enslaved to Allah because that's how I find my true freedom. You get it once you enslave yourself to yeah. Allah is when you find your true freedom. But then does that remove like the loving aspect that for example Christians would say how no, God loves no, them like no, 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 not at all. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the believers. So it's not like oh just because I'm a, I'm a slave to Allah, it means he hates me. Just to give mm. clarity, I came with this probably uh, his, uh, his um uh, needles, his uh, that's his uh, kunya. Needles, yeah. Needles, yeah. Needles. yeah. Um he's uh, a hadith the, about needles. <laughs> in the field. What is it? <laughs> a, I don't know where I'll bring it up. <laughs> he's, he's the editor in the film uh, for Sneeko. Is it? Yeah. He's not Muslim. We're just, we're just having a general conversation. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. May Allah guide us all. We all need guidance. I mean, I mean, I mean. Even those that are Muslim also need oh, guidance. 100%. Like, bro. Yeah, 100%. You're never, ever yeah, 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 free yeah, from exactly, it. Exactly. Does it yeah. say it all if Allah does love, like. Yeah, Allah loves, loves it. Allah loves the believers. Yeah. This yeah. is that? Yeah, 100%. I, I, uh, Ustad. Uh, where does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that he loves the believers? Mumi need them. Can we we need your recitation once? Even if you don't know, uh, uh, well, like, it's just ma'ana, inshallah. Well, like, Guys, Ustad Idris is um well I may Allah bless, bless him inshallah. He's he's got a beautiful recitation. Um yes, but inshallah I wanna uh Ustad, what is one of the what's your favorite ayahs in the Quran? And by the way, we've got uh, brother Needles. Needles he's, he's not Muslim. Mashallah. He's talking about Islam, Mashallah is very intrigued, he asked about this and that, etc. But it would be really nice to hear if, if you have any like recitation, etc. Very nice and, to me, Needles. Yeah, yeah, inshallah. In the meantime, just so you guys know, we are live. 
right, that people great. are watching. We're just, we're just doing fundraising for the, the charity of teaching new Muslims how to pray Salah. Amazing. So we have this guy, the prayer mat, and we have Salah. So, 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 so yo, we're just doing that in the meantime, but I'm okay. Great, great. What is it that you're intrigued about? I was just asking random questions, like what I asked. Why are we slaves to Allah? Yeah, that was Does Allah say he loves you know, yeah. like believers. Everything asked about space, about jinn, about yeah. pretty much every aspect of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in, in the Quran specifically, he says, and uh, I hope you don't mind me reciting it in, in the way it was revealed, just so you can understand its impact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِن شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا Allah says, and, and what would your Lord benefit from punishing you? Humanity at large. Oh, that's you know, what it translates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Allah, does, Allah is not a Lord that's, uh, you know, wrath. And, and he wants to... So, he, him, so that because of his infinite justice, his justice. Why? Shall I give you an example? I, I, I'll actually explain something to you. I mean, if, say for example, Hitler, he killed... So many Jews, right? Would it be just for a man just to kill six million individuals and then to shoot himself and that's it? Six million to one. Is that just? Numerologically not. Numerologically not. And even if we look at it from any humanitarianly, from any perspective, we have a look at it, it's not just. So people need their rights back. And and the, the sad reality is we live in a world where people are not given their rights. Not it's an unfair world. I mean, it's run by human beings, especially if you're not implementing the law of God or understanding that God knows best for us, then we're always going to fall short of the mark. So what happens is, is that God, he enables for us in the next life for us to get our dues back. For us, for those who acknowledged their Lord and worshipped him and, and, and followed his path that they would have a paradise under which rivers flow and they would live forever in, in, in internal joy. And those who decided to live a very trivial life of just following their desires, just like maybe, and their instincts, just like animals, then and not acknowledging their Lord, then for them, there would be a recompense. There will be somewhat of a punishment. And that's true because Allah says, what does he say about the prophets? مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ عَلَى النَّاسِ حُجَّةٌ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ Allah sends messengers with the purpose of giving good tidings to those who follow and a warner for those that don't follow and disobey so that mankind at large, yeah, cannot have a proof against their Lord on the Day of Judgment. So, so Allah in His infinite justice, He would not punish any individual until they acknowledge their mistakes beforehand. So you would, everyone would stand in front of God on the Day of Judgment. Everyone would stand in front of God. And prior to Allah punishing anyone or God, you would have to admit your sins and your shortcomings in order for you to go into the hellfire first. So it's about knowing your mistakes? Yeah, so it's about acknowledging your mistakes. Acknowledge. Yeah, acknowledging your mistakes and knowing that because it doesn't matter how intelligent you may think you are in this world or, or how far the scientific narrative of, of atheism may go. Do you need to do anything? Go, go. Yeah, yeah, go on. That's fine. Answer, no problem. No, no, no problem. Back, come back. Yeah. How you been? Yeah, yeah. How's things? What charity were we raising for, mashallah? Tell us a bit about it. It's our, it's our own charity started five years ago. Yeah. Salam. So basically, we launched a new project, which is Salah Plus, uh, which mm. is basically, um, we just teach born and new Muslims how to pay Salah. And then we have this guided prayer match that we print off. Because one of the biggest issues a lot of new Muslims have is, when they come to Islam, they don't know how to pray because they have to learn Surah Fatiha. Yeah. And then what, what that does to them is like, okay, I'll pray Salah later. Once I've learned Surah Fatiha, once I've learned Surah Fatiha, the next thing you know, a month, two months, they don't know. Yeah. There's no point in praying. So we just have this guided prayer mat, which has a transliteration, um, and they can just start praying immediately. Marshall. And so we just give this out. So we print them out. Last year, we printed 10,000. We ship them out around the world. Free. Amazing. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't charge this absolutely free. And also we have Salah instructors. So we have sisters team, brothers team. Uh, who teach people how to pray Salah around the world. They want to learn how to pray Salah, the book of session. It's for free. But this year we're trying to expand from not just London, uh, but like, you know, around the UK and yeah. Europe. Just having Salah hubs. Chum, just make it. If anybody wants to learn how to pray Salah, how to do wudu, uh, and four surahs, surah Fatih, surah, surah Ikhlas, surah Nash, surah Falak, we make sure that every weaver has at least memorized that. Mashallah. So we have, we're launching the Quran instructors, which will, inshallah, teach them that. And whatever we're doing, we're just trying to expand the project a bit more. 
Um, and yeah, so it's just that's what we so just to clarify as well. So these mats, they're prayer mats, yep. and for reverts or for those who are just going to pray the first yes. time, they're yes. gonna they have it like yes. they can literally read whilst yes. they're praying yes. all, they all the steps of prayer, right? Yeah, they fold it, they can put it in their bag, put it in front of them, mm. and they just read the transliteration. Amazing. Um, yeah, we were so, just yeah. talking about up, upgrading it to an electronic, yeah, electronic one. one. Yeah. <laughs> there is there is some problems that do it. So if you can afford it, I do actually recommend that. But with us, uh, the, what we can afford uh, is this, inshallah. And we're already friends, uh, we already sent out 10,000 uh, last year. Not only that, we're now um, providing them to the dawah tables. Mashallah. So we want to make sure that the dawah tables have them because in the dawah tables, we've been new Muslim Islam. Yep. And we just give it that Sheikh Farouk, you ordered um, uh, 250 of these. So, more, um, yeah, so any dawah table, they contact us because we're printing 20,000 from Turkey. 10,000 these right now. And there's such a demand for it because so many new Muslims are coming to Islam. So we're just trying to provide this to all the masajid, all the dawah tables. Uh, and they can read that. Salah Plus, when they go to the back, they can go to our website. So if anybody wants to order the guided prayer map, go to salahplus.com. Order it for free and we ship it out. And our whole focus is because a lot of people, even Muslims, they neglect Salah. So Salah is something become like, you know, I miss it here and there. No, this, this is something that you should never be doing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, you get what I'm trying to say? We have Muslims ordering this yeah. because they're too embarrassed to learn and they're like, you know what, they're too shy. We're like, brother, just order it. We just want you to pray because it's Tawheed. The second pillar of Islam is Salah, you know, and what makes Islam unique is the Ulahiya, that the Tawheed al Ulahiya, that we sing out Allah in our worship. So I'm, we are one of the, me and Muhammad Hijab started five years ago, uh, but we are one of the funds. I'm a trustee, I'm a volunteer. Yeah. I don't get a single penny. I believe in the project and um, the brothers who do this amazing work, we've got Salah instructors. There's even one sister, she's a, she was a Catholic. She called the studio. Not now, like we was doing a live appeal. She said, Look at this. Wallah, it's so amazing. She's a Catholic. She calls the studio to ask a question about Tarawih on behalf of a revert uh, husband who's not well. Wow. So she's saying, can my husband pray laying down? He's not well. Wow. So we was like, look, you're a Catholic woman calling on behalf of your revert husband. And then we was talking, talking. And then we got to accept Islam. Sheikh Mohammed uh, convinced her. And then we heard she was like, yeah, my husband, Erin. So then Dawood is in the background. He was like, Erin? He was like, I was like, I know who Aaron is. I was like, who's Aaron? But this guy's wow. from California. What are you talking about? But Dawood comes and goes, isn't Aaron, because Dawood's a Salah instructor. Yeah. So he goes, isn't Aaron, because Dawood always talks to Aaron. Aaron's like, this is such a beautiful wow. brother. It was her husband that Dawood was teaching man. how to play Salah. And she was saying, she was keep saying, we didn't really understand. Yeah, he's got this mat. And I was thinking, what's she talking about? Yeah. So she's, he's learned how to play Salah off this mat. What are you saying? It went worldwide. Dawood's been, 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 been teaching him, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Matting in the masjid. <laughs> yeah. So Dawood's been teaching him how to pray Salah. He doesn't need it anymore. So we said, sister, like we was amazed. And then we said, sister, why don't you borrow it from your husband? And she's like, no, nah, I want my own one. Yeah. <laughs> we said, no problem. So we send it out to her. And we're thinking, subhanAllah, like she just come to Islam now. And I know when I came to Islam 11 years ago to learn how to pray Salah, it's, it's long. Like, you get it? Like, you don't understand Surah Fatih, how to pronounce it. If I don't do, if I don't recite Surah Fatih, my Salah is not valid. Obviously, the uh, Shaykhatim has given us fatwa that, you know, they can say, subhanAllah. Yeah, if they're starting new, yeah. etc. Just say subhanAllah. And many shiuk before him yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah many shiuk before him as well. So what you're saying is this. These guided mats are for free. We ship them out. Wallahi, it cost us £2,000 to send out 1000 That's in the UK. We we'll send that second class, yeah? Second class. Yeah. <laughs> postal, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit peak out here, yeah? So £2,000 it cost us. But internationally, they just pay for the postal fee because it costs us £5,000, £6,000. We send it all around the world. 10000 is already gone. We ordered 20000 from oh, Turkey. Wallahi, all we just want is people reconnect to Allah through Salah. Because Salah is what feeds the soul. We had a sister who accepted Islam with us. She came one day crying. What happened, sister? I don't eat drink. Uh, I don't eat pork. I don't drink alcohol. I don't go clubbing. But I feel dead inside. Simple question. I said, do you pray Salah? No. Salah is what feeds the soul. Just as you have water, nutrition here, if you neglect the soul, of course you're going to start. So we said to her, "Get sign up. Sister Lauren Booth taught her how to pray Salah. And that's the thing. And even as Muslims, well, it's not even a river issue. How many Muslims pray Salah? Mm. People casually... Well, like casually, like, yeah, I missed Asa because I was busy. Busy with what, man? Yeah, we're just finding out now to outside Acton. Okay, I bare brothers outside. I think you what? What is it? The time of the month for brothers as well? What the hell are you, man, doing? Get inside the mess and pray. Exactly. But I can speak like that. to the youth. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I'm not going to go, man, yo, it's the time of your month. Yeah, 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 exactly. Don't pray, bro. No, but alhamdulillah, bro, the donations are coming. We're trying to hit the 35,000 pound mark. Yeah, we're just 100. 111 pounds away, 111 pounds away, inshallah, inshallah. guys. Uh, but yeah, this is it. And not only that, like, for example, you, like, Amber, you, uh, you know, memorize the Quran, and that's the next thing that we want to do is have dedicated Quran instructors. All they do is every week go through the rivers all around the world. They come, Surah Fatiha, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Nas, Surah Falak. We just want them to have four surahs under their belt. Yeah? Learn how to pray Salah, learn how to do wudu, and have these four surahs under your belt. Our job is done. Yalla, go. You want to be a scholar, 
That's the, our job is done here, alhamdulillah. Yeah? And the brothers do an amazing job behind the scene. And we want to increase the amount of sisters. We have a sister's team that uh, teach sisters. Oh. But there's a demand, Aki. The sister's calling me. Oh, you know, uh, Aki, we went through the website. But there's no one there. I'm call calling the sisters, uh, the head of sister's team. What's going on? She's like, I'm, I'm over overwhelmed. She yeah. goes, I, I, how many people can I teach? So we want to expand the teams. You know, we have volunteers, but sometimes they're busy. We want to pay instructors because they're dedicating their time. So it's just to grow the uh, the project, inshallah. Uh, we have Salah Hubs Mashallah. in Regent's Park Masjid. Masjallah. Masjallah. We have one sister's uh, Salah Hub in uh, Islam Masjid. Yeah, we want to have hubs uh, where yeah. every week somebody wants to learn Persian Salah. Yeah, they know Regent's now. Park yeah. from 5 p.m. to and 7 p.m. Wednesday. I was just talking about this, on just this channel. Salah. Yeah. Just Salah, just Salah, uh, because, because it's one of the most neglected salah, things. Man. And yeah. this is what Muad ibn Jawad, the Prophet peace be upon when he said Muad ibn Jawad to Yemen, said, hold the people to Tawheed. After Tawheed, to establish Salah. Yeah, not only yeah, that, yeah, the Prophet well, Muhammad Muhammad he said something profound. No, he said, um, uh, when a man came uh, to him and he said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I'm going to accept Islam, testify the testimony, and I'm going to pray the five players, and I'm going to give my zakah, and I'm going to fast Ramadan, and I'm going to perform hajj if I can financially afford it, and I'm capable of doing so. And the man walked away. The Prophet Muhammad he said, in sadaq. That this man, he would be successful when the scholars said by his success, i.e. he would enter Jannah and will be removed from the hellfire and will not touch it, i.e. the hellfire will not touch him if he is truthful in what he said. And this man, he explicitly said thereafter, I will pray my five and I won't increase, I won't pray anything voluntary. I will give my zakah and I won't give extra sadaqah. I would fast Ramadan exactly 30 days and I won't fast Mondays and Thursdays, any additional days. I'm just going to fast Ramadan. That's what Allah wants from me. And even he said about Hajj, Look, if I don't have the money, I can't go. But I'm going to do that, and that's enough. I'm not going to increase above that, and I'm not going to decrease below that. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that this man, if he is being honest in what he said, he would enter paradise. And I think that's why Salah, Salah, when looking at those actions, it's from the most fundamental things that you and I should actually you know, kind of spread or, or give da'wah to you because the salah is a connection between you and your Lord. And there's no greater connection that you can have with any individual in this world or with any person greater than you and Allah. And that's why for that reason, we should all invest in our salah. Make sure that our salah is from the from the things that we've perfected. Why? Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that it may be that a person will pray for 40 years, 40 years, because he didn't give it interest, yeah. And not even one salah will be accepted from him. Wow. Oh, Subhanallah. Yeah. Not even one prayer will be accepted him. Why? Because the truth is, people don't give this uh, this obligation it's due. right and it's due. And really, with such a with such a product, with such a uh, you know laying out uh, prayer and making it easy for those coming to Islam is so so important. Because as you said, the Prophet Muhammad said, from the first things he would do to call the non-Muslims to Islam, it wasn't okay. Get them to accept no Allah, but then straight after, straight after you have Allah. to implement something. So yes. it's knowledge alongside action, implementation, right? Yes. Implementing something because without that. Without showing Allah your appreciation through prayer, yeah. how can you say then that you are Muslim? Because the Prophet Muhammad said, what did he say? He said that the, the difference between us mm -hmm. and the non-Muslims or Christians, Jews, any person from any other faith yeah. is the prayer. Exactly. I, and whoever leaves it, he has disbelieved. He has disbelieved. I, I said it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> So the yeah. truth is, that's what Salah yeah. is. Exactly. And I've got that brother on the call, call who I said, yeah. You might want to donate, yeah? He's not yet. Yeah. He, yeah. he does. And, and the one who uses the Salah, man. Yeah. Okay, let's Asan. talk about it. I use the Salah, man. I don't well, think it's this Asan. one. It's the electronic one. Let's see. I said Ali needs to up, up, upgrade his, isn't it? To an electronic no, no. <laughs> upgrade. Right. Which one do you have, Aki? The electronic uh, one or the... Listen, I've got you on speaker. Yeah, I was the, just talking about you a while one. ago. Saying that how, subhanAllah, I saw you. She said, give me Salam. Wa Salam. Wa Salam. Wa Salam. Wa Salam. Wa Salam. Oh, yeah, God, that's... <laughs> the electric prayer mat is what got me started. Okay, uh, mashallah. The one we do is actually just a simple, like, thin material, but the electronic one I heard is brilliant as well. Same thing, thing, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You want the, 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 the big man thing? You want the big man thing? I want the mesquite thing. <laughs> yeah, Aki, you, you know how to pray salah now? I do, I do. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Do. If you know anyone that needs Aki, because we don't just give these guided prayer mats, not the electronic ones, but we also have Salah instructors. So if anybody wants an instructor, they can go to salahplus.com, bro. If you know anybody that's struggling, that want to learn how to pray Salah, we have male instructors, brothers, and sisters instructors, if they want to learn how to pray Salah. Uh, inshallah, myself even, just to make sure I perfect it, uh, I'll, I'll get involved in that as well. Inshallah. May Allah bless you.
No worries, Ali. Amin, Amin, Amin. Who's that, Aaron? Yeah? What's left to donate? No, 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 What's left to donate, Ali? Huh? Check it, refresh okay, it. Okay, so, so basically, okay, so to get to that, no, to get to the that. landmark. We, we reached that, we reached that. Oh, we've reached it we now, reached mashallah. You've just... got to take us to the next we're, one. We're... Yeah, we're a bit, you want to give us a big figure? You want to give us a big figure? <laughs> <laughs> I want a big pillar. I want a we need, we need about. We need to get to two fifty. Okay, Take for, it to two. Oh no. For our next target, it's eight hundred ninety-five pounds. But yeah. No, no, okay. now, now, okay, left now. One hundred forty-five pounds to the two hundred fifty pound mark. We're one hundred forty-five pounds away. He's one hundred and forty-five pound away, Habib. Mashallah. Okay, okay, I'm sure it's that now. Sorry, now, now. Allah bless you, brother. Bless you. Allah, Allah honor you. Usman, Allah honor you, bro. May Allah bless your family, man. Hassan, may Allah bless you, bro. You was the means of this conversation as well because. Like I said, you're you're one of the last people I see using a salam, bro. Amazing. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Right. Like, it's mad, right. isn't it? Well, it's it's when I heard you, I was talking to him. I heard what I was like, well, I didn't want to disrespect. I was like, come and say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. So stand, is it? Is it? I don't know if it's authentic. I don't know if it's authentic. You know the narration. It's about, for example, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created a group of angels that, from the moment of their creation till the Yom Qiyamah, that they are in prostration. Yes, it's authentic. And some of them are in rukur. Okay. Some of them are in sujood. Okay. Tell me what I'm going to say. Just stop me if it's if it's yeah. I don't, yeah. So that the moment Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells them, just to repeat again, these angels are created and they are in prostration and rukur from the moment of their creation till Yom Qiyamah, millions or billions of years. The moment Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells them to lift their head up, is it true that they say? That we did not worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped. Yeah. We just, did not worship you as you ought to be worshipped. Yeah. Just, just imagine for a second, yeah. From the moment they created to Yom Qiyamah, they are in ruku or in prostration, and when they lift their head up with the permission of Allah, they say, "Oh, Allah, we did not worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped." And then we've got people who don't pray salah. Well, to me, it's ajib. To me, I find it so bizarre when somebody comes and says to me, "Yeah, I couldn't wake up." You couldn't wake up for Fajr. Wallahi, let me tell you, and I tell everyone, if I, if somebody came to you, to the, the, the champ is calling, if somebody came to you and said, I'll give you 20 grand, the champ himself? 20 grand, Wallahi, you will tell your neighbor, Wallahi. break down my door if I don't wake up. Break down my door if I don't wake up. You set alarm, you do everything. You do everything. But when it comes to Allah who's promising you Jannah, you don't pray. I find it weird. I find it ajeeb. Not only that, not only that, bro. We, if we look at it a bit deeper, all right, we spoke about the angels. They had, they, they acknowledge because it's their knowledge. They know Allah very well, and they know Allah uh, greater than you and I. Yes. But if we look at Shaitan, Shaitan, a devil, Iblis or wow. Satan. Yes. He just missed one sajda. Wow. One prostration, one, not even one. the prayer, okay. just one order from God yeah. to bow down, which is part of a prayer, yeah. which to prostrate, which is part wow. of a prayer. And for that, Allah took him from the highest of the high. He was above the rank of the angels, yeah, it was said. Yeah. They said, because remember, he's a jinn. He's not even an angel. He was someone yeah. who who had free will. Yeah. And he worshipped Allah. And for the reason of him wishing one missing one prostration, yeah. Allah took him from the lowest to the lowest. So imagine, we ha we should be worried when we miss a salah. We should be scared yeah. when we miss yeah. a salah. We should feel as if that, that rope between us and Allah has been, you know, torn. Yeah. That, that, that connection between us and Allah is, is, you know, has been broken. And that's why it reminds me of a statement where, you know, uh, one of the pious predecessors was teaching a class and his students uh, were there and then one of them had a, a glance oh. at something impermissible. Yeah. And and the way he addressed it, he said, you've just broken uh, and uh, you've just broken a connection that you had with you and Allah. And that's what we need to look at sins as. We have to look at it like that. And we have to look at it. And, and, and on that point, you know, a famous scholar, he said, Allah, he created angels with, with uh, he created angels with, uh, with intellect, yeah? And he created human beings, uh, sorry, and he created animals with desires. Yes. Yeah, and he created human beings with intellect yeah. and uh, desires. Yeah. And he, if the human being follows his desires, he goes as low as the animals in status between him and Allah. But if the human being worships Allah with his intellect, willingly, willingly controlling his desires, he goes to the rank of the angels and even above yeah. because Allah and in his infinite justice and his infinite wisdom the angels Allah says about them yeah. uh, uh, Allah says on, on uh, about them he says yaf'aluna ma yu'marun la ya'suna Allah ma amarahum they don't disobey Allah azza wa jalla whenever they are commanded to do anything and they do what they're ordered as for the human being, we have that free will. So when a Muslim yeah. chooses to pray Allah, or anyone chooses to come to Islam, then for that reason, Allah, in His infinite justice, He puts those individuals yeah. above the ranks of the angels, and through His infinite wisdom and justice and His reward, He enters them into paradise underneath which rivers wow. flow. And that's why Salah is so important.
there is there is certain desires there is certain desires that you can that you have to have that is okay that is a good take care of yourself here there is certain desires that you can follow yeah that is pleasing to allah such as they can't survival see, they can't see you they can't see me <laughs> we did that <laughs> so, they can't see you, yes like certain desires such as eating yeah. you have to eat to survive yeah there's certain desires such as sleeping yeah if you don't sleep you can't function properly but even though if you do this with the right intentions yes. even those actions that you do it's, it's a form of yeah, ibadah. Ibadah, yeah. this is what people don't understand yeah. from sleeping to washing yourself to yeah. breathing Training. Everything is a form, but yeah. people don't understand exactly what religion gives you a reward for blinking for goodness sake exactly, exactly. and smiling, even intimacy. Yeah. intimacy. Come on, like, Come on. Exactly. it's a form of charity to be intimate between yourself and exactly. your wife. Exactly. But people don't understand. Oh, but what are you trying to say? Uh, it's charity to sleep around with your wife now. Oh, shut your mouth, bro. Understand what I'm trying to say. Exactly. The person said, stupid said, oh, people. The, the companions asked that. He said, yeah. when you commit zina, is it not a sin? Yes. Said, exactly. How would you not get rewarded for it? What's zina? What's zina? Yeah. Just yeah. for those that maybe what's might not know. Exactly. Yeah, what's zina? What's zina, Ali? It's it, uh, intercourse outside of marriage. There you go. Yeah. So, guys, we just had a donation of 200 pounds. Mash, 45 pounds, 15 pounds, 5 pounds, 50 pounds. Allah uh, Allah Allah pounds. Allah Allah may Allah bless you, guys. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you guys are watching that, we're just 550 pounds away from our next target. Uh, we're here with brother uh, Aki Ayman. May Allah bless him, preserve Allah him for his amazing work. Amen. Uh, Ustad, um, my Ustad, uh, make sure you add uh, Aki Ayman's Ustad. Yeah, Aki Ayman's Ustad. Yeah, my and, God. And I'll, be, I'll, be honored, <laughs> I'll be honored to call him my Ustad, but I wish uh, I had the. Uh, even the privilege to learn underneath him. No, 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 no. He's our brother and, 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 and mashallah, our beloved individual. You are very beloved to me, Ustad Jamal. You, Wallahi, may Allah bless you guys. Allah, Allah, um, Allah, you know, your recitations. And uh, Wallahi, it's, may Allah bless you guys. The people of the Quran are people that should be respected. Uh, Wallahi, highly, highly respected. Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah, of course. But you know, the, the, they are carrying that authentic chain from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the angel Gabriel, to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the Sahaba, to the Tabi'in. All the way here, and guess what? It's very interesting. We talk about the Quran and its transmission. Yeah. But if you think about it, who taught the Prophet? Who taught the companions uh, Salah? Thank you very much, sister. Who, who taught the companions uh, uh, Salah? Yeah. The Prophet. The Nabi, Nabi, Nabi. Who taught the Prophet yeah, Salah? Who taught the Angel Gabriel? Allah Azza wa Jal. So the chain, if you think about it, for Salah even goes to Allah to Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel taught the Prophet. The Prophet taught the Sahaba. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that Allah comes Allah. all the way down here. Allah. So the Quran and Salah Allah. is a chain of transmission that goes back. So when you guys donate, guys, when you help teach someone how to pray Salah, Actually, you are in that chain. chain. Finished, finished, Ali, yeah. You just mentioned about Salah, yeah. about the chains of narration. Yeah. Imagine how many times the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we were ordered to pray. Thank you very much, yeah. Sister. Well, we were ordered to pray what 50 times a day, that's and exactly. he kept on getting what yes. reduced and reduced and reduced. Exactly. Reduced. exactly. So, what to five. five? But even if you pray your five, it's five like, exactly. exactly. You get the rules of 50. Allah, exactly. And what law do you know that does this? SubhanAllah. And when Musa said to the Prophet to go and ask to even reduce that, he said, I'm too shy. Allah SubhanAllah. Too yeah? shy. And wallahi, if everyone would agree that if Allah told us to pray 24 hours a day, he deserves it, and he doesn't even ask that. Yep. Wallahi, sure. if he told us to pray 24 hours, the moment we're born to we die in sajda, right. he deserves it because of who he is. Lord. Brothers and sisters, we worship Allah not because of, we talk about gratitude. Allah gave us food. Yes. Wallahi, if Allah gave us nothing, he deserves to be worshipped because of who he is. That is why we worship Allah. So brothers and sisters, acknowledge who your Lord is and help people to pray salah. And what's the first thing Ustad going to be asked on your maqiyama? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet peace be upon him. Imagine he could have mentioned so many, things, so many things to his companions and he could, said, he could have said so many profound pieces of advice. But he said that, that the first thing that Allah would ask his servant on the day of judgment. Imagine this is the first interaction you're going to have with Allah. Wow. This is the first time you're going to meet Allah. This is the first time you're going to meet your Lord that created you, that gave you every single blessing that you have. Wow. And the first thing he will ask you is about your relationship with him. And how would he ask you is what? About your salah. The first thing he will ask you is about your salah. Now imagine brothers and sisters, because we were speaking about you know what brother Ali said. Imagine someone what? came to you and offered you Two billion pounds for your eyesight. Allah, Would you give up your eyesight for two billion pounds? Two billion pounds. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Never. Even the world and everything in it, you would never ever give up your eyesight. Yeah. Now that's just one of the blessings that Allah has given you. Doesn't and Allah gave you your eyesight for free without you even asking for it. Does he do not? Does he de, does he not deserve your gratitude? Does he not deserve your time? Does he not deserve your worship? Does he not deserve your full commitment 
as Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu dukhulu fi silmi kaafah. O you who believe, enter into the religion with entirety. Don't be one foot in, one foot out. Know Allah's blessings upon you. Know that with Allah, without Allah Azza wa Jal, the, the, the basics of life you wouldn't have. And that's why we are trying to, alhamdulillah, hate, which Ali has initiated and the Salam project about giving those individuals that want to learn Salah, that have been maybe lived 60 years of their life, 40 years of their life, 25 years of their life, ashamed to go to the Imam and say, you know what? I don't know how to pray. I really want to learn. And he doesn't want to sit down with kids. He doesn't want to go into a madrasa again. He doesn't want to be exposed to an environment where he, he belittles himself. You can just give them a prayer mat. He learns it himself in his own thing. And, and he learns what? it in his own comfort. Instructors, I, will, uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, Ali, can you give me half of that, please? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to see how it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how does it look? Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. No, no, you hold one half. Yeah, hold that. Yeah, hold that. Yeah. yeah, so basically, wow. actually, it's, it's step by step. Wallahi, you can learn wow, immediately. And so the words as well. Yeah, it's called transliteration. Allahu Akbar. Transliteration. Allah yeah. So Allah. step by step, actually, this is simple material. I've told Allah people, Allah. look, it's not electronic. It doesn't turn into That's a beautiful. Chair. It's not like Aladdin's carpet. It doesn't fly yeah. around. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> do any of those special things, yeah? It's an amazing Wallahi, idea. It's a the Prophet peace be upon him said, Are you going to get nothing from this? Actually, Wallahi, I'm a volunteer and I'm a trustee. I don't Allah make a Allah. single penny. Not that I'm saying if people, there's brothers in the Dawah who need to be paid. I'm not trying to make it seem as if it's not, not, not okay. There's brothers who need to feed their family. It's just for me, it's a personal choice. You know why? Because look, we already have intention problems as it is. Do you get it? It's yeah. just for me, inshallah, this is for the sake of Allah, that we're just doing it, brothers and sisters. And Wallahi, I'm telling you, I believe in this project. Yeah? I even do, it's like, I even said, if somebody doing us 500 pounds, I do ice baths. I used to have ice, I jumped in the ice you done it before? I've done it, I was in there for 40 Ooh, minutes, yeah? Wow. Okay, I jumped in the ice bath, you know why? Just to encourage people to give, inshallah, you know? Because I genuinely believe in this project. Okay. So, um, How are we doing? How are we doing? We're doing? So we're on our way, inshallah. We're inshallah. 543 pounds away from our next target, inshallah. Mashallah. Let's see how it goes, inshallah. So if there's okay. anyone watching, guys, uh, we're just doing a fundraiser for our Salah Plus project, teaching people how to pray Salah, step by step, inshallah. Uh, says, if there's any heavy hitters, alhamdulillah, who have the means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them. Uh, businessman, businesswoman, alhamdulillah. Um, whatever you guys give, 500 pounds can teach 50 to 150 people to learn how to do wudu, how to pray Salah, and even the Quran, inshallah. So if you guys have any questions, inshallah, no also you can ask. We are on our way to our next target, inshallah, guys. But yeah, alhamdulillah, how's the food? Alhamdulillah, we're oh, about to try it now. Where, where was you guys? What was you guys doing today? Afton. How was it? It was good. It was good. We had a, we went went to go and eat. We had iftar. Did you know something profound for those who are who are watching? Yeah. Um, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that the thankful eater gets the reward of the fasting patient one. Wow. So, listen to this carefully. So what it means is that many of us we fast in Ramadan and we only anticipate thirty fasts of reward or reward for thirty fasts or twenty nine depending on the moon sight in. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said something profound. He said that the one who thanks Allah after eating gets the reward of fasting. Gets the reward of fasting. And that's why they said that the, 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 the niya is the, is, the, is the tijara, the business of the ulama by which they trade with Allah. But what's the niya, Shaykh? The niya is it's an intention. So someone can now eat this meal right now. So imagine we fasted. Alhamdulillah, we fasted now. May Allah accept our fast. Amen. Someone can have their dinner now after going home or have, a, uh, have their dinner and enjoy yeah. or their suhoor. And after that meal, knowing this, having this niyyah, he could say, Oh Allah, I thank you for this meal. I am yearning and hoping from you to give me the reward of a fast. And Allah will give him. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, That Allah raises those who are amongst, uh, from amongst you that believe and those who have knowledge. Meaning, with knowledge, you raise in ranks. With knowledge, in the way in which you bargain and trade with Allah, yeah. that you can, subhanAllah, supersede people that don't know Allah. Because Allah is great. Allah, I am as my servant thinks of me. If he thinks of me as being great, and you know, nothing is impossible, then I am what he thinks of me. SubhanAllah. And that's why as well, another thing that we can do. So imagine, the person who has his iftar, and he has his suhoor, and he fasts his normal day, he can get the reward of free fasts in a day. Wow. Wallahi, wow. he can. He can. And it will put him lifetimes above those that don't make that niyyah. Oh. Why? Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, bin niyat wa inna mali kulli in That indeed actions are judged by upon their intentions and everyone will be uh, rewarded based on what they intend. If you intend that Allah reward you for multiple fasts, he will. Here's another narration that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said. So that's fasting. 
You know, there's, there's two ways in which Allah forgives us in this month, right? Prophet Muhammad said, Man sama Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisaban, Ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min zambi. Whoever fasts Ramadan out of Iman and yearning Allah's rewards, and Allah will forgive him all of his sins. But then Muhammad he said, whoever stands in prayer in Ramadan, night prayer, then Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive him his past sins. Yeah. So the Nabi Sallallahu said, because we all stand in prayer in the night with the Imam and Taraweeh. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, whoever prays Isha with the Imam until we finish his, he'll be rewarded for praying half the night. And whoever prays with the Imam until we finish his, he'll be rewarded for praying the whole night until he prays Witr. And whoever prays with the Imam Fajr, he'll be rewarded for praying the whole night. Yeah. So automatically, when you pray Isha with the Imam and you have an intention, Allah will reward you for, for praying half the night. And if you pray with the Imam until he finishes with it, Allah will reward you for praying the whole night, even though you're sleeping, even though you're enjoying the best sleep and you're indulging in maybe five hours of sleep. And then if you wake up and pray with the Imam Fajr, Allah will reward you for praying the night again. So two and a half times, Allah will reward you for praying, for praying that. Just for your intention. It'll put you light. And imagine that falls on Laylatul Qadr Ali. Imagine that falls on a night which is better than a thousand months. Not equivalent, better. Yes. And you make that intention. Yes, yes. That puts you lifetimes, not even lifetimes, that puts you, you know, sure. generations, I would say, above the layman that doesn't make that intention. Do you know what it made me think? Because I wanted to eat your food and tea, inshallah. Yeah, bismillah. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> how, does, how, does, how does one end up in the fire? Like, uh, like you talk about all these rewards and this stuff. I'm just curious. Yeah, you're right. How do you end up in the fire, bro? Allah. And if you end up in the fire, that's what I say. Hellfire is earned. Paradise is gifted. Allah. Hellfire, you earned it with your hands. That's why the people of the fire are never going to say, Oh Allah, you oppressed us. Rather, they're going to say, What? Give us another chance. Yes. And when he was talking about the eyesight, it reminds me of the hadith of the Prophet. Sallallahu the man will come on Yom Qiyamah and Allah will say to him, Enter Jannah by my mercy. Mm. They will say, Oh Allah, I want to enter Jannah by my good deeds. Allah says, Okay. He takes his eye and puts it on the mizan. Allah. And he gets all of his deeds and puts it on the other side. Mm. The blessings of his eye outweighs all the good deeds he's done. Allah. And Allah said, enter the fire. Because based on my justice now. You're right. And this is a man that I should worship Allah for 500 years. 500 years. So, means what? Now the man understands what? We enter Jannah by the mercy of Allah. It is gifted to us. There's nothing you can do to earn it. And then... And so it shows what? Then he oh, says, yeah, yeah. Oh Allah, talk, talk, talk. let me enter paradise by your mercy. What do we learn, guys? If it was based on Allah's justice, we don't deserve paradise. You're right. It is by Allah's mercy, brothers and sisters, inshallah. I'm going to let the brothers just yeah, be in peace, inshallah. No, Ali, yeah. are you saying this, yeah? Yes. There's another thing that came to mind yes. about the man that is going to be raised on your maqiyama yeah. and he's blind. Wow. But yet, his argument is, I used to see in the dunya, I, I, I would, I'll be able to see what my mom looked like, what my dad, my children, everything. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to him, we sent you signs, we sent you ayats, we sent you proof. You neglected it. So today, we raise you blind and you are left neglected. Actually, this ayah, I don't think, I don't think one, of the, one, of, one of the deepest ayahs I've ever come across. And you get to see, look, we're seeing what's happening. The flowers and the lights and the beautiful handsome brothers and you're talking about yourself of course yeah no no this is scary no one's scared of this wallahi wallahi they need to be careful for what happens next exactly is it a hadith or a ayah ustad you know where it talks about the people who are not going to be able to prostrate the ayah in quran the ayah in quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, sorry, sorry, listen, last one I wanted to eat. Yeah, go on, now, finish. No, 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 you go. go. Oh, do it, so then I wanted to eat in peace after this. No, no, so Allah says, وَيُكْشَفْ عَسْ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ وَهُمْ سَامِدُونَ Allah says that they'll be called to sujood, but they won't be able to do it. Wow. They won't be able to do it. Why? Because هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَى الْإِحْسَانِ يعني, You had the opportunity in this world to worship Allah, yeah. to show Allah that you, you appreciate Him, to show Allah and you acknowledge Allah that He's your Lord. Yeah. So it doesn't Yani, what does Allah say on the Quran on the tongue of the disbelievers? He says, He says, Walau tara idh wuqifu ala nar. If only you could see when they're made to stand in front of the hellfire. It's Yom al Qiyamah now, it's the day of judgment. Faqalu ya laytana. And they would say, Oh, we wish. Oh, we wish. Ya laytana nuraddu wa la nukadhiba bi ayati rabbi. We wish we could come back to this world and we wouldn't reject the signs of our Lord. And 
and so that we may be not of the Muslims. He doesn't say min al muslimin He says of those who have iman, uh, level up. Why? Because on the day of judgment, Allah says, "Yawm la yanfa'u nafsan imanuha lam takun amanat min qabl." On that day, no one's iman benefits. It doesn't matter if you see believe in the the malaika on the day of judgment, or you believe in the jinn on the day of judgment, or you believe in the messengers on the day of judgment. You Why? Because you've seen them. Exactly. Who wouldn't believe? The test is here, so your iman wouldn't have no value. Well, and that's what Allah says. وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And we will put down the scales of justice. مَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطِ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسًا شَيْئًا So no soul would be oppressed. وَإِن كَانَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا And if it is a مِثْقَالَ حَبَّ مِنْ ذَرَّةٍ And it's something very small, minute, and atoms weight, we would come with it. We'll be just. وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ And sufficient is, is Allah as a, as, a, as a just, as a, as a judge between us. And that's why some people on the Day of Judgment, Allah says, فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا Some people, they'll be weighed and they won't even have a, 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 you know, a, an atoms of weight on, on the scale, subhanAllah. So that's what Allah says. I want to let you guys eat inshallah. Get a camera on me so that... Uh, Daddy, Who's get, the brothers? get close to me, inshallah, so I don't want you to know, eat in peace. Inshallah. Otherwise, they might want to enjoy yeah, what yeah, we're yeah, enjoying. Yeah, we're going to get evil eye. We're going to get evil eye. Get the camera close to me, inshallah. Let the brothers inshallah, eat in peace. Uh, what I'm going to do is, guys, inshallah, in the next <clears throat> 32 minutes, inshallah, I'm going to focus on this. Uh, Bronxes, we do really want to, inshallah, reach the 40,000 pound mark today. So, guys, if you are... If you are watching this, inshallah, brothers and sisters, um, we are just 315 pounds away. 315 pounds away, guys, inshallah. Huh? So come back a bit. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, let's study in peace, inshallah. Yeah. Fine. So, guys, no, 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 study in peace, please. please. I'm eating in peace. Don't no, worry, no, 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 uh, start here as well, inshallah, um, and uh, even Brother Aki Amen. So, look, we are just 315 pounds away. Alhamdulillah, may Allah uh, bless everybody who's um, there. We go, guys, inshallah. So, we are here, guys, brothers and sisters. If you are watching this, inshallah, uh, wallahi, we really want to reach the 40,000 pound mark. Uh, we are just look, we have <coughs> how much we're just 315 pounds away, guys. Let me just go through some of the donations that we got. So we've got donations off. Let me just show you guys. There you go, Bismillah. So guys, five pounds. Zakra H Sadiq, fifty pounds. One hundred and seventeen euros anonymous, fifty pounds. Mohammed Taha, fifty-four US dollars. Harvest Hussein, ten US dollars, two hundred pounds, one hundred forty-five pounds. Uh, guys, three three hundred and fifteen pounds. Three hundred and fifteen pounds, inshallah, brothers and sisters. So, <clears throat> so guys, if you're watching this, Wallahi, we know there are some heavy hitters there. Yeah? It would be amazing if today we can reach the 40,000 pound mark, guys. Wallahi, it would be so phenomenal, guys, if we reach that, inshallah. Uh, whatever you guys give, brothers and sisters, it means so much, inshallah. Whatever you give, we're just 315 pounds away. But how many people watching? Just over a thousand people watching, guys. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, we can reach this target, yeah? I know there are some heavy hitters there. There are people who have the means to give 500, 1,000 pounds. Let me tell you something, yeah? I've said it before. If somebody donates a thousand pounds, that will help teach a hundred to three hundred people how to pray salah. I would jump in an ice bath with my clothes on. Okay, now we're going to ask Jabi, inshallah. He's very tired. Jabi is the champ, mashallah. He's making everything happen. Uh, Jabi is, is 12. Definitely, you have to leave at 12, yeah? 100%. Okay, all right, no problem. But can you just leave everything running? I have to, I have no choice. Yeah, yeah, leave it running. I will have to pack up. I have no choice. I will, I will have to figure out somewhere, yeah, inshallah. So, guys, if you're watching this, inshallah. Unless we can reach that target, so guys, we are 304 pounds away. 304 pounds, huh? You're gonna come back? No, come back for what? No, no, don't do that. So, guys, inshallah, we have got another 11 pound donation. May Allah bless you guys. We've had another donation of an anonymous five pounds. Zahra Sadiq, uh, may Allah bless you, sister. Uh, guys, we are just, and I know, and I know, and I know there are people out there who have the means to give more brown sisters, yeah? Uh, and I've said this before, inshallah, it's just to encourage you guys. Wallah, if somebody gives a thousand pounds, 
that will teach 100 to 300 people how to pray Salah. And not only that, I said the ice bath challenge, I'll do the ice bath challenge, I'll jump in the ice bath with my clothes on. No long thing, brothers and sisters. I, I, I literally mean it. Why? Because it's just to encourage you guys, but don't forget why I give in. Alhamdulillah, we've just had. What, don't you, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, come on. Come, let's, let's, let's smoke salmon, that's definitely halal. <laughs> no, it is, it is. It is. Shaul is. Bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Do, do you want uh, the uh, shrimps? Do you have the shrimps? The no, 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 Papa. Papa, man, just wants you to eat. Eat, Aki, why are you going to eat? No, eat, eat, eat. You have a line of food. Oh, where? You just came by. You're going to eat. You're going to eat. No, no, we didn't want to be rude. Allah intended for you to be on another live appeal. So, you guys going to go? What time is it? What time is it on to? Where's his job? He's supposed to be his job. So, where is he? How's that? How's that? My downloading speed is low. There's no Wi Fi here. SubhanAllah. Okay, interesting. Good, good. Okay. 20 US dollars, 5, 50, 50, 27 US dollars. I'm going to bronze this. May Allah bless you guys. Inshallah, we're just. We are just 164 pounds away from the 36,000 pound mark. Let's see, inshallah. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we just had a donation of 300 pounds. Allahu Akbar. So, guys. Allahu Akbar. Brother and sisters, as you can see. Let's go, inshallah. Let's go. Let's go, guys. 300 pounds can teach. 30 to 90 people how to pray salah, how to wudu. Do you want to shilaj it? Yeah, no, no, I've got some. Come on, but I want to know where it comes from. It comes from the mountains. No, no, some mountains, yeah, some mountains. Where's it from? Where's it from? I don't know. I don't, I can't remember. Well, I heard this from some mountains. Yeah, where's it from? Is it from a what? I'll there's this website has information. I'll send it to you. I'll send it. <laughs> Our game has been never seen being the same. Let's go, brother. Says, inshallah, we are just uh, brother. Says, we're going to the 37,000 pound mark, guys. I think we can do this, inshallah. It might be just maybe, maybe we can see, inshallah, if we make dua, Jabi might stay just a little bit more longer. <laughs> plenty on the plenty, yeah. Jabi, go leave it to me. I'll pack up everything. I'll pack, just give me the bag, let me know where everything is. Leave it to me. Bismillah. Are you putting the banners, bro? If you want to go, put the banners. Guys, we've got 26 minutes, inshallah. Yeah, okay. Well, to Jabi to go. I'm still here. So, guys, look. We need, subhanAllah. Oh, another donation. Guys, we need the heavy hitters. We really want to reach 40,000. Nabila. No, Nabil Afsal, 100 pounds. Shahid Hassan Rahim, 50 pounds. May Allah bless and preserve you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. We're 714 pounds away. 714 pounds away from our new target. Guys, we are 714 pounds away from our new target. Look, our target today is 40,000 pounds, yeah? We are 3,714 pounds away from that. If there is someone out there who can, who is the heavy hitter, if somebody can, look, if, if somebody is able to, if somebody donates 2,500 pounds, 2,500 pounds can teach 250 to 750, up to, from 250 minimum to 750 maximum, people how to do wudu, how to pray salah, and also memorize surah fatiha. Brothers and sisters, imagine Quran, Wudu, and Salah. Brothers and sisters, I'm highly, highly encouraging you guys, inshallah. Please give whatever you can. If there's a heavy hitter, you can get us to reach that target faster, inshallah. So guys, wallahi, we are having some amazing donations coming through. Another nine euros. Bismillah. Let's go, guys. Wallahi, I would love to see if there is someone out there who has the means. Wallahi, believe me, this is a sadaqah jariah. This, brothers and sisters, one later. But if you can, if not, go, go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Plenty on the plenty, inshallah, brothers. If you're watching this, bismillah, let's go. Bismillah, let's go, guys. Allahu Akbar, guys. We are 706 pounds away now. 706 pounds. Let me tell you something 700 pounds will teach 70 to 210 people how to do wudu, how to pray salah, and also the Quran. Yeah, Quran, Surah Fatiha, brothers and sisters. So, whatever you guys are doing, inshallah, give whatever you can. And inshallah, if there are heavy hitters, I want to talk to the big hitters as well, inshallah. Even for the small, wallahi, any deed, one pound, two pounds, five pounds. Brothers and sisters, look at the intention behind the amount you give. Don't look at the amount. Look at the intention. Because that, in on your Muqtama, our deeds are going to be weighed, not counted. It's not going to be like somebody gave 10,000 and it's going to be like how many units he gave. It's counted, which means what? Somebody gives a pound. 
with the sincere intentions, it could weigh heavier than somebody who gave a million pounds. It's your Qiyamah, brothers and sisters, these are going to be weighed, not counted. So please, guys, inshallah, if you're watching this, I'm heavily going to focus on this fundraiser, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, those donations are coming. Guys, I need to focus, inshallah, on this. Another Haidar Ali. Yeah, Haidar Ali is back. Come on. 100 pounds, inshallah. Uh, we've got another 10 pound donation. Let's see if Brother Abdullah Ali is uh, in the scene, if he's watching this. All right, we're just now 596 pounds away from our 37,000 pound mark. We do want to hit the 40,000 pound mark, guys. We are just, just over three and a half thousand pounds away. If there is someone out there who has the means to give that, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi, believe me, brothers, you can come to our studios. I will show you exactly where the funds are going. I will tell you, look, it's going to this project. Look, we print in 20,000 of this. Do you know how much it costs the charity? It costs us 126,000 pounds to print 20,000 of these. Now, why are we doing this? Because so many people are coming to Islam, guys. If you are a new Muslim, you can go and order this, brothers and sisters, on our website, salahplus.com. Go and order your guided prayer mat, inshallah. It's for free. If it's abroad, international, you pay a uh, postage fee. If it's national in the UK, we pay for it and cover it ourselves. So, guys, if you're watching this, please, please, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give whatever you can. Like I said before, our target today is 30, I mean, it's 40,000 pounds, inshallah, yeah? So, Nima Yusuf, 10 Canadian dollars. We just had a 250 Canadian dollars donation, 10 pounds. Amazing, guys. Wallahi, we are on our way, inshallah, to reach, we are 435 pounds away. 435 pounds away from our next target. Alhamdulillah, amazing, guys. Amazing. 10 pounds, 20 euros, alhamdulillah. How is it, how is it for you to start? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, mashallah. Guys, let's go, inshallah. Bismillah. Bismillah. <clears throat> let's go, guys. If there is somebody who can give a thousand pounds, I've said, obviously, it's for the sake of Allah, and it will teach 100 to 300 people how to pray salah. I will jump in the ice bath with my clothes on. For the sake of Allah. Come on, you're not ready for that. <laughs> I'll be in the ice bath. No, no. Ah, uh, he's back. I cannot believe it. Yeah. He's back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I told you. He came for you, not me. He came for, he came for you, not me. <laughs> Bismillah. Guys, Alhamdulillah is doing amazing. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Guys, we are 216, 316 pounds away. 316 pounds away. Brothers and sisters, let's go and show We have 360. Of course, brother. What do you think this is, brother? What do you think this is, brother? <laughs> of course, I am. Yes, alhamdulillah. Guys, if you're what watching was the, the target for today, 40,000. So we have 316 pounds. Dishan, can we do it? Inshallah, definitely. Inshallah. I believe in these people. Do you believe in me, Dishan? I believe I can fly. <laughs> I got shot by the FBI. <laughs> guys, let's go 316 pounds away, guys. We've got hijab here, we've got the whole team. We've got the whole team here, guys. Let's go. Is there someone out there who can give a thousand pounds? A thousand pounds. Can we have just two people to give a thousand pounds? You know what I'm looking for, guys? Two people to give a thousand pounds. Two people to give five hundred pounds. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, guys. This guys. Three hundred. Three hundred sixteen pounds. Three hundred sixteen pounds. 316 pounds. Let's go. Let's go. Bismillah. Okay. 303 pounds. No, 307 pounds. 307 pounds. Let's go. Bismillah. And, and Haramiya, 20 New Zealand dollars. <coughs> Somebody just gave 50 pounds. Ali needs dawah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah, Allah always keep his need in dawah. Ahmad about 64 US dollars. 10 pounds. Let's go, guys. Let's get these donations coming in. Oh, perfect. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. We're having some 50 SGD. Well, that's I don't know what that is. That's Singaporean. Guys, we I you know what? Well, I believe guys we're gonna reach the 40,000 pound mark today. I'm here till 1 a.m. No problem, brothers and sisters. No problem. All day, every day. Plenty under plenty. Guys, let's go. 269 pounds. 269 pounds. Allahu Akbar, we need it there. We need it there. Bismillah, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Give me the link. I'll give you the link. I'll give you the link. I'll give you the link. Somebody goes to Surat al Straight, bro. I'm on the straight. Javi. Where's Javi? Where's Javi? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, guys. Inshallah. Let's go, guys. Bismillah. 269 pounds away. 
Allah. Aki Amen gave me Ijazah on my haircut. That's it. Say no more. Let's go. What did I say? He gave me Ijazah and it's good. Oh, yeah, I give it, give it, alhamdulillah. Khalas. Khalas. So no one can say nothing to me. No one can say nothing to me, bro. I got the tick from Aki Amen. Let's go. Bismillah. Guys, let's go, inshallah. If you're watching this, it's a Sadaqa Jari program, guys. 20,000 being printed. Send it off around the world, inshallah. Nishan. Nishan. Where's Jabi? Plenty on the plenty. Let's go, guys. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar, guys. Allahu Akbar. Um, can we get one person? 135 euros. 130 euros from Asia. Asia. Bismillah. We are 148 pounds away. 148 pounds. Is that Junaid? Where's Junaid? <laughs> Bismillah, guys. Allah Akbar. 100 pounds away. 100 pounds away from our target. We just got 98 Australian dollars from Razik Khan. From Razik Khan, guys. Bismillah. We are 3,100 pounds away. Yeah. From the target, inshallah, 3,100. Dishan, the camera is turned to me. So, okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, okay. Bismillah. Guys, let's go. We are 96 pounds away. Guys, 96 pounds. Guys, wallahi, is there one person that can give 3,000 pounds? 3,000 pounds can teach anywhere from 100, 300 people. 300, you do uh, a car, uh, stuff for a lot of guys. Free, 300, 300 to 900 people have to pray salah. 300 to 900 people have to pray salah. Bismillah, <laughs> guys. We are 96 pounds away, 96 pounds away from our target. Just so you know, guys, imagine teaching someone how to pray salah, how to do wudu, how to memorize the Quran, sort of fatia. Every new Muslim and born Muslim. That, that would be amazing. Alhamdulillah. Of course, it would be amazing, Zishan. Zishan is one of our staunch supporters. Staunch supporters. Alhamdulillah. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Bismillah. <laughs> okay. We've got a donation of one pound. Five euros. This is amazing, Zishan. Allah Akbar. It is. Zishan, what are what you having? Mike, what a danger. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, let's go. Bismillah, guys. I'm looking for the heavy hitters. Allah Akbar, we're on 37,000. 37,000. Somebody just donated 200 US dollars. They heard you say Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Where's Jabi gone? <laughs> Nisbi. Atimad Hussein. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Guys, we are on our way to the 38,000 pound mark. Bro, I believe we're going to reach 43. Inshallah. Why is this guy here? What happened? Why is this guy here? What happened? I'm having a serious conversation. Why am I laughing? I'm making this laugh. Good English. What's the truth, though? I came here from Iraq at the age of nine years old. What's the yeah. English, bro? Yeah. When did you come to this country? 2002. Oh, okay. So you were born here. How old, how old was you? How old was you? I was nine years old. Uh, I came when I was like one or two years old. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, English is good. No, same as mine, but my English is Janaza, bro. <laughs> Speaking of slap of the gully, <laughs> what, what are you doing now, Ali? What's happening? Well, I'm fundraising, lucky. I'm trying to reach 40,000 pounds. Uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm just fundraising. It was with the brothers, they were eating. I didn't want to disturb them, so I'm just fundraising. But yeah, if you guys need to do something, like it's, it's yeah, 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 let's go. Bismillah, Bismillah, let's go, guys. Let's go. We're on our way to 38,000 pounds. We're on our way to 38,000 pounds. Ishan, can we reach this? Inshallah. Let's go. Let's go. Bismillah. Bismillah. Allah Bro, I keep I keep thinking my man is in the building. Who's banging the table? <laughs> I think he's gonna give me a reminder. Let me turn around. Yeah, you're enough. Come on, that's it. No, we need that, bro. He keeps the donations coming. Let's go. Why not? Bismillah. Let's go, guys. Let's go, guys. Okay, guys. So let's go. Thirty-seven thousand one hundred seventy-five pounds. We are two thousand. 825 pounds away 2825 pounds away guys if we reach 40,000 pounds we're gonna do search the sugar inshallah bismillah bismillah let's go guys let's go let's go guys are there some top hitters guys guys those donations wallahi you know what that shows when we come together as an ummah wallahi guys look has 30 canadian dollars 64 us dollars 10 pounds 
Miss B Tria. Let's go. Bismillah. Bismillah. Let's go. Let's go. 808 pounds. 808 pounds. Ishan, what do you think about this? Oh, man. <laughs> Brilliant. Abdul, where's Jabi? He's still praying. <laughs> That's why the donations are coming in, bro. <laughs> Bismillah, guys. Come on. Come. 808 pounds. 808 pounds. We just have a pledge of 10,000 pounds from uh, Junaid. <laughs> Can we turn the camera to his face, please? <laughs> then, then now... <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, let me, two, when, when, when we talk about hosting, two people come to my mind when I talk about hosting. Junaid and Sheikh Mohammed. These people, inshallah, are lying to them to Jannah just by their hosting. To get their, just by their hosting, I will testify that Allah is the best host. He puts up with us and he feeds us the best. You know what? He feeds us with his own hands. Some people just order. He will go and say, no, 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 this string is not good enough. He'll go upstairs and make it specifically and come back. With... Yeah, yeah, I know. And he, he advised the... He's, he's also uh, Andrew Tate's coach behind the scenes. Uh, 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 Junaid. Junaid he, he helps our halal game uh, be on point, inshallah. <laughs> so, let's go, inshallah. Okay, guys. Dishan, we just had another amazing donation. 50 pounds. 20 US dollars, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, 15 pounds. Bismillah. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. Guys, we are 698 pounds away. 698 pounds away, guys. Bismillah. Guys, today we are going to reach 40,000, inshallah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go. Let me see how many people are watching. Let me see how many people are watching. Bismillah. Let's go. Guys, we've got about 1,000 people watching. Bismillah. Bismillah. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Bismillah, guys. Allahu Akbar. Guys, we're doing phenomenal. The donations are coming in so fast. Wallahi, may Allah bless you, guys. I'm for one person. One person to give a thousand pounds. That would teach a hundred to three hundred people how to pray salah. Two people to give five hundred pounds. Two people. Bismillah. Let's go. Let's go. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah. Let's go, guys. Michael Guzzling. M Michelle Guzelin, look, look, even new Muslims, oh, look, Allah, Michelle Guzelin. Yeah. You know why these are new Muslims probably understand the struggle of praying salah. And look, we have a lot of viewers that give to our donation. Uh, you know why? Because they understand the struggles of, of not knowing how to pray salah. Let's go, let's go. Never, bro, never. That iman never makes me tired. Let's go, Bismillah. Let's go, guys. Guys, Bismillah. Let's go, inshallah. Okay, guys, we are just, I would say, six hundred and seventy-three pounds away. 673 pounds 673 pounds bismillah guys one person to give a thousand pounds two people to give 500 pounds 500 pounds can teach from um 50 to 150 people how to pray salah a thousand pounds can teach 100 to 300 people how to do wudu how to pray salah and recite surah fatiha zishan what do you think about this project wallahi you know um i try my best you know <laughs> let's go Bismillah, let's go. Where's Chabi? He's still praying. He's still praying. He's still praying. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Okay, guys. We are 2,670 pounds away. 2,670 pounds away. Three pounds. Bismillah. Bismillah, guys. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. We are nearly on our target, guys. Let's go, guys. We can reach this before half 12, inshallah. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, guys. Let's go. 670 pounds away. 670 pounds away, guys. Bismillah, guys. Let's go. Let's go. We can do this, guys. Salah plus project. We'll teach people how to pray salah step by step, inshallah, guys. You see this guy to pray mat? We're printing 20,000 of these. Why? To teach people how to pray salah, guys. This is not Aladdin's. You don't fly around. It's not made out of silk. It doesn't recline chair. Guys, come on. Bismillah. Guys, let's go. Guys, let's go. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. Let's go, guys. Always, let's go. We are 670 pounds away, guys. We're looking for 10 people to give 100 pounds. How many people are watching, Jabba? 900 people. Alhamdulillah, guys. We are just 2,670 away. Jabi, Jabi, write this. We are 2,670 pounds from our target. Let's go. Let's go. Bismillah. And also, yeah, if you want, you can maybe turn it around. Maybe the brothers, I think they finished eating. Uh, we can join them, Jabi, inshallah, slowly, and give some reminders. Guys, we are very, very close to our target. You know what? We're just 
2,670 pounds. Allah Akbar. Yeah, if anyone, you know there's some heavy hitters. There's yeah. some heavy hitters, inshallah. Whatever they can give, brothers and sisters. We're here with uh, Ustad, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless him, inshallah. There's some yeah. chaps, mashallah. There's some chaps. There's some Shabby. chaps around out Shabby. there, mashallah. You, you, We're not speaking about hijab, may Allah bless Come on, come on, come on. Allah Akbar. Come on, come on. <laughs> the real chap. The real chap. Come on. Let's go, guys, inshallah. I'm slowly, slowly checking it. If you guys have any questions for Ustad, wow, wow. Somebody just made a donation, Ustad. Let me recite an A about Salah. Please. Hafsa Khan just gave 100 pounds. Allah Akbar. Allah bless him. And STA Shar gave 105 Allah, New, uh, New Zealand dollars. Allah bless him. Mohammed Suhail, 15 pounds. Can Allah bless him. Can you recite Ustad? Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about Sadaqah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu anfiqu min ma razaqanakum min qabl min qabl an ya'tiya yawmul la bay'un fihi wa la khullatu wa la shafa'ah Allah says oh you who believe O oh, you Muhammad, O oh, you Aisha, O oh, you Abdullah, O oh, you Khadija, O oh, you who believe, whoever you are, spend of that which we have provided you, Allah provided you. Before there comes to one of you a day where there'll be no bargaining, no friendship, no intercession. Meaning that your sadaqah is going to be your friend. Your sadaqah is going to bargain with you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ensure that you enter Jannah. Your sadaqah is going to intercede for you to ensure that you are kept away from the wrath of Allah and the anger of Allah and admitted into paradise. That is enough of a reason for you to give and give and give and give. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Bilal, Ya Bilal, أنفق ولا تخشى من ذي العرش إقلالة. Oh Bilal, give. And don't fear from the one who owns the heavens and the earth, the majestic throne, any demise, any loss. Allah is going to multiply your wealth. This is an Islamic concept that when you give sadaqah, when you give charity yeah. your wealth does not decrease despite the fact that it may look like it and it may seem so but really allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies your wealth and that's what allah says in the quran who is the one that would loan allah a goodly loan so that Allah would multiply it for him many times. Allah would wow. multiply your wealth, brothers and sisters. What are we on? It's an update. We are nearly on our way to 38,000 pounds. MashaAllah. And Ustaz SubhanAllah, we know Sadaqah is a Burhan. Yes. Sadaqah gets in the way of calamity. Yes. The Prophet said, cure your sick with Sadaqah. And Sadaqah will make you poor. Yes. SubhanAllah. What about the ayah in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala talks about a person who being taken? Allah. Does he want to come back for Salah? Nope. Hajj? No. Nope. Umrah? No. Nope. Fasting. No. What does he want to come back for? He wants to come back for and we're here. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and spend of that which we have provided you. Before that comes to one of you, death, death, the reality. فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ And he would say, oh Allah, if only you gave me a respite. Oh Allah, if only you returned me back to this world. Oh Allah, if you only gave me a moment to live. Listen to what he would say. Because remember, he's gone. He's transitioned now into the afterlife. He's seen. He's seen the unseen. He's seen the reality of the worth of good deeds. So listen to what he says. He wants to come back into this world so he could do what? Does he say so I can fast? Does he say so I can pray? Does he say so I can perform hajj? Does he say so I can be good to those who oppress me? No, he said. So that I can give sadaqah, oh Allah. Send me back so I can give sadaqah and be amongst the righteous. Being righteous, you being close to Allah is you giving sadaqah. Exactly. And when, when you give, not only are you giving a sadaqah, brothers and sisters, you're helping teach someone how to do wudu. Alhamdulillah. You're helping teach someone how to pray salah, which is tawheed. This is what tawheed is. Not only that, surah fatiha. Surah fatiha, brothers and sisters, imagine we are equipping that. And imagine, brothers and sisters, that person, every time he does wudu, you're being rewarded. You taught him. Every time he prays salah, you're being rewarded. Every time he recites surah fatiha, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, you are being rewarded, brothers and sisters. It is a true form of sadaqah jariya. And wallahi, I genuinely believe in this project, brothers and sisters. And we want to make this a worldwide project. We want to open Salah Hubs all around Europe. 
Let people they know in France, in Germany, in Denmark, in Netherlands, in Switzerland, Norway, wherever it is, there's salah hubs. You go there, you get your guided prayer mat, you're a new Muslim. Yeah. This is look, we know the struggles. I know the struggles when I came to Islam to learn Surah Fatiha, not knowing how to pray salah, making it wrong, being put off, just accepted, all this kind of waswasa shaitan gives you so you don't pray. What do you guided prayer mat? Free. Free, F-R-E-E. -E. Why? Because you guys are donating. Somebody came and said, how much is it? We said, it's free. Oh, oh yeah. they said, oh, wow, they were amazed. They said, okay, so how much is for the instructor? I said, the instructor's free. Allah the Allah. workshop is free. Allah. Yes, and we're also building a new app, a brand new app. We don't have it already. Why? Because you can go there and book a, a Salah instructor. You can go there and order a guided prayer mat. You can go there and find your local Salah hub. And a brother says, says, wallahi, imagine not only that, you want to learn how to uh, uh, recite the Quran, uh, memorize Surah Fatiha, we have Quran coaches that we're going to dedicate that their job is going to be different parts of the week. You join the Zoom, they give you a link. You join it all together, Surah Fatiha. All together, learn. Imagine you are responsible for that, bro. And, sister, Allah, Allah, and Allah, Allah. I believe we will reach this target by today. I genuinely believe we will reach, inshallah. Inshallah, ta'ala. Look, alhamdulillah, we are just 2,204 pounds away. Is that it? Just 2,204 pounds, bro. Who's gonna Who's gonna take the initiative? Come on, who's gonna take the Who's the man out there? Where's yeah. who, What's What's your guy's name? Uh, what Salam? No, no, your what? guy's name. Your guy. Salam. Who's my guy? The one who donates. Oh, oh, Abdullah Ali. We got this one brother. Mashallah. Allah. In total, he's donated maybe seven or eight thousand pounds. Allah. He's He's like any time he just comes in 500, Allah. 400. We need the yes. Abdullah Ali. Today. <laughs> yeah, Inshallah. Allah. Inshallah. Allah. And the target. the target, bro, we are just two thousand two hundred pounds away. Inshallah. 2,200 pounds. Oh, no, we're not. Wow, we went up Somebody now. just donated, Ustad. Those Quran recitations. Allah Somebody just donated 300 pounds. Allah 300 pounds will teach 30 to 90 people wudu, salah, and surah fatiha. And inshallah, ikhlas, falak, and nas. Promise wow. inshallah, yeah? Somebody wow. just donated 300 pounds. And who was it from? An anonymous. Okay, Mashallah. we've just got under 2,000 pounds, bro. We're 1,904 pounds away. Allah yeah? One, and let me tell you something about Zishan. Zishan is very particular to the organization he works with. And I don't blame him for that. He's very careful to the humanitarian charities. Um, he's very careful even with this stuff, yeah. And he's very and yeah, he does due diligence, okay. Not that he knows me, yeah, because even if it's me, he'll say, Bro, look, yes, yeah, so I respect that, etc. But you know, he knows wallahi when we started this project to him believing it, subhanallah. And he knows he comes and sees as well what we're doing, inshallah. And believe me, wallahi, these projects I spoke to Sheikh Osman Farouk from uh San Diego, we're sending it to his Dao table, mashallah. SQ from New York, we're sending it to his Dao table, yeah. Recently, in uh, Hyde Park Dao table. We want to make sure every dawah table has these prayer packs. Allah Inshallah, we're even aiming of having like a specific stand. They just put it there. People just come and get it. And not only that, not just the guided prayer mat. If you look, I don't know where the package is gone. Oh, there it is. Behind it, we have our website. Yeah. Soon we're going to have an app. You know what that means? You don't You don't just have the salah mat. Go and book your instructor. Go get a sister. You're a sister. You want to learn how to pray salah. You book it. Our sister team contact you. Let's book a session and teach you how to pray salah. If it's If you're in London... We will make sure physically one of our sisters come to you in a masjid, learn how to pray salah. Nice. Not only that, our sister team is busy. You have salah workshops, hubs throughout the week. In we started in East London Masjid every Saturday, 3 p.m. If I'm not mistaken, salah uh, courses, salah hub uh, workshop for sisters. Nice. You can just go there. You go your guided prayer mat. They'll give you one if you don't have it. Put it in front of you. Start praying. This is tawheed. What makes Islam different to Christians claim monotheism? Hindus claim monotheism. They got one million gods. The Jews claim monotheism. What makes Islam unique is we worship Allah alone. We single out Allah in his worship. We don't go for the Prophet ﷺ. We don't go for anybody. We worship Allah directly. That is what makes Islam unique, inshallah. So guys, our brother Jabi, may Allah bless and preserve him. This guy, you know where is he? Mm -hmm. This guy is a champ. Mashallah. His wife gave birth. Allah yes, Allah. like about a week or two weeks ago. May Allah bless the child, inshallah. I mean, Wallahi, I mean. look, he's here. Alhamdulillah, he's behind the scenes. Alhamdulillah, he's mashallah. making sure. Let me tell you something. Anytime ask this guy, I've never heard the no from him. SubhanAllah. I've never heard him say, bro, I can't, this, that, etc. Wallahi, let me tell you something. I feel embarrassed sometimes because sometimes my hands are tied. I'm like, bro, I need you. Wallahi, may Allah bless and preserve him. These kind of brothers and the whole team, not just him, Dawood, the, the, the brothers behind him, Alhamdulillah, Mehmet, may Allah bless and preserve all of mm. them. Wallahi, let me tell you something. It, 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 it requires courage and like this organization means so much to them, brothers and sisters. They come here, look, it's nearly 1 a.m. He was supposed to go at 12. And if I reach his target, I just want to send him as well, inshallah. But obviously, give for the sake of Allah, guys. We're just 1,817 pounds away. 1,817 pounds away, Jabi, inshallah, yeah? So, guys, whatever you give, I know there is one person that can give that. I know there is one person. Well, and you know, there might be even three people. Let me tell you something, yeah? Like this. Inshallah, whatever Allah wills.
We do live appeals in Iman Shana. Yeah. Me and him, we have a special Iman Shana. Yeah, yeah, you never no, understand no, no, it. No, People see I'm normal. It's, it's, it's love towards each other. Very yeah? good. I'll increase you in love. Yeah. I mean, uh, start. Like for us, even like for example, when it comes to uh, humanitarian courts, we do in Iman Shana. We always present it together. Yeah, mm. it's absolutely an honor to present with you. May Allah bless and preserve you, inshallah. Is that, wallahi, one thing I noticed is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people think when we're giving sadaqah that, you know, I'm. I need wealth to give a sadaqah. Mm. I just take my card out and I give. Wallahi, mm. it's by Allah's tawfiq. Right. There are people who are multi-millionaires, they don't give a charity. Right. This is not a matter of how much money you have. This is not a matter of I'll go to my wallet and take my card out and give. Allah handpicks. Right. When I see a person of sadaqah, I ask him, what is your secret? What is it that you... Just, there's something about you, brother. It's not something, oh, I don't... No. So Whoa. to me, Allah can choose to give it through one person. What we say is this. Even when it comes to our dawah, Allah does not need me for the dawah to meet rich. Allah needs nobody. Well, I heard of story, I hear a story of people coming to Islam through a dream. Allah doesn't need any of us. You know what we want? Oh Allah, your dawah is already going to reach that. Let it reach my hands, please. I just want the reward. Sadaqah is going to reach that person you've written it. Can it just touch my hands when it goes there? That is what we want, guys. We just want it to reach through us and we get the reward. And the same goes with you guys. Wallahi, believe me, Allah has his servants that could give like this. 5,000. It might take maybe 475 people to give 5,000. Mm. Allah will send one of his servants and say, listen, we don't need any of that. One person will do it. It's that problem. Says, so when you're asking and when you're giving, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah, that Allah enables you to give in salah inshallah. This is something Allah enables. So guys, we are literally round the corner. May Allah bless and preserve 1, you 1,700 pounds away. Literally, away, send hard hammer, 20 pounds. Miss S. Iqbal, 50 pounds. Anonymous donations. Korab, 50 pounds. Abdul Qadir Khan, 10 US dollars. Okay, we are 1,703 pounds away. MashaAllah. 1,703 pounds away, inshallah. Ustaz, so you guys, so Iman Shah appears, what, what time do they start? No, they start They're a bit early, but I only, only do it with uh, Ayira. Oh, MashaAllah. Is Ayira there today? Ayira, Ayira, no, no, oh, okay. it's not there today. Ayira mashallah. and then there's a few others, just mashallah, one mashallah. GRF and the Sabah. Alhamdulillah. Ayira, uh, Sabah. Yeah. They're doing amazing work, alhamdulillah. Wallahi, Ayra is doing brilliant work, inshallah. And you know, support them as well, brothers and sisters. Even, even brothers and sisters, the fact is that just being on this platform is all for the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in Islam, we believe in a profound statement and something that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi taught us, and that was la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That there's no power nor might except with Allah, no capability. Meaning that if I lift up this cup and I drink, it's only by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah gives you tawfiq to go to the masjid to pray salatul isha and get the reward of praying half the night just by attending that prayer, that's because Allah gave you the ability to do so. It's not because of you. It's not because of you. It's because Allah gave you the ability to do so. And these are from the things that will humble us in this world. That we know that all of the actions that we do is only for the tawfiq of Allah that we've done it. That our actions anyway that we do would not be the means for us to enter Jannah. But rather, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, but rather for us not to be complacent with our faith. For there were verily people that witnessed the Prophet in their face and they renegated. They went back on their faith. They went back on their religion. We here, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah. And that's why I was mentioning a profound statement. Imam al Dhabi, he written a book, a profound book, when he spoke about the pious predecessors. He said that Abdullah bin Umar, the son of Umar al Khattab, he used to speak about a man and, and, and praise him so much in his gatherings. It turns out that in the latter part of his life, this man, he slipped up and he died as a disbeliever. May Allah protect us from that. And that's why it, the, the scholar who wrote this book, he said a dua, Allahumma la taftina fi deenina ba'da id hadaytana. Oh Allah, don't trial us in our religion after you've guided us. That is the greatest thing for you to have iman. For, what does iman mean though? What does Allah say iman? And what does Allah say the believers are? Who does Allah say? He says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Those who establish the prayer, that's what we're trying to do now, to help people establish the prayer and spend of that which you have provided them. What does Allah say about them? أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّا they are the true believers. They are stamped with Allah as being believers. Not anyone can proclaim Islam. Yeah. Anyone can say that they're Muslim. Matter of fact, there were people that came at the time Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Qalati al-A'rabu amanna. The Bedouins say, we believe our messenger of Allah. Allah said, because he knew what was in the people's heart. Qul lam tu'minu walakin qulu aslamna. Don't say we believe, but rather say you have submitted. Because Iman hasn't entered in your heart. What is true Iman? That you give. Lan tanalu al-birra hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibbun. Allah says you will not believe until you spend of that which you love. We love our wealth. 
We love our time. We love our sustenance. We love the bounties that Allah has given us. Spend it in the path of Allah. And the scholars say here, you would not attain Jannah until you spend of that which you love. Where's Jannah, Sheikh? Where's Jannah? Tell oh, come here, you tell us. Tell come here, you tell us. Come, come here, you tell us. Ah. We are 1,644 pounds away. Let me be honest. Wallahi, I didn't know. I heard you brothers will come do something with hijab. Mashallah. But Wallahi, should I tell you something? I thought I'm going to be doing this alone. Your presence, may Allah preserve Mashallah. you guys. The presentation we, to we the to thing. You, Same with Zishan. May Allah bless you guys. Wallahi, Ameen. Ameen. it was a unexpected uh, live. But Wallahi, let me be honest. Ameen. Alhamdulillah, Allah put barak in it. And the Quran, the, 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 it's the best that could have uh, ever happened. Subhanallah. So you talked about Jannah. Uh, uh, Aki Amen. May Allah bless you. Preserve you, inshallah. Uh, when it comes to it, when, did you, when would you say you started praying like Salah? Like when it was like... like like salah, not salah, like salah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Um, myself and my, like, we, we've always been people that used to pray, but sometimes the roads gets in the way of distracting you from salah and so on and so forth. But we've never ever left of salah. But when I did take the deen seriously, is when I was in prison. Prison sentence wasn't the reason why I changed. It wasn't like, oh, Allah put me in this place now where I got a change now. No. What got me to change? So, just talking about prison, we are supplying this guided prayer mask to a specific prison. Um, we got a, a request from a bad way here. Allahu Akbar. Here, Allahu, here, Allahu here, Akbar. The Imam, he contacted us and said, We have a lot of Muslims. Oh. We send us this. My brother, yeah. if you're saying this, I have a database of more than, I think about 300 so Muslims. Yeah? yeah? yeah. I, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give this. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. Send me the location, bro. Yes. And I'll be right. Carry on, yeah. Carry on, like you're um, so so we never left it, but there was there was this one occasion, and it was the only occasion where the whole sentence I was in prison, my mother never saw me, but she kept on trying to book a visit, book a visit. I kept on declining it, and someone uh, she, who was upsetting her. So when I booked a visit, and then when I saw my mother being searched, I said, "Yeah, long day, man. Man can't get my mom in her modesty in her hijab." Not just a headscarf, no, hijab, head to toe, modesty, to get searched the way she did and then told to go to a separate room just to take off her hijab to see if she's got anything underneath her hijab that she's been in it. I said, I can't let my mom go through this. That's when I said, you know what? I made the oath to Allah that same day. I went back to myself. After the visit, I made the oath to myself and Allah that I'm never, ever going to go back to prison. And I'm never, ever going to try and displease my parents. And then from that day onwards, I said, mom, I still got about 12 months left. There's about a year left of my sentence. Yeah. I said, Mom, you're not coming to visit me no more. And she was crying and upset. And I was like, no, you can't. I can't let you go through the system like this. So that's when I changed, actually. And alhamdulillah, I took the deal more serious. And yesterday we was at a masjid. The imam of the masjid yeah. was my imam in prison. Oh, wait. Yeah, he was leading. <laughs> he was my imam in prison. And he would be able to tell you, in 14 months of being in that prison, because I was in three different prisons, but in 14 months of being in that prison, not once did I see what Jum'ah looked like because of the amount of problems I had in that jail. I didn't even, like, every time I put my name down for Friday prayer, so Wednesday comes, Wednesday after dinner, you have to put your name down if you're ready to go to Jum'ah. I write down my name every single week, my name's getting crossed because I've got beef with brothers that are Muslims. I don't even have beef with them. But they're jumping on a bandwagon for some kuffar that don't even know how to wash his body in some next area that's got beef with me. That's where the issues just occurred. Like even in my second prison in Glen Parva in Leicester, actually, Jewish Salah got punched in my face by a Muslim. That I'm the Jewish Salah, Allahu Akbar, we're, doing, we're leading Salah to Jum'ah. Jewish Salah, I'm thinking, what's this, bro? The Muslim gossip. But the first prison I went to, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood there, they are untouchable. HMP Haidam. That's inside. That's actually not far from it. That prison, there was the one way, Amir. Inshallah. <laughs> yeah, man. Because HMP Haidan, we had one brother called Khalid. He was the Amir of the prison. For the Muslims, he was the Amir. If, if two Muslims had beef with each other from the streets and they're both in prison, he'll put you both in the cell and tell you you need to squash your beef. I don't care if you're going to kill yourselves on the road. But in prison, we show unity and strength. So you got to put your differences aside. And if you don't, you're both going to get smacked over. Wallah, he's a G. And my mom was in jail for like 11, 12 years already. One black brother, so he's a revert. But I don't know if he revered in jail or not. But the, the etiquette, but he had etiquette of a sergeant. 
like a general. Did they have, have to pay for prayer mats in prison? Or did it kind of just in prayer mats, you have a canteen sheet yeah. where if you don't come to prison yeah. with a prayer mat such as your Muslim, you have to order it on the canteen sheet. You have to pay them, right? Yeah, of course you have to pay. You have to pay in no, prison. These, these, these will be free, so they won't charge That's what I'm trying to say to you. Exactly. So that's amazing. Mohammed Afaq gave 87 Canadian dollars. Allahu Akbar. 173 Canadian dollars. Allahu Akbar. Massive, 50 pounds, inshallah. So we're just 1,483 pounds. 63 pounds away, bro. Allah May Allah bless you. We're nearly there, inshallah. We've got 18 minutes. I think we can do it. I think one person, if you can the means, inshallah, they can give it. We're just under 50. Let me tell you where the barakah comes in, akhi. The barakah comes in when I have to shake your hand because I have to go. 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 I have promised my word for someone. Allah. Hey. 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 Allah. You know this. Hello. Hello. Hey, yeah. like a somebody. Allah bless you, I mean, I mean, Allah bless you. I mean. Hello. 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 So just tell them last, last count. Yeah, right, we guys, we're just one thousand four hundred. I never even answered with your numbers. So I don't know why. One thousand four hundred sixty-three pounds away, shall I guys? Whatever you get, let's do it. What's this? Come on, let's do it. Let's go. We do. Yeah. Uh, bro, if it's if it's if it's possible, can you just get uh, Akim just talking, just staying? Yeah. Uh, Salah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, just just there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, inshallah, barakallah fiq, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Yes, guys. Yes, inshallah, guys. So you know, you know, Ustad, that before, before you go, Ustad, if you think about it, yeah, what is going to be the one is the most hateful thing to uh, shaitan? What is one thing he didn't do? He refused to do. He refused to bow, to, to worship Allah, to bow down to Allah. To How do you think he's going to feel when there's people who are trying to get people to do such that? Yeah, he, he would feel <laughs> the most hatred in his heart ever. Exactly. And that's why shaitan... His 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 goal is to divert us away from salah. Yes. Allah says that in Quran. He says he says on the tongue of shaitan. Yani he says that that indeed I will give them false hopes and I will command them. And he goes inna that indeed it's shaitan. Yani he what he prevents you from praying salah and giving zakah. This is shaitan. If you find that you're not praying or giving in sadaqah. That is something from the Amal is Shaitan. Mm -hmm. Amal is Shaitan. So, brothers and sisters, these prayer mats, yes. we need just uh, 1,453 pounds, inshallah. Donate, donate, donate. Inshallah. And don't be late, brothers and sisters, inshallah. We're starting. You're going to go? You're I'm going to go, yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave you too, inshallah. Allah, inshallah. Allah. Allah bless you. Great pleasure. Allah, 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 Allah honor you. Inshallah. Guys, here, uh, Junaid. Junaid, half an hour, I'm done. Half an hour, I'm done, inshallah. <laughs> okay, guys, if you're watching this, we are. Junaid, you, Junaid, they need to see your face. Come, inshallah. <laughs> Guys, we're just 1,453 pounds away. Now, we just need three people to give 100 pounds or 15 people to give 100 pounds. Yeah? Okay, if we get three people to give 500 pounds, guys, it can... Teach. Jabi, can I have the camera on me? Yeah. Plenty on the plenty, Jabi. Okay. No, no, it's okay. Did you put the, the, the new thing? Let's go, guys. Let's go. Alhamdulillah. We're getting closer, closer. Abdul Nasir, who gave subhanAllah, anonymous 10 Canadian dollars, 10 pounds. Every little helps, guys. Wallahi, it does. And this is towards our Salah Plus project, guys. We are nearly on the 40,000 pound mark. This guided kind of prayer, man. Imagine somebody learns how to pray the entire Salah because of your donation. Because of your donation, guys. Look, this is what it is. Listen, man, I'm going to hold this like it's, it's, you know, these boxes. They have these, you know, undefeated belts and stuff like that. Look. I'm going to hold this here like on my shoulders. What? What? I'm proud of this, guys. Let's go, inshallah. Bismillah. Let's get some heavy donations, guys. I know there are people out there who can give big amounts. How many people watching, bro? 800 people. Plenty on the plenty. If 800 people, bro, gave two pounds, we'll reach that target instantly. I know there is someone out there who can do a heavy hitter. We're just 1,447 pounds. Guys, let's go. Bismillah. Wallahi, guys. Guys, we have got literally, guys, wallahi. Please, please, inshallah, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, guys, inshallah. We are literally, let's do this bit by bit. We're just 447 pounds away from our next target. I need four people to give 100 pounds, guys. Four people to give 800 pounds, inshallah. Bismillah. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Whatever you guys can give, inshallah, really appreciate. It goes towards the Salah Plus project. It goes towards the one-to-one -one instructors to teach sisters and brothers, new Muslim and born Muslims, how to pray Salah, how to do wudu, even Quran coaches to memorize Surah Fatiha, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Nas, Surah Falaq. Not only that, brothers and sisters, it goes towards these guided prayer mats. We are printing twenty thousand of these. Twenty thousand of these guided prayer mats. We want to open Salah hubs 
all around the world. Hello, can you do one with Sneakoff? Where's Sneakoff? Sneakoff's here. Oh, is it? Can you do one? Hello, guys. Hello, hello. Oh, oh, oh. Donate. Oh. How much left? Don't be late. Donate. <laughs> Don't be late. Donate. How much left? Uh, bro, we have got. Zishan is covering the rest. Allah Akbar. <laughs> okay, we are 1,405 pounds away. 1,405 pounds away. Well, Sam, May Allah bless you guys. We had amazing guests, Aki Ayman and Ustad there. It was an all-star, 1,405 pounds. All studied uh, show. Okay, bro, we're 405 pounds away from the 39,000 pound mark, and then we've got 1,000 pounds to go. Bro, we've got literally 43 minutes to go. Do you mm -hmm. know what they say on the road? What do they say on the road, Axe? Plenty on the plenty. Who says that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> guys, oh! Vishan, they're coming, they're coming through. Uh, Jai, we might be here till Fajr. <laughs> 50, 50 Canadian no, no, dollars. Here's, here's the thing. Yeah. 100 pounds, Look, one pound. Here's, here's the thing. A lot, a lot of people, yeah, Tell what, they, what they do is, yeah. for Ramadan, yeah. they, they're looking for opportunities. Yes. I know there's people out there. Opportunity people. No, but, but these are the good opportunities. <laughs> of course, people, it's a good Because what they've done is they've, they've amassed their wealth and they yes. want to give it to certain charities that are worth it. Allah and Allah. there's are you talking about donations coming bro there's loads of different charities that need our attention yes yeah and if you have a roster yeah like they say with friends yes. yeah surround yourself like you are the sum of the top five friends that you have around you yes. have a friend that's good in the gym have a friend that's yeah. good with academic studies yeah. have a friend that's good with the sun well all of them need yeah. to be you know have a basic understanding of yeah. islam but yeah. you know someone that's strong in islam so yes. people Tell different them. various people that are going to benefit you yeah. likewise with the charities you want to put your uh, your wealth in different different causes yes. that you are getting a share of now, what better share than Salah? Honestly, like something like this project, I think it's fantastic. People mm. that are doing Dawah, we probably appreciate it a bit more because when you give Dawah to somebody, it's that struggle of teaching them. And if you can outsource that to somebody else, mm. alhamdulillah, you can, you know, utilize exactly. the energy and, and... We can do the work, but we're happy to do the work. We're just saying, let us do the work, alhamdulillah. And that's very rare. Like, yeah. we don't necessarily have organizations like this. Mm. Um, so the fact that we do, I think it's very important to support them, and especially if you see them doing good work like this, like a prayer mat like that with transliteration on there, that a person can independently do it, and no they can have a, a coach as well. Don't interrupt me when a big man's talking. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. So the remember, guys. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll allow you still. <laughs> so guys, this is very important for you guys to put your share in this and continue putting your share in it um and of, of course alhamdulillah these lives are very entertaining as well and exciting i don't know i haven't seen you know halal live <laughs> lives like this that you've got loads of guests coming in alhamdulillah and i would definitely suggest and recommend you guys to message your family members as well and get them give them this opportunity although the the way this is structured is he's asking Look, who can donate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But really, it should be the other way around. It should be, oh, can we donate? Yeah. When can we donate? Yes. I want to donate this much. Why? Because this is, you know, subhanallah, such an easy way to get deeds. Like, yeah. honestly speaking, all you have to do is facilitate somebody else to do the legwork for you. Yeah. Like, sure. I, I, I and don't we have know. to do it. And we have to do the legwork. Yeah. And subhanallah, the fact that you have to even tell them this mm -hmm. i don't know it's it's surprising but yeah. nevertheless this is the society that we're living in and alhamdulillah you're seeing the prayer match you're seeing the benefit live on these streams of yes. people coming on and accepting bro, so islam many people, for bro, so many people call in and they say we benefited from this like people were like is it the same person? person no it's not maybe it's not. he's changing his voice no nope. Bro, how do you know? You make how do you know up? he's not living in the matrix? Ah, you uh, you're extreme skepticism. <laughs> how do you know I'm here? <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe he's not here. Exactly. Maybe he doesn't exist. One thousand two hundred and seventeen pounds ago. No, but does that exist though? Uh, inshallah, it's from somebody's pocket. It does inshallah. <laughs> One thousand two hundred seventeen pounds is what we're away, guys. Just so to remind you guys, a hundred pounds can teach ten to thirty people how to pray salah. Guide ten to prayer, thirty man. people. Yeah. Ten to thirty. So minimum ten. We're guaranteeing that 10 inshallah mm. up to 30 people, bro, to learn how to pray salah. Not just a guy to pray, man. This is a given. We give this, we send it around the world, inshallah. Yeah, so people can learn in their own pace. If they want to, what if salah, you're in Czechoslovakia? Anywhere, oh, we send it to Latin America, no to, way to one village, bro. Yeah, and it took him three weeks to come because he was in like a remote village. Yeah, three weeks, guys. Yeah, 
We send it around the world, brothers and sisters. Let's go, inshallah. We're just 1,207 pounds away. 1,270 pounds, seven pounds away. Sa Saeed Muhammad, may Allah bless you, inshallah. Guys, our target is 40,000 pounds. We're literally 1,207 pounds away. If somebody, I'm looking for, you know what? If three people, two people give 100 pounds, yeah. 500 pounds, yeah. and one per, and two people give 100 pounds, we'll reach the target. So two people to give 100, 500 pounds, yeah. and two people to give 100 pounds. Or one person to give 1,200 pounds. Yeah, but pounds. to be honest, bro, like, why should they trust you? Let's 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 be honest. That's, like, that's, that's that's a good question, brother and sisters. What makes you different to these other charities? Well, I wouldn't say other charities because I want to put them under the bus, etc. <laughs> but to me, alhamdulillah. Look, well, you want sisters, to or you don't want to? I don't want it to because uh, I'm sure they do good work. So I don't know which charity you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but no, no. Like, what makes you different to them? Different doesn't have to be bad, Ali. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. we're different. We're not bad. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, yeah. So we've got exactly one thousand two hundred pounds. Oh. Dishan, you just need to carry on talking. People are donating. Somebody just gave a hundred pounds. We cast Bashir, Bashir, yeah, secret Muslim for my, for my son. son wow, for my unborn child. Let's go. Seven Allah pounds. An anonymous kind soul, That's 98 amazing. Australian dollars, bro. That means we are just oh, Dishan, just carry on talking, bro. Just yeah, carry, yeah, just carry on talking. Bro. Yeah, so uh, why pounds. should people trust you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like, what makes you different okay. to these? Uh... We have got, bro, we are just <laughs> Javi, you might go home early. We've got eight minutes to go. In eight minutes, we just 951 pounds. That's all we need, 951 pounds. Plenty on the plenty. <laughs> so, bro, myself, look, I'm a trustee. I'm a volunteer. Now, this no, why should mean... they trust you? Just no, because that... you've got trust in your name doesn't mean... I'm a trustee. No, no. I believe in this project, guys. Well, I, I oh, I believe get... in this project. <laughs> Therefore, get... you should donate. I don't get a single penny. Alhamdulillah. Zishan is in this project. Yeah. That's what they should trust me. Yeah. You have something to say to that? Yeah. Mahat Jan is on this project. No, say something, please. Zishan is in the project. <laughs> He's supporting the project. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> just uh, support projects that are waste, man. Uh, 1,031 pounds, bro. Yeah, One person to give a thousand pounds. Yeah, and you know what? This is this is, this is is so important. Like, yeah. Salah is going to be the first thing to be questioned on the Day of Judgment. Yes. Salah is our connection with Allah five times a day. If you're talking about something, you. if you're unsure, like, will this money be accepted or not? Obviously, have the intention, yeah. but when it comes to the cause of Salah, Yes, I mean, Allahu Akbar. This is like, what makes us look. Different. Money and stuff like this is important. Don't get me wrong, yeah. and th we have to do that. Like the people are gonna starve. You yes. know what I mean? They need energy to pray. But if they pass away, as long as they pass away on Iman, Alhamdulillah. And again, yes. I'm not taking away from that. Exactly. But Salah is connection to one's religion. If a person forgoes yeah. Salah, then where's their religion? You know exactly. what I mean? So this is extremely, extremely important to safeguard one salah. And if you pay for a salah mat, not only will you get the reward of teaching that person to pray, yes. facilitating them to pray, yes. then their son, like this person donating exactly. on behalf of their son, then their son learns how to pray, then their son learns how to pray. You can serve an entire generation. Yes. Allahu Akbar. You know what? Yes. Let me let me give a donation talk, right now. Talk to me. Let cash me give right. a donation right now. Is it now. cash? I'm giving cash. Oh, I don't accept cash. I'm giving cash right now. Oh, but I don't accept cash. Shut your mouth. Okay. Yeah. How uh, much? Give me the amount. Like, uh, yeah, how many a, a people? Thousand pound. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, I think I've got. Yeah. You got, you got okay. change for Okay. Let me like this. Yeah. Look, fifty yeah. pounds. If you want to give fifty, fifty pounds will teach five to fifteen people how to pray salah, how to do wudu. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. A uh, ten to thirty people have to pray salah. A uh, five hundred pounds. You uh, should a thousand pounds. Wait, hundred? You said. A hundred pounds will teach ten to thirty people how to pray salah, how to do wudu, uh, thing, uh, and also uh, surah fatih, the new project we're launching in the Quran. But bro, don't give it to me cash, please donate it. No. Then I will transfer it from my account. No. no, no. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. You uh, are you Muslim? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Guys, look at it. Plenty. Now Pl this. Plenty on the plenty. Now this is because put I want to. Yeah, I want to put my money where your mouth is. Don't be among. <laughs> don't be those who call people the good and don't do the do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I need to transfer this from my account. Two, four, six, eight. Ah, oh, there's a fake ten pound there. You try the. <laughs> ah, you caught me. You Two, caught me. four, six, eight, ten. ten. What do we call that, Zabi? Plenty on the. Come on, okay. So, okay. you want me to okay? I need uh, to transfer it one second. You want me to do it like that, yeah? Huh? Like what? Okay, so this is all right, yeah? Yeah, it is. But... Okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll please, transfer please, it online, please. please. Okay. Yeah, please. Oh, I'll so do you're doing 100 pounds cash and 100 pounds online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, guys. Yeah, Allah. bro, <laughs> bro, do that because that means if you so if Zishan gives 179 pounds, 
Yeah. We're just 800 pounds. Whoa, whoa, 100 away. pounds, 100 pounds. That's yeah. what I said, 100 pounds. Said, if Zishan gives 179 pounds, <laughs> he said that, <laughs> no, innit? No, no, no. He said 179 then, no, pounds. There's 79 pounds. If he gives 100 pounds, that's 179 pounds. Then we're just 821 pounds away. Guys, 820 pounds at what? Guys, you let's say, go. What? 100 pounds, dunya, what? The dunya, dunya. Oh, dunya. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Bismillah. Uh, where's Nico? <laughs> Nico, he's <laughs> there. Sitting on side. Okay. Let's go, guys. Bismillah. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. Guys, let's go. Come on, donate so I can see you here, bro. Should should they donate? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jeff. <laughs> guys, bro, donate so we can get closer. He needs to go. Guys, we've got three minutes. <laughs> no, no, no. They shouldn't donate just so he can go home. Like, that, you're affecting <laughs> no, 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 their intention, no, 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 bro. <laughs> guys, let's go. Bismillah. Yeah, you should donate. <laughs> guys, <laughs> we donate. are... Because it's no, it's can you good. donate so I can see it there, well, guys? We're 820. What you want me to away. donate on the thing? Yes, I'm not gonna do that. Let me give you the link, I'll send you the link now. Oh, uh, no, you yeah, can read me. a book. Send me you the can thing. Read, you can read the book. Send me the thing. The thing goes, crap. let's go, guys. Let's go. Alhamdulillah, nothing. Let's go, guys. Oh, no, say wala, 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 it wasn't. I have say wala, no way, say wala. Oh, oh my oh, gosh, bro! Somebody just donated. Eight hundred. Oh my gosh! I, for my future today, wife. Somebody just donated eight hundred pounds, and they go for my future wife that I haven't found yet. Allah, <laughs> may Allah find her. May Allah you. grant you a righteous wife. May Allah give her to you, rather. Eight hundred pounds. I mean, Mr. J. Shamis, for my future wife, I haven't found you. You know what? Let me tell you something. When I was looking to get married, I was given sadaqah and asked the same dua. Say, oh Allah, grant me a righteous no. wife. No. If my dua is answered, so will yours. Inshallah. Uh, Inshallah, we need we need to make such of shukr. Let's do such of shukr. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Let's go. No, it already has because he's given the remaining. Look, <clears throat> yeah. Look, look exactly the remaining. Look, you're giving hundred pounds. Look at that, guys. Whoa, yeah. whoa. Wow. Did you send me the link? Charlie, yeah. two hundred, two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give it? Did you send the link? You haven't even sent yes, me the I link. Yes, I sent yet. it, bro. Bro, I sent it. Why is it? <laughs> The link. Okay. Hey, this is your reply. <laughs> let's go. Let's go, guys. Wow. I'm. I'm absolutely. Well, I'm flabbergasted. I am flabbergasted. We need to do sajdah shukr. We need to do sajdah shukr. This means like we're just forty nine pounds away. Forty nine pounds. Away. Do you know what that means? Jabi, where are you? Where's Jabi? Oh, Jabi's in sajdah shukr. Look, sajdah shukr. And you know what? We need to sajdah shukr. <laughs> Zishan, are you still? We did. I, have to, I did my card details now. <laughs> this is long still. Zishan, what's going on? Zishan, and we're going to wait for the last donation. I wonder who it's going to be. I wonder oh, who it's going to be. This is going to oh be. Oh my me. gosh, look. Bro, look. One minute left. Wow, Bismillah. 49 pounds away. People are raising. Am I in the US or UK? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Zishan, we don't want a donation. <laughs> Never underestimate yeah. dua. Never underestimate dua. Let me tell you something, guys. Yeah, to that brother who gave eight hundred pounds, Ali. To that brother who gave eight hundred pounds, yeah. I'm gonna jump in the ice bath, brother. And not only that, I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant you the righteous Ali. wife who is obedient, who is good to you. You are good to her. And who will you will have righteous children with? Inshallah, may Allah bless you. Well, like this was something that I would myself do when I was looking to get married, giving sadaqah, whatever I had, and I would ask Allah grant me a righteous wife. Grant me a righteous wife. My dua is answered. So would yours, brother and sisters. Inshallah. May Allah bless and preserve you guys. Alhamdulillah. It's all right. No problem. We still got the champ coming. Now we're here. Allah, where you at? Hello. Alhamdulillah. Bro, I can't believe we've done it. Bro, I can't believe we've done it. Plenty under plenty. But guys, we have raised just today, in a matter of four or five hours, we raised 7,000, nearly 7,500, bro. Nearly 7,500, bro. And yesterday, how much we raised? 7,500. Plenty on the plenty, guys. You guys are phenomenal. And let me tell you something. Wallahi, inshallah, this prayer mat, you're gonna see it. Somebody just donated. I wonder who it is. Anas, the brother looking for a wife. I hope this really helps. Bro, may Allah bless you. Umit Aikaya, Miss Mr. Z Ali, Z Z P Amar. Mr. Z Ali is me. Come on, Mr. Z Ali. Yay! Yay! Hey, hey, let's go. Guys, may Allah bless you guys. Well, it's an amazing project. Uh, the brother, brother who's looking to get married, 
Brother, well, like, be firm. Let me tell you something. Yeah, bro, that money, send it back to me. Okay, I don't want to just for the camera. Yeah, okay. Okay. What's the stupid okay, question? Is I'm that gonna, send it? I'm going to donate 500. And we'll just send it back to you. I don't know how it's going to be done, but just, <laughs> <laughs> just send it. <laughs> bro, for the one who's looking to get married, for the ones who's got to look, the prophet, peace be upon him, said, show your sit with the sadaqah. Ah. The sadaqah is a burhan. Sadaqah will never get in, uh, uh, will never make you poor. And sadaqah gets in the way of calamity, yeah? Brothers, what let me tell you something. Never the brothers are looking to get married, yeah. Stick firm to your salah, give Allah's right, zakah, uh, give in charity, uh, which you are fasting Ramadan. Well, let me tell you something and make sincere dua and work on your sins. Well, I'm telling you, Allah will and don't you think it's gonna be based yeah. upon your yeah. schedule and when Never. you want to get married. Yes. Oh, yeah, trust yes. in the process of Allah. We're living examples, yeah. bro. Please trust me. Whenever Allah decides, we've, we've, been, we've been to the cliff, fell off the cliff. So we, we fell off the cliff, we was nearly hitting the floor, and Allah took us back up. Mm. Yeah, and it, you get it? So, yeah, and it's going to happen when Allah wants it to yeah. happen. Ask Allah for strength yeah. until that time. Yeah. Ask Javi. Allah for perseverance. Hey, how are you going now? And just bear yeah. in mind, guys, <laughs> Tawakul is so, so, so important. Alhamdulillah. Oh. Brothers, all I'm going to say is, may Allah bless and preserve you guys. It's been absolutely phenomenal. That's all I'm going to say. May Allah bless you guys. Wallahi, inshallah, this project, you will see it, and you guys are the ones who. It's a sadaqah jari for you guys. When you see this growing, you see the salama that's left, right, center, inshallah. May it be a means of sadaqah jari for us. Once. May it be a means that it's for us, not against us, inshallah. I'm folding this one. You know why? And by the way, this is going to Sneeko. Yeah, this is going to Sneeko. He wanted it. I said to him, I just need it for the live appeal. This is going to go to Sneeko, inshallah. Um, and uh, inshallah, it will benefit him because he said he still listens to YouTube videos when he's praying. He's, and I said, this will help you. But you don't need to say that loud. Mm -hmm. Did you get it? So this will be gifted to Sneeko. You should do a video with him. Did I do a video? With no. Him. Okay, Javi. The last thing we need is just a video with uh, Nico and the Warner, and then that's it. We're done. And that's 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 just we got guys. We're finished. We might be back with the live uh, tomorrow uh, or the next day. We see, inshallah. Uh, till next time, brothers and sisters. May Allah bless and preserve you guys. It's been absolutely phenomenal. And bro, this 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 works really well, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's crisp. I was listening. You know, David was there. I was like, they can't hear him. Bro, it was crisp. Bro, I was like, wow. He was crisp, bro. He looks more sharp than Zishan. You Never. Know, you look extra sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, may Allah bless and preserve you guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Goodbye. Woo. You know